How much work have the team and the school been able to do in, in sevens, uh, John, this season? We've done a fair bit, uh, not as much as um, we normally would with the, you know, the prep for the, the Continental Cup. Um, that's taken a lot of time and effort, but um, we've still got a lot of boys um, wanting to play rugby, so we've Four there, gents. every half turn we've done a fair bit with the, you know, the remainder of the boys. Minute and a half. So that was Tommy Baldini, who almost got away, had it not been for a, a forward pass. He looks to have lightning in his shoes. Crow. Baldini takes his place Fine. on the left wing. Set. Perkin with the ball here, and, and John, once again, talk us through the, the players we're seeing in action. Yes, that's Oliver Collard at scrum off. Ted Wilson now on the ball. Um. Yeah, agreed, knocked on. Nice, boys. Well, back we come for a scrum now to Langley School. No, not to Langley, to Kirkham from five metres. Not sure if you saw what happened there, John. No, that's interesting, isn't it? But we kicked it over. But maybe it's a different law in there, so that's... <laughs> Crow! <laughs> we, can, we can't work that way. Anyway, knock on against Set. Uh, Langley. Maybe it was behind the goal line. Anyway, Kirkham can strike for a second here. And going over from the scrum. Hold up. Just held up, though. Who was scrabbling away at the line there, John? I think that was... Uh, it's held up. Alfie scrum. Guthrie, I think. I was a bit... Uh, <laughs> I was hampered by the uh, stanchion there. Here we come, gents. Yeah, that's Will Collins. Final play. Crouch, bind, set. So from the scrum, Kirkham, pinging the ball to 10 this time. And then Ted Wilson, yeah. No, leave 14, 14. 14. No, 14. The yellow card 14. for Tommy Baldini. Seven plays against six for Kirk, and this is to take the lead going into half time. Passed along the line, Kirk lining up the numbers, but so to a Langley. The defence is so well organised and aggressive from Langley, but yet it be enough to stop Kirk from taking. Muscle their way over. Yeah, that's Rowan Sheldon going over the red scrum cap. So Kirk can break down that Langley resistance. Yeah, had to score there really with uh, only six six Langley players on the field. That's uh, probably half time as well. So John, how many years have you been coming to Roslyn Park with Kirkham? I think I first came uh, in 2007, I think. And, and in the day, <laughs> that's, that's when a feral distance, feral uh, time. Yeah, we used to play the um, I think it, round of 16 and, and beyond at Boston Park itself. Um, but obviously, the tournament was a, a smaller one then. It's, it's grown so much, couldn't believe how many competitions there are now. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and every year something's new. This pitch as well, this angle, our, our cameras are, are better. It's only been the last couple of years we've been able to bring action from RE2 uh, to the screen. And we'll whiz through some of the highlights of this first half as Langley got, got us going. And, and we'll talk over them uh, as well, John, if you don't mind, because a question I wanted to ask yourself is in all that time, Kirkham's best performance, their best team, uh, coming to Roslyn Park at under-18 level. Would you pick a year? Uh, some names that stick out from that year? It's difficult, I suppose. Uh, in 2009, I think we got to the final. Uh, so that was uh, Dan Bibby's year, uh, Di Carpentier. Um, so I, that would probably be the, the highlight. Um, there's been some other good sides that have um, more recently have not uh, got to the final, uh, the semi uh, one year. Um, where we had like Kieran Wilkes and Sam Dugdale, I think. Okay. Um, been out sale and Leic or Leicester and sale respectively. Um, we lost to, to Sedba, uh, who went on to win it. Of course. Yeah. But, uh, on, on this pitch, actually. 
Um, yeah, it was a head shaking moment. A head shaking moment that was, but hey ho. That's Ted Wilson kicking off. Decent kick off. It forces Langley to have to turn, and Dylan Vilverberg it was who was chasing that back. And our way, tackler. <laughs> so Langley only has scored out as they look to work the edge here, but it's intercepted, and Kirkham now just 10 metres away. Yeah, it's Conor Norman. It's probably got his first touch, isn't it? Stop. Stop. Carry that. Leave now, feet green. Spin it wide, we should score here. Yeah, three on one. Should do. And this will be a walk-in for Kirkham. <laughs> that makes it look much easier from Kirkham Grammar School. And that was Alfie Guthrie going on. Right. And John, what are you wanting to see uh, at a coaching level from Sevens players at Kirkham? We just want to you know, see the, the ball movement, um, you know, people not getting isolated, um, you know, going off, off down blind alleys. Um, obviously setting themselves up correctly. Um, obviously the, the trail runners are key, you know, clearing out um, just so we can get some quick ball. Um, just using, you know, the width of the pitch, we, you know, we do try to stretch teams where we can. There it is, that's a perfect example really. Quick ball. Kirkham will kick us off again and Langley in the air. take that in the air. Tackle was on Will Griffin Sparrow. So Baldini is back on, back up to seven. Now, Langley School. Chip through. Put to the ball here. Now, this could be very interesting indeed for Langley to get back into this. Just the control required, and it's there. It's excellent. That's a good finish, that, to be fair. Very good finish. Try scored by number 12, Dylan Vilverberg. And that was just as much about football as it was rugby. That was excellent. In line here. It keeps it interesting now for us, especially if he, if he knocks over this kick. It's a great tournament, but it's a cruel format for some schools when you face perhaps the toughest opponent in your group in your first match and you get caught cold in, in some ways. No chance to build into the tournament. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think also that shows the importance of a really good warm-up um, for yeah. the first game. Um, we've got a couple of hours between each of our games today, so, you know, a proper cool-down, um, then obviously raising yourself for the next game. It's, it's always difficult. So Langley in the hunt still against Kirkham. Yeah, Kirkham just need possession now, really. Look on advantage. Baldini. Yeah. <laughs> Penalties. The high tackle on Baldini. A couple of live wires in this Langley team, and they're going to go to one here again in Wolverberg. Yes, Do the turnover here. And now Baldini is waiting on this right wing if they can get it to him. There it is for Baldini, he doesn't take it, and Kirkham will be on the strike here, and the return will be swift. Yeah, that's Taran Bethorda. <laughs> and Chris, how much of the team that we see here this week was Good, involved in last Thursday, in terms of the coaches as well as the players? Yeah, ju just one player, um, which was Isaac Glue. He, he was involved on Thursday. Uh, he came off the bench. and sh uh, Obviously, Mr. Unsworth here is the head coach of this team. He's uh, behind the post somewhere, and he's, I can see him there. Usual stance, hands behind his back, bobbing from side to side. Yeah, so really, yeah, just me, uh, myself, I was one of the support coaches, Mr. Unsworth. 
a um, bit more involvement, and then just Isaac. And that was it. So backwards. And how common is that? Normally, you'd be bringing a very similar fifth, sevens team to the fifteens side, or yeah. is it always quite separate for Kirk? Yeah, we've got um, another team here on playing on Thursday, and hopefully Friday, which is our, you know, really our first seven. We've started bringing another team to to the uh, the Vars for the last three or four years, just okay. to give them all lads a game. That's the order again. Away ten. So Langley looking to force errors from this Kirkham side in their defence, and we've seen what they can do when they're close to the line under pressure. But can they put it on on the halfway line, or will Kirkham pass around them? With too much swiftness, yes, so far. Give it early now. Good morning from, from, from Vilverberg. Hi. Exhausting number of passes that Kirkham are putting together here. This is dinked over for the collection. Nicely done. What a try this oh, is going sir. to be. That is stunning from Kirkham. Very nice, uh, John. It's got you nodding your head. Oh, yeah, that, was, that was really good, yeah. And Thorder again on a hat trick. So this team then, John, uh, um, some of them, plenty of them from the year below, not in their final year? Yeah, Is it mostly a, a year below team? It's half and half, really. Just looking at the, who's on the pitch now, um, there's uh, three upper six. It's probably it's probably slightly more lower six boys uh, in this yeah. squad. A good experience for next year, really. It's final play. Interesting that you start doing that, splitting the, the Vars and Cup teams across two competitions. Yeah, we're very lucky because um, we've got quite a, a large group actually playing rugby in the sixth form. So it's just really to give uh, more boys an opportunity. Um, we bring for under 14s down, 16s as well. Um, there's a bit of continuity. A lot of the boys who two boys who've been uh, here for the last three occasions, well, two occasions plus this one. So after 14 minutes, it is Kirk and Grammar who come out on top. Langley School's fast start was uh, very impressive indeed, but just couldn't quite maintain it against Kirkham. And 27 points to 10, it has ended. Well, John, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day here. Best of luck to, to Kirkham thank Grammar you. School and, and also to Langley School. Thank you. Thank you for the rest of the competition. Great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, John.
Well, good late morning, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else. Thanks, Jack, for your work so far. I'm Wilfred Kemsley here to take you through the next couple of matches where the action from the under-18 boys' vase continues. Bishop Wordsworth School up against Caterham School from Group K, and uh, not a perfect kick-off for Bishop Wordsworth in their uh, famous navy blue playing from right to left. And this is a pretty competitive group that also includes College Sagar and Gresham School. But it's Caterham who will be on the attack to get really things started blue roll. Floyd into contact. Led away by Van Oysten, but suddenly a bit of space opens up on the left-hand side for Ferguson of the England Lambs, but uh, just directed into touch by Bishop Wordsworth. And a decent season so far for uh, Bishop Worth as a course. In action down at the Sea for Thames recently, live on Next Gen. But here they are at uh, Howes Roslin Park, the biggest schoolboy sevens festival anywhere in the world. And they're on the back foot, Bishop Wordsworth, under a bit of pressure. But Charlie Payden looks to take it forward. But Caterham right up in the line, piling on the pressure. And they have forced the turnover. Knock on, no ball. Young Charlie Payton, of course. His brother was a Super Bucks rugby uh, for uh, Bristol for a number of years. Made a real mark down in the southwest uh, at Hooker. Crap! Yeah. Constant Five. control Hale tent. So much information. Six. Flooded forward here at Roslyn Park, but now it's Bishop Wordsworth looking to break. Loose pass, but it will be. Regathered and on the wrap around, suddenly the kick comes in behind. It's a chase on here. Looks to be Cater and the favourites, but the ball is loose, squirming out from underneath the white shirt. And penalty goes for Bishop Wordsworth as well. Great yardage made, a great exit. And there'll be in no rush to get things back underway. A little show and go, and the spin by Shardlow. Hands off the offload too, Caterham over the ball, but they're off their feet. But it was a clean lift in the end, so penalty Caterham. Warren Smith penalised on the deck this time, and well, it's a tight start to this game, but there could be a two on one on that left hand side. Little show and go from Ferguson. Now he hands it off. And suddenly, space opening up. Brought down just inside release, the blue, 10. Release. Calls for release, so Caterham will have possession. Flicked out the back door into the hands of Thomas. Wide to Ferguson, who looks key for this Caterham side. Little show and go. Lovely yes. tap. What a stop that is, but the yeah. ball is loose and Taylor Smith driving on. Take step, take step, take step. Great last ditch scramble to France from Bishop Wordsworth, but they're still under pressure here. Van Oysten just teasing the defence. There's the offload. Back against the grain, but it's a wonderful tackle by Warren Smith. And a real fight on the floor. But Bishop Wordsworth will win. And they'll play with penalty advantage. Everything stopped for a moment, but Bishop Wordsworth in behind. Lofted advantage ball over! No more advantage, but a race on to the line. George Greasley, who made the turnover, now up in the attack. And the ball goes to deck, but... Yet another penalty, sets Caterham on the back foot, finally could someone be away? Fraser Wilson will dot down to open the scoring. What a frantic four minutes of sevens. Well, Caterham School's discipline just letting them down there. Allowing Bishop Wordsworth into the game, but great defence as well. I think it was young Josh Gothard with the mullet that made that all-important tap tackle. Well, Greasley understood quite early on that he didn't have the legs, but Bishop Wordsworth playing with penalty advantage. The quick tap from Wilson. Hey, balls alive. Just had the legs to evade Max Thomas. Well, it's a teasing kickoff as well, claimed by Floyd. 
And once again, there's action in the breakdown. Bishop Wordsworth with another penalty. And they'll tap and they'll quickly go. Morgan hands it off once more. Race to the line. In comes the Don't Argue. Wonderful offload. And Gothard touches down there. for the second. In the blink of an eye, Bishop Wordsworth had doubled their advantage. And they've got a real job on their hands to get out of this tough group. Colleague Segar wants to watch for this bars competition. Gresham's as well, no fools. So a big win here, exactly what Bishop Wordsworth will be after. Jamie Duckett there with a lovely pass. Zach Gothard on his way. Well, Caterham with some work to do here. They did start brightly. A couple of good attacking phases. They couldn't be as clinical as Bishop Wordsworth have been as of yet. Thomas just lets it run. And of course, White here on uh, Keep the gap. RE2, the action just doesn't stop in this under-18 Vars competition. Worth school take on Iskol Giffen Gura up at next. Live here with next gen at the Howard and Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And Caterham just looking to run it out from their 22. A bit lateral so far. And this time Wordsworth bite. Roll 15! Stacked up on this left-hand side of Caterham. Through the hands, it's intercepted and turned over and suddenly, well, the offload turned over once again. So Caterham back with it. Once again, it's Ferguson just teasing this Wordsworth defence. There's the miss pass. And still Caterham shepherded in their 22. But there's the little show and go to get onto the outside. Tuck there. Physical collision coming in there from Hugh Bate, formerly of Bath. At under 14 level. Ferguson. Shows and goes this time and gets through the hole. Another covering tackle, this time from Logan. Caterham just working their way up the field. Racking up the phases as we approach half time. This will be the last attack for them. Contacts on the 10. And this time, Caterham go flying in right over the breakdown. Wordsworth on the counter through the first tackle. Driving on is Morgan. Duck it. Shardlow hands it off. What a carry by Charlie Payden. No conversion. But going into the break, Caterham have it all to do here in their opening game on RE2 as they trail by 15 to Bishop Wordsworth. Draw and give. And the man on the cover unable to stop Charlie Payden. Good morning, RE Control. Well, a top start to this game, plenty of action here as Bishop Wordsworth School lead by 15 against Caterham. We'll be back live with the second half in just a moment's time. Wordsworth School versus Tiffin Goya on RE2. Warminster School versus the Judd School on RE3. Sorry, that's Warminster School versus King's Bruton on RE3. Stephen Hurst Foundation versus St Edward's Oxford on RE4. St James Senior Boys versus Richard Hale on RE5. Uh, if Richard Hale are on site, uh, please head straight to that pitch for your match, please. Peter Simmons College versus Maidstone Grammar School on RE6. And the Cedar School versus Portsmouth Grammar School on RE7. Uh, those fixtures due to get underway at 11.20. Back then for the second half, and Caterham have it all to do. But there's plenty of talent in this uh, seven side. 
but from the kickoff, not the start thereafter. It's a free kick for Bishop Wordsworth, who are on top, and it'll be Payden to get us get us started. Bait back against the grain and over the game. Blue line. leaving out. That's the ground. Thunderous clear out this time. Coming in from Duckett. And to the line they go. Morgan gets in the offload. Neil cutting off that right foot. Back with Hayden Morgan. Leave it, leave it. Intercepted this time from offside. Caterham. Never, Caterham. Never offside, offside is given. Down. 21. Thought he might be away there. Sam Wilson. And they've elected to go for the scrum. What have Bishop Wordsworth Crouch. got up their sleeve? Bind! One of the more famous names Set. to be entered into the Vars competition, and this, their strongest sevens team. Their strongest sevens team. But it's turnover at the scrum. Not so often that that crops up as a decisive set piece in the game of sevens. But Caterham looked to break with some great pace on that outside. But the ball came back in on the switch from the South African Ethan Van Hoisteen and unfortunately put down well kick off then for Caterham who's still chasing the game there's still two scores behind but the converted try puts them in good stead as from the kickoff Bishop Wordsworth will look to break strong carry up the center from Tristan Jones skipper at county level and that was a difficult ball for James to grapple on to Shardlow just trying to keep the phases alive by you. Second by them. but the first lock on came from uh, Caterham so they will have another opportunity to cut the deficit even Crouch. further Hold the gap before the bind. Bind! Set! Bishop Worsworth win the scrum this time. And well, they could look to go all the way off first phase. Lovely covering tackle to put an end to that attack. It's marked. Great work from Anthony Sessi Knott. Line is marked. Fraser Wilson's eyes lit up there. Some good footwork. Got him into that outside channel, but Sessi not comprehensive on the cover. Ferguson to feed this line out then. Spilled. It's a real uh, mess. Round on the 15, but Caton will break. It's on the five metre. Lamb goes himself. Dragged down at the very last by Morgan, but now the hole has opened up for the corner <laughs> Caterham School have another and all of a sudden it's game on here it's time it's time 12. but unfortunately 12. well those just little a little bit too late for Caterham School there as the referee calls for full time <laughs> and Bishop Wordsworth escape unscathed no Timely comeback for Caterham School, who just ran out of mid O here as the Worth School take on Iskul Giffen Gur in a tough group. It also includes Tiffin and Leighton Park. But that's the next game live here on RE2 at the Howden Rosden Park National School Sevens in the under 18 boys' Vars.
Good morning from RE Control. The 11.20 round of fixtures. Tiffin versus Leighton Park on RE1. Worth School versus Iskol Giffin Goya on RE2. Warminster School versus King's Bruton on RE3. Stephen Perth Foundation versus St Edward's School on RE4. St James Senior Boys versus Richard Hale School on RE5. Pete Simmons College versus Maidstone Grammar School on RE6. And the Cedar School versus Portsmouth Grammar on RE7. Those are the 11.20 round of fixtures. Recovering from the Welsh side, but Worth are on the break. Backwards play on! Spilled, but always backwards. Another little offload out the back to keep the attack alive. Great teasing footwork. And they could be in behind. Breakaway by Ali Webb. Lifted into the arms of Matt Crinnell, and Crinnell might go all the way. Well, the perfect start for Worth School. They just did so well to keep the ball live here in that attack. And in the end, Macronel, the beneficiary. And this goal Giffen Gur behind early. <laughs> There's a lovely breakaway to get things going from Webb. And on the cover. The tackle made. Lovely offload. Crinnell goes over. Yeah, let's go. Well, Worth School with a second kickoff attempt. The first one didn't go quite to plan, but this time well over the 10. And picked out of the sky by. In school, Giffen Gur have got a bit of work to do to build from their 22. Patient stuff so far from Harris. This time they look to take it to the line, but Payne's pass just a touch beyond the uh, last attacker. That's here, white ball. So it will be worth with a On me, mate. promising set piece opportunity. Good. Tiffin and Leighton Park. Only yeah, you're fine. out on a RE1. Here at the Howard in Roslyn Park. <laughs> School sevens, it's worth on the attack. Well, redo it. Put him up, bring him down immediately. Is that clear? Safety issue. Don't do it. Got that, guys? You can't hold a bloke in the air. Dangerous. Now, worth school, just a little bit too long in the line out with a man in the air, so we'll have another crack. And this time no, it's no been hands. stolen, so you're offside, mate. Will Get come away with it. Thank you. Still in there, 22, but back in possession. Harrison Lloyd hands it off into that wide channel. It's back with Lloyd. Through the hands they go. Searching a gap in this worst school defence. Made some good yardage there, but uh, uh, it's gone forwards. Unfortunately, just knocked on. Well, Worth School keeping Ischel Giffen Gur contained at the moment. Uh, it's dangerous. The law states immediately. You can come to ground and then pass it, but you can't hold the bloke up there. There you go. Crouch! Scrum then for Worth in a promising Set. position. Uh, the tunnel. Well, they couldn't make it work. First time of asking. The scrum did not go to plan. Uh, both feet on the ground when the ball comes in, it's fine. You and Massey in with another Crouch. opportunity. Bind. Set. It's gone round. Driven round. Once again, not Same going scrum. to plan, so Worth will have another feed. 
Driven round, far side. Crouch. Bind. Set. Ooh, Finally, the ball is available, even if Webb's put under some pressure at the scrum. And at first phase, they'll look to attack the wide channels. Oh, playing advantage! Well, a high tackle advantage, surely, and it's the try scorer this time. Crenell, who That's fine. hands it off, is back with Webb. Well, the diminutive young Ali Webb is once again through the hole. What an asset. <laughs> Ali Webb is turning out to be then. Created the first try and has scored the second with some teasing yes, footwork. Yes, so much quicker. And suddenly, Worth School double their advantage. Yep. This goal giving Guerrero uh, suddenly two tries behind. That's a lovely step to beat not one but two defenders and had the pace to beat Killer on the cover. Yeah, whatever he said. Well, Villa just didn't have the pace that time of asking, but there'll be plenty more to come from this. This goal giving to our team. Free kick. Well, second kickoff that's not gone to plan for Worth School. Another free kick for the Welsh side. Harrison Lloyd, the captain, gets us underway. And once again, it's patient sevens searching for a hole for an opportunity and they might have forced a two-on-one there touch there just to put in touch to half bring time. us to that half-time interval well worth school currently in the lead by two tries one converted so they'll take a 12-point lead into the break we'll see what isco giffen gua have in their locker when they return in the second half. Live here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens in the under 18 Vars. Worth school, lead by 12. Well, Giffen Gua, the keenest to get the second half underway. They've got seven minutes to close. A 12 point deficit here up against Worth School, who have looked the brighter of two teams. Shepherding the Welsh side in their 22. They've certainly had the majority of field possession. And on those turnovers, uh, they've been clinical. Morning. Big seven minutes then at the opening of this tournament for these two teams and it's a really impressive kickoff that's been tapped back into the hands of Villa and suddenly darting away down the left hand side the ball just rolls into touch and Harrison Garcia one to watch out for no number on his back but a 400 metre championship under his belt at under 18 level for Wales 
Jordan Callie with Colin on RE5. Plenty of legs. Near school gives him good wide man. King's College Thornton versus King's A scrum for Worth. These haven't exactly been clean in that opening seven, but Webb comfortably this time hands it off. And what have Worth School got to offer from a set piece? No held's fine. Lovely running from Martin. Hands it off to keep the phase intact. Ball goes to ground, but always backwards. On the bounce, regathered. Webb frees up the hands once again. It's what Caterham is so good at. There's the little out the back once again to keep us at first phase. This time brought to ground. That's good. John Mann offering himself as a nuisance for Ifengua, but suddenly a bit of space opens up for Crinell, stepping off the left, already one under his belt today. Charlie Crinell caught at the very last, but uh, suddenly against this scrambling defence, there could be an overlap here. Martin with a race to the line that he'll surely win. And of worse school just gone and killed this game. They do have their third right under the sticks. A chance to go 19 points to the good here. We've yet to see a deficit like that turned over on RE2. Well, Worth School may not have enjoyed the lion's share of the possession, but they've certainly enjoyed the lion's share of the points. A good break from Crinell. Eventually caught by Payne, but against a scrambling defence, two passes was enough. To send Tide Martin into the corner. Yeah, let's go. Still four minutes to go here. It's a big ask for a score, Giffen Gwer. And what do they have left to offer here? Man, a lofted pass into midfield. Good pace added to the attack by Lloyd and the skippers through the line. And Harrison Lloyd should go all the way here. Stay there, mate. Well, a captain's Stay intervention. There. When your side are down, you look to your leaders and Darrison Lloyd has scored the first try here on RE2 for his goal, Giffen Gore. Yes? Yeah, that's okay, still wait for it. Four. Just took it to the line himself with two outside. Put in the fence. Time is off to get rid of Martin and then strolled home their first score. Sorry, three in a bit. A chase from David Bradley, fresh on the field for Worth School. And finally, the ball is back in uh, possession of the referee. So Payne will get us started. It was a brilliant kickoff last time in Payne at half time. And this time, once again, it's contestable. And this call Giffen Gua pile on the pressure. Man with a tackle. Stepping back inside, but all wrapped up by Walters. He's fresh onto the field himself. But once again, it's oh, tackle. Release. worth Fine. searching for a hole in the defence. Easy eight. Dragged down on the 10. That's good. Still in possession, Worth School. Finally out of their 22. It's a strong carry and the ball is loose, but it's gone backwards. Playing, advantage, oh, playing advantage for the knock on, in fact. Chipped through by Iskand Giffen Gur. Payne nudged it forward. Kick, kick. Kick up here, where it landed. Just took the change angle. Took but him it's out. going to be a penalty advantage. Blocking is the call. It's a penalty in the 22 to boot. And suddenly, 
if a try comes quickly here for Frisco Giffen Gould, they are right back in the game. Powerful carry to get it started from Mann. And there's the handoff as well, shrugging off players left and right. Try there. A great score from Villa. 130. 130. Somebody behind and the post. With a minute and a half to go, Iskul Giffen Gore is suddenly Some. just one try behind. Albeit a five. converted one. Unless Payne can conjure up something special from far out on that left hand side, it will fall short. So a converted try needed. 21 10. Yeah. Well, 21 10, in fact, on the referee's. Book is the score, is so uh, they'll need two scores to get back into this game. A big physical handoff there. there from Time is off. Sean Villa. Time is off. Time's off. Now 21-10, according to the referee, means it's two scores required with Good. a minute to go. Time on. If they can claim this kickoff, they'll go some way to upsetting the apple cart here trailing by 21 to 10. A worf school in possession big shot comes in on the feet, don't play it don't play it gone off your feet mate but no turnover this time at the breakdown. worth with a penalty advantage to boot skipping through the first contact and shrugging off another dave maynard in behind great Ooh. offload <laughs> but just trips on Fine, the Mark, still in Still in. That's two in the breakdown, but back is Maynard still going and shrugging off another. Hold it, hold it. And Dante Maynard, no, no, what no, an no, introduction. No, 20 seconds, take your time. 17 seconds, take your time. To certainly see off this game and get Worf's campaign started with a win. Well, they'll take some confidence into their Tiffin School fixture up next. Because yeah, going, no, not now. Under a little bit of pressure from Iskul Giffen Gur, they go up the other end and score. 28 <laughs> 10, the final Good score. Seconds, Worth mate, score well with a great win and a great try to f finish things off as well from Dante oh. Maynard. Uh, well played, guys. Well played. <laughs> no silly penalties like that one, mate. It's not necessary. Oh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, but you did run across him. Cheers, Cheers boys. Well done. Well, some good sportsmanship on show as well from the players to the referee. What you love to see here at Roslyn Park, the Howden National School Sevens, the biggest sevens competition at schoolboy level anywhere in the world. And just when you thought the fight back was on, a great score in the end from Dante Maynard. But what a performance from Ali Webb as well. Set up the first, Crenell in under the sticks, almost there did score the second, conjured up out of nothing. But this school Giffen Gur did not take that result lying down. Even if they did trail by three tries when Martin ran in for Worf's third at the start of that second half they came back and scored two of their own but we will look ahead here as the tries roll on as Hill House School are up next here against the Grammar School from Leeds
Well, another fixture from the under-18 boys' vase here as Hill House School from Doncaster take on the Grammar School at Leeds. Action from Drew Parr that also includes Latimer Upper School and Kings Ely. And there's an all-north of England affair here as Hill House take on the Grammar School. Well, it will be Hill House to get us underway. Let's see what Chris Rose's side has to offer. Well, it's a big shot off contact. Well worn in the end by the grammar school at Leeds, and they will have possession. Taking it to the line off first phase. They've created a bit of space. Potential offload inside from George Asplund. You're in front of the mark but instead it will be a line-out. Well, this uh, grammar school side littered with Yorkshire Academy players. Yes, yeah. Uh, Seven in total mark. across the match day squad. Um, gents, no I need a themselves here. But Hill House, a famous old institution. In the channel. In the yep. union at uh, schoolboy level. The Leeds will get this underway. Peyton, another of the Yorkshire Academy, on the wraparound. And once again, take it to the line at the very first time of asking. Hyde on the wraparound, looks to break through and does find the offload, skipping through the tackles. It's back with Hyde here. And suddenly it's on down the Sorry, left hand side, loads of space in front of Ethan Gardner. Gardner, well, back to Binnell, and it's going to eventually find its way through. You've taken that over and grounded it. Binion, the under 18. Scrum here, purple ball. Fly half. Chipped it through and carried over the line by Hill House, so it will be a scrum five <laughs> metres out. Crouch, bind, set. Well, it's just come Same straight tunnel. out of the tunnel there. So Peyton will have another chance. Crouch. To feed the scrum. A promising position that the grammar school set. leads have found themselves in here. OK. Hook Twice is out the channel. Gents, both of you feet in the ground. Yeah. Let the ball come in first, OK? Yeah. Charlie Duncombe, another of the Yorkshire Academy, in the hooker position at the moment. Crouch! For the grammar school at Leeds. Bind! Set! Vantage offside! Spits out yeah. Leeds' his way. <laughs> and Peyton will dart over the line from five yards out. They had an advantage coming, but they didn't need it. And they have the first score on the board with two points extra to boot. And the grammar school at Leeds will lead by seven from this position. If they can get clean ball from the scrum, you always fancied them. Kick off then for Leeds. Hooked high and contestable, tapped back in the end, but it's Unfortunately, Came off you when off it went out, but it was a knock-on first. Uh, the Tory, Scrum so here, purple ball. It will be knock. a grammar school at Leeds who feed this scrum. A real, really testing kickoff. A feature Crouch. of any successful seven side. Bind. Set. <laughs> Peyton with the feed. But once again, the ball Same is channel. not cleanly the out of the scrum. We will see some further action Let's if go. this disruption yep. at the set Crouch. piece continues. Bind! As the set. clock just ticks away. Almost three and a half minutes in here. And it does come out. Leads his way. And they're so aggressive the way Back. they look to take it to the line. 
on the wraparound. The ball was put down, but only backwards, and Binion still now darting down the right-hand side is Hyde, who looks to go all the way. Dragged down five metres short, but lifts it. Just spilt by Duncan. And oh, it's over. Break. Strong carry from close. Brown plays nine. A bit of patience is the call from the ah. sideline, but it's dropped and it's loose and it's hacked through. Millington will win the chase. Dragged down just outside their own five. <laughs> Penalty goes, leads his way. A huge turnover. And once again, they've got possession just outside the five metre of Hill House. They will tap. Out the back door, the ball is loose. You were never no 10. advantage for 10 yards. So another penalty. Good thinking from the try scorer Payton to draw that penalty. Here's Gardner, goes himself. Takes two to bring him down. Hill House are over the ball. It's a good clear out. Use now. Back to his feet as well. Leave him, leave him. Spencer goes back down the short side. Lateral from Spencer. He draws in the tackle and finds Hyde. Hyde with a bit of pace injected into the <laughs> attack and has dotted down for Leeds' his second. Will Hyde of the Yorkshire Academy has plenty of these players oh, are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Has the second as Binion will look to add the <laughs> two on top and does. The grammar school at Leeds then. Lead by 14 after five minutes here. They've just played the game in the right areas. <coughs> Newhouse School yet to really threaten. What else have they got in their locker here? They will be receiving kickoff from Vinian. And once again, it's a very much a contestable kickoff, and the ball is loose. <laughs> on by Gardner and a draws the high Bye. tackle as well. Another penalty that puts Hill House School in a tenuous position. And that's a strong carry to get things started as well. Back. Put down, but always backwards. Great footwork from Hyde once again, surging through the tackles. Payton, two on one here. And Leeds will have a third. Charlie Duncan in the end touches down. Uh, just the side of the five. Well, it's a pretty comprehensive first half, first half from uh, the grammar school at Leeds. And they'll take two, tri they'll <laughs> three tries, two converted into the break. That's some lovely footwork from Hyde, who turned a loose Coach, pass into a line can break. Can I have someone to run the line that side, please? And from there, it was always on. Duncan with the show and go. Half time them and the grammar school at Leeds have looked pretty comprehensive here. They lead by 19 into the break. The Hill House School have anything to offer with a bit of a mountain to climb. Half time here on RE2. The grammar school at Leeds, 19 up.
back underway here then. And Harry Vinian, of course, under 18 for the north of England, gets us underway, and it's a hotly contested kickoff. But Hill House do come away with possession. And straight away looking to inject <laughs> into the attack, and they do draw the penalty no, no. as well. And that's better looking from Hill House of Doncaster, who are 19 points adrift at the moment. <laughs> And help at all. The grammar school leads with a turnover that breaks. Holding and then kicking away. And Hill House lose another 10 yards Keep unnecessarily. Going. Keep going. You can't go yet until. On him. On Harry him. He painted them with the tap. Try scoring the first half. Binion. Woodward. Matty Sugars with a strong carry. A really physical figure. He's drawn the penalty as well. Yep. And Sugars 14 drawn high. Yellow. 11, sorry. Oh, Looks at here himself. The Yorkshire hooker. Well, there's the tap, and it's with Binion. Skips away from two and does the show and go as well. Does he have the legs to take it to the line? Picks the safe option and Will Hyde goes over. Well, top work from Harry Vinian. He plays fly half for the whole of the north of England. Of course, at county level. Very creative there. And pretty selfless, too, to hand it off to Will Hyde for his second. No luck from the kickoff from all the way out on that right hand side. But from the yellow card, they always had the uh, opportunity with that player over. Oh, Drew in the first defender, good support from Hyde. And Binion will once again take the kickoff. Another hotly contested kickoff that Hill House come away with. You're high, high. And a bit of deja vu here as they draw another penalty off the kickoff, but this time instead they chip it through. Well, Woodward on the cover had to hack it through himself. But well, they've done well to keep control of possession. The grammar school at Leeds, 24 points to the good, but also with a man advantage, but that's a loose pass. Charlie Duncan try scorer once more in the first half. But uh, used up the last of his legs in this game at least and is replaced. No. Two minutes, not yet. Line out then for Hill House School. Still down to six players. They do claim the line out. Back! But it's been turned over in the tackle and all of a sudden, <laughs> school no, 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 possession, no, but no. penalty and another 10 yards and perhaps a card here. No. No, we're going 10. Well, Harrison Brown. Man can come back. Well, Harrison Brown. Wait, fact, just wait. Will Brooks of Yorkshire, who has seen the yellow card. And just like that, Hill House on, School yeah? are returned to seven. Yeah, yeah. It might be a little bit too late for them to turn it around, but they will certainly be able to get on the board. They use this one man advantage correctly and it's good work to free up the hands and keep the ball alive carried in by Perry back down the right hand short. side goes Millington who's inches short pick and go denied by Leeds this time and held up five meter scrum gents your ball blue ball yeah it's not there's no goal five line drop out in uh, seven for Hill House but it's not the takeaway they'd have wanted from that attack Come here, blue ball. Jonah Chav Tremensky. 
Who was given the yellow card. Are we good? Back on to feed this scrum. Two. Crouch! Find! Set! The Chemsky with the feed. Good counter drive from Leeds, but they do come away with it. That first receiver, they'll take contact. Millington. Tackle now, release him! Up, but Chemsky in support. Playing the pick and go. Dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he dropped it. Spilt at the line. Just awaiting the referee's uh, decision oh, there. I forget what that is now. It's a five metre scrum, yeah? Well, it's turningly attempted no. to place it back. It scrum, was stripped by ball. the grammar school at Leeds, and well, it'll be a scrum for the leaders. Uh, hold on, your uh, your man come back on now. Rookie. Kicking the ball away. Rookie. Yeah, you can't in, in well, seven. the grammar school the leads. Rookie, come on. Somebody's coming. Returns to the field. Okay. Crouch. Will Brook. Find. We'll look to Set. contribute here as Leeds Grammar School in position. Counter drive by Hill House. No, no, same ball. Same again, boys. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Crouch. Blind. Set. Razor Perry looking to disrupt for Hill House, but Ball's gone, he's gents. come away with it, and they'll take it to the line with some great pace. Woodward is in behind, but pulls up. Unfortunately. No, he pulled his hamstring. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is unfortunate. Freddie Woodward with some great pace and a great line break as well, but yeah. uh, injured in possession. It looks to be a muscle injury. Completely unopposed, was uh, was in and away, and uh, well, so unfortunate. Will Hyde back on the field in his stead. And we hope it's nothing okay, serious let's go, gents. as he's able to walk on? off the field. OK, let's go. Um, I suppose so, yeah, I mean, he threw the ball down, but he was injured, yeah. <laughs> well, it will still be uh, the grammar school at Leeds who retain possession. Crouch! Bind! Set! And they are able to free up the ball, and away goes Matty Sugars, who hands it off. On the wraparound, the ball is loosed. He just does well to get back to his feet and drive through the contact. Hyde. Not a good offload, a good run from George Asplund and Hyde lifts it again. Tackle and roll! Taken this time from Alex Hassan. Hyde picks and goes, spots a bit of space down the short side, puts in the fend. And Will Hyde will have another score right at the end of this game. Kick back this way, mate. Well, it's been, of a bit of, it's been a bit of a struggle here for Hill House School. The grammar school at Leeds. With a very impressive victory here. They had the first and the final say. Oh, Will you kicked Hyde, the ball away. Yeah, you can't do that. One of the many Cheers. Yorkshire Cheers. Academy Thanks. contingents. Well Thanks, Cheers, mate. Well done. In well this done. impressive well done. side. Well done, mate. Who win Cheers. by 31 unanswered points. The perfect start for the grammar school at Leeds. And up next here on RE2, action from Group V at Seven Oaks School. A famous old name in the game of sevens up against St. Cecilia's Church of England School. That's live here on RE2 at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Up next. Wakefield on RE1, 
St. Cecilia School Wooler versus Seven Oaks School on RE2. Haleybury versus Bedford Modern School on RE3. Boyd Sport School versus Iskol Rose Rebelli on RE4. Ray Gordon versus Reading Bluecoat on RE5. Jess versus Solihull on RE6. And Emmanuel School versus Torquay Boys Grammar School on RE7. Uh, those things are just about to count away. Well then, action from Group V. Newcastle under the Lime School take on Queggs Wakefield over on RE1. But here on RE2, it's Seven Oaks who take on St. Cecilia's. And it's Seven Oaks off the kickoff who have got hold of possession. On the wraparound, looking to create a bit of space in the 15s channel. Good footwork from, at the start, Will Franco. Seven Oaks then go right to left, using the full width here on RE2. And back now the other way they come. Good patient sevens. And they spot a bit of green space to run into. And this will be the first try. It's Oliver Brook. He runs to Cathalon for England when he's not tearing up here at Roslyn Park. But he has the first try and Seven Oaks take an early lead. Well, they might be behind St. Cecilia's, but they are a great story based in Wandsworth. They don't own a rugby pitch of any format to that they can regularly train on, so... Often using others on, instead. Dad. Make sure they're behind you. They are part of the... Uh, Harlequin's program aimed at spreading the game, so they do receive regular coaching from Quinns. And from the kickoff, Seven Oaks looking to be a bit of a nuisance, but it has come since Cecilia's way. Five ribs and tackle. Stripped in contact, but then knocked advantage. on, so since Cecilia's will still be in possession. Good advantage. Not on by Red. So a scrum for them, and their first real opportunity to string together an attack. Sir. Crouch! Bind! Set! Scrum then to be fed by Alex Naples, the captain, and they look to break quickly as well out the back door, but it's just spilled by Woodcroft as the ball went down. Seven Oaks escape. And they will have a Crouch! more defending. Here then, St. Cecilia's Set. already conceded in this game, and Seven Oaks look pretty threatening from the set piece as well. Good pace on the wraparound, and it's back with Brook, and Brook through the hole. Well, he certainly got some pace. The decathletes of England, and <laughs> under pressure from Woodcroft, still manages to dot down under the sticks. Some seriously good running from Brooke. And very much a threat for Seven Oaks. He won't be made to chase the kickoff as Seven Oaks go again. Thank you, Asgard. 
Hamish McQueen. With the kickoff, and it's hooked high, tapped back well by St. Cecilia's. But Seven Oaks look to guide them into touch. We're in touch. And they have forced to turn. Not now, not now. Not now. Here's your mark. That's you. Stay on there. Take a couple yards, gents. On the 22. Back, back as well, back as well. Line out then for Seven Oaks. Let's see how their set piece functions. Not it's straight. short of the five Free meter, or not straight even, is the call. Little Free trick kick. play, trying Bad to create some quick ball, but it hasn't worked out. And since Cecilia's then with an opportunity Boxer. to uh, really break out their first half for the first time in a while. Four minutes of defending almost in this game, and they take a hard line to the line by Alex Pownall. Well, there's two in the tackle for Seven Oaks. But it does come back from Cecilia's way. There's the miss pass. Little show and go to beat the first defender away from three. What a run this is. And St. Cecilia's will score, and the captain, Naples, will go in unchallenged. Some seriously impressive stuff from Archie Naples there. Wasn't a lot on for St. Cecilia's. But he stepped his way out of trouble and threw three tackles as well. Seven Oaks pegged back, and their advantage cut to five. Some really lovely footwork and a little show and go as well. We're inside his own half. Archie Naples went the length. Kick off then for St. Cecilia's, and it will fall just an inch Not short. Ten. Almost an excellent kick off. Instead, it will be a free kick for Seven Oaks. On the Oaks. 10, James, on the 10. Stephen. The Queen changes the direction of the attack. Another switch on the inside. Record hands it off once more. And then a bit of pace added to the attack by Franco, who breaks away. And Franco will score, and Seven Oaks will re establish their two try advantage. About a minute. And with a minute to go in this first half, you know, Frank Combe. Well, he loves the hard line, according to his teammates, and he's picked one out there really well. Real pace onto the ball, brushes off the first defender with a little show and go. Who thought for all the world the ball had been passed away, lifted up his head in dismay. Kick off then from McQueen. Once back again, back. teasing delivery that had to be uh, dealt with by St. Cecilia's who tapped it into touch. So Seven Oaks now with McQueen. Back to the short side they go as a two on one. Frees up the hands and they will score another. Another try. For Seven Oaks on the brink of half time. And it was just a little yeah. too easy this time. Just mind out of the way, gents. <laughs> Going into the break then. Seven Oaks have scored another quick line out. Quick thinking from McQueen to go back down the short side. And once they're in the 15 channel here. Well, it was a good offload by Arturo Steven and Freddie Poynton. Thank you. With the try in the end. Okay, running now. Well, at half time then, Seven Oaks have looked the stronger of the two sides. They lead by 24 to 7. But since Cecilia is certainly not out of the game. I'm what can they offer in response going exactly. into the second <laughs> half here, live <laughs> on RE2 yeah, yeah. at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens?
Good afternoon from RE Control, the 12.20 round of fixtures on RE1, Dave Allen's score versus HKC Dragon. On RE2, colleagues of Enfro versus Churchill College. On RE3, Victoria College versus Bryanston School. On RE4, the Herodian versus St Peter's School. On RE5, King Alfred's Academy versus Ashford School. Well, Seven Oaks raring to go here. As they lead by 24 to 7, playing from right to left in this half in their familiar red and white strip. They'll be kicking off to St Cecilia's, and uh, Hamish McQueen's kickoffs have been pretty impressive so far. And they'll look to land it on the right hand side of that 10 meter line. This time just a little deeper, but once again, a great chase on. Seven Oaks looking to marshal St. Cecilia's into touch, but instead they do have possession. A strong carry. Seven Oaks struggling to put down St. Cecilia's man. And now they'll change the direction of the attack around the corner. Good carry from Woodcroft. Just knocked on at the base of the breakdown, unfortunately. And that brings an end to St. Cecilia's attack. And Seven Oaks with possession on the 22 in a threatening position. Oh, sir. Now, if someone come over, look at numbers. Crouch! Scrum then to be fined by the Set. try score right at the end of that uh, first half. Freddie Poynton. Seven Oaks do come away with it, and once again, Frank Coombe on the wraparound frees up the ball. On the hat trick is Brook. And that's, a tr that's another try for Oliver Brook, a hat trick in this game. And Seven Oaks make it five. And that sees an end to uh, Oliver Brook's contributions to the second half. Stand and deliver stuff for the England decathlete. Regulation from McQueen as well to add the extras. Time's off, gents. Ball's away. It was a threatening line that drew Time's in a few off. defenders, and then there's a lovely off. step. And the fen to boot from Oliver Brook. Get times on when you're ready. Let's go, well, it's game over here on RE2. With a fair bit left to play, unless St. Cecilia can offer something, and well, we'll see a card here. Hold it, hold it, hold it. He's got to get off first, okay? Well, the simplest yellow card to have ever been Take given the in, in the game of right, sevens. Just yellow card, he's got to get off. Harry Clayson taking his man out in the air, so. An opportunity then for St. Cecilia, perhaps. Well, it's picked up at the base by Garnier Jones. And Jones on the wraparound, unfortunately, just puts it down. Oh, Todd, scrum here. So instead, it will be a scrum for Seven Oaks, who play with six. Crouch! Bind! Set! Well, down the short side they go instead. Usashan Charanasakera. But it's been put down. So instead, it will be a scrum for St. Cecilia's who. Once again, Crouch. play with a man advantage, but it's Find. behind on the scoreboard. 31-7, they trail. And the captain, Naples, with the feed and skips away down the left-hand side, and he will surely have a second try. 
Well, Archie Naples has looked bright throughout for St Cecilia's opportunistic stuff for him. <laughs> Just caught Chanara Shakira, who thought it was turned over at the scrum on the wrong side and was able to break away to score. Three. Three minutes to go. And it will be St Cecilia's with the kickoff this time. Good thinking from Naples. And it's a good kickoff as well. And it's been spilt. So knock on Backwards, advantage. However, and Seven Oaks have latched upon it just about. Just knock on. Advantage over! And they've managed to create a bit of space down this left hand side. Good carry from Flan. A little show and go from McQueen, who breaks through the second tackle as well. Stepping back off the right. Hands it off. And Frank Coombe will have his second. But Amos McQueen did all the leave hard it, work. Leave it, leave it. Joe's time will be off the kick. And with two minutes to go in this game, Seven Oaks have a six. Time's off. Well, this game is certainly Seven Oaks. Well, there'll be plenty more of action here on RE2. Up next, Church's College take on colleague Sir Benfro of Pembrokeshire in Group F. Church's College off from a 14-0 victory against the Hong Kong Dragons. But colleague Sir Benfro need a response following a loss to Dame Allen's school. For now, it's a kickoff for <laughs> St. Cecilia's and a Knock penalty on. for offside. In front. Not done, penalty here. Spilled from the offside. kickoff, so offside is the call. Penalty for Seven Oaks. And just over a minute to go. Chandra Sakira hands it off, and they will have another. Clayson back on from the yellow card. And the quick conversion as well by Chanara Sakira. Just created the two on one. And from the kickoff, returned on the boot. And it will just run out for a line out for no Seven Oaks. <laughs> you good? Good option from the yeah. captain three, Naples, three. but uh, Here's your mark. set piece okay. opportunity then for Seven Oaks. And it is clean ball for them. And they're insecure now. Hands it off to the hat trick man, Oliver Brook who evades the first defender, and Brooke will have the legs every day of the week to score his fourth. Good effort from Zef Stowe, but... Let's go, time up. Oliver Brooke has had an excellent game. And he gets his fourth, and Seven Oaks crossed the 50-point barrier. For the... Uh, Highest scoring game of the day here. A big win for Seven Oaks. Very impressive stuff. And they get their tournament off to a flyer as they look ahead to the next game up against Queggs okay. Wakefield. But since Cecilia's, it's just great to have them here at the Howden Rosling Park National School okay, Sevens. Good luck. With plenty of potential in this side. But we'll move on to our next game live here on RE2 in the under 18s boys vast, which we'll be covering all day here as Church's College take on colleagues Sir Brenfro looking for their first win of the competition.
Good afternoon, the 1220 round of fixtures. Jane Allen Stall versus HKC Dragons on RE1. Colleagues of Entro versus Churchill College on RE2. Victoria College versus Bryanston School on RE3. The Herodian versus St Peter's School on RE4. King Alfred's Academy versus Astrid School on RE5. It's got a different Amman versus Dollar Academy on RE6 and different Taft versus Milton Abbey School on RE7. Those matches just getting underway. Church's College against Pembrokeshire College now with Church's College having won their first match against Hong Kong International Sevens team here that have come over for the competition Backwards. and it was a loss to Dane Allens from Pembrokeshire College in their first game so Church is looking to go two from two here Church is playing in the blue red and white Pembrokeshire College having to get to grips with Churches who are out of the blocks really quickly. There are a lot of commitment from these boys in their warm up and also to getting their names on the scoreboard here. This man here, Lockie Ellis Jones, was the man who was dishing up the team numbers and names, making sure all his teammates were represented here, ensuring that Tom Claydon is getting his name on the live stream here at Roslyn Park, and they're all getting their names on the live stream. First try for churches and that is a beauty through the hands kick in please dotted down by jake hegarty smoothly done here even a bit of exhibition from archie rush him and then rush him again playing the link man to ensure that hegarty got Stay away behind the kicker lads let's go please The churches go up to the skies. Not enough of a chase on to challenge. Pembrokeshire College uh, pulling this ball away. Release him on the floor, please. Let's go. Got to have a massive shout out to Pembrokeshire College for whoever put their team's information Release. together. Names and numbers. It is the most comprehensive we've ever seen, I think, at Roslyn Park. These boys are out on the park to, to do their team proud. Jesse James. Tackle seven shirt. Onside. Now he plays Linkman. Lovely pass from James. And then oh, Archie oh, Valance oh, with a delay on the ball. Bowen Clark plays for Pembrokeshire Youth side. That Tackle! Move breaks down. And Churches again will take this close to the ruck. And nice show and go to go over halfway. Tackling is good from Bowen Clark, but the Ball is still here for Churches, and now it's Lockie Ellis Jones flying down the touchline. Is Ellis Jones? He's dragged into touch. Brilliantly done. On me, please. I think it was Ellis Cannon that managed to haul down the flying Ellis Jones. Right, line out on me. Let's go. And the boy in the blue scrum hat, Ellis Cannon, from Fishguard Youth Team. Stay ten. Stay ten. Wait for my arm. He gets to throw in at this line out. Church is seven up. Gone five. Line. That's gone five. It's really well worked. Cannon with the step. That was definitely done. And the offload was superb. Now they're going to the edge and looking to break open this defence. Rowan Smith with the ball. And that's lovely. And this is excellent from Pembrokeshire College. Ball back inside. There's Smith. He's rampaging. Tackling is Stay. good from Clayden. Come, come, come. Yee! 
<laughs> Superb support, though. Jesse James, quality of this particular pool stage match is right up there. And Pembrokeshire College with the pass again, speculating to Cannon, who has got big attentions. Back on the base! He does the floor, though. Advantage offside. Through the middle of the. Number nine. Play from Sean Fraser Jones. <laughs> no advances coming. Number nine offside. Number nine. Jesse James. Bade on the outside, Open but it's play. intercepted by Churches. Big step from Clayden, who wants to move through the gears now. Tom Clayden. Avancey is not on. Now they'll work this over to one side. Instead, cool? they go back with Rushim. Harrying and hassling in defence is superb from Valence. Breaking through the middle again comes Jake Hegarty, who puts his head down. Churches have a second after riding out an attacking set from Pembrokeshire College, which will have drained them of quite a lot of energy. To then strike back <laughs> like that is testament to their fitness. This is brilliant from Churches. Awareness to throw that pass. I don't know how much was known about it, but it ended in the right place. And Hegarty's hands seem to always be the right place for this team. Stay behind the kicker. The church is two up. They beat Hong Kong College Dragons Backwards. 14 points to nil in their first match. Whilst Pembrokeshire College lost to Dame Allens. So to have any release, of this group, the Pembrokeshire College team need to win this match. Do that and they will throw the group back into contention. Picked up well. That was Archie Rushim again. Backwards. He's kicked this over. Play slows right down with Keanu Williams, who makes sure that he brings all his team back on side. And that was clever from Keanu Williams to just sucker the defence onto him. Away. Archie Valance fights to the floor. Lovely step. Oh, that's brilliant. Setting off upfield is Cannon. Not held! Lovely pass out the back. Doesn't find the right player, Advantage. though. Tackle without the ball. And penalty churches, so Pembrokeshire College down to six. Whilst Cannon gets back on side there. Roll, roll. roll first, is thank you. On the ball. Another step from Rushim. Supporting nicely, and the offload will forward see pass. a try scored. Scrum but down. The forward pass. Here's your mark. Forward pass, Good scrum down. Good from Russian. That was smart to Jasper Henderson. Blue ball. Again, look at that tackle, though. Pembrokeshire College with the hits First scrum, boys in. stable. This is also last play. Last play. Last play. Crouch. Bind. Set. Yeah, good scrum, boys. Churches get it back. And they'll, from this scrum, with just seconds remaining in the half, get a third. That will prove so important. Tommy Spencer yep. gets it done. Wait, wait. <laughs> Hang on, wait. Wait, you've got to wait. You've got to wait. Do it again. Tommy Spencer told to. Is that the ball? He's just running. Yeah. Take it again. Just take it waiting. again, OK? I can't see. Just to him. Thanks. No. So no okay. uh, dice with the conversion. 19 points it? to nil at Perfect. half time. Church is in charge after this try. The Hampshire School from uh, near Petersfield and Liphook Way. Uh, with a really good showing on RE2 in this first half. 19 points to nil against Pembrokeshire College.
good afternoon. B1240, round of fixtures. Dipbridge School versus Sandback School on RE1. The King School Grantham versus Ship Lake College on RE2. Elizabeth College versus Langley School on RE3. St Paul School versus Kirkham Grammar School on RE4. The Campion School versus the London Oratory School on RE5. The Fulham Boys School versus Thomas Alice School on RE6. And Orleans Park School versus Lord Wanford College on RE7. Those Churches are in action at 2.20 for their next match, whilst Pembrokeshire College will be waiting until 2.40 for their final group stage match after this. And how this match ends will influence significantly the mindset going into that final match. But really for churches, as every it is for every school, they know that to qualify out of the group, you need to win all three on your first morning. And it's gonna be so important for churches if they are to do that, to finish with as many points as possible. And they're running this in from kickoff for try number four. And that's Tom Claydon who goes in again. Now for the team that finishes top of the group, they get a chance to go and play in an elimination match, which is essentially a winner of that one. Comes back for the next day's action and gets to compete for another group stage tomorrow. Then you go to knockouts after that. The format is so gruelling at Roslyn Park. But really, as far as the players are concerned, they know that to go through, you quite often have to win your first all four matches on day one. If Churches or if Pembrokeshire College can win this though, things would be, would be different. But from 26 points to nil down, it is going to be tricky. And Church is looking so organised. Finn Barrowcliffe. Sam Roberts on the pass there. Change of direction from Claydon. Big man who carries the ball in two hands and presents a difficult target for opposing defences. Not needing to be tidied up here by Barracliffe, which he does. Pass on from Roberts. Back to Spencer, who cuts back in and puts a fend in, and Tommy Spencer's away. Shrugs off another defender. Good tackle from Cannon, but the offload is good, and the try is good. Number 20, Rory Hodges. Not sure uh, Rory Hodges will uh, want to see the replay of that conversion, but he might well want to see this try in slow motion because it was well set up. Tommy Spencer with a great bust here, and he rode that challenge from Cannon so well. Good support line from Hodges. Nicely dinked up into the air. Challenge was good. Pembrokeshire College will get possession from this scrum. Good scrum, please. Stable, OK? Crouch! Yeah. Um, Boy! The West Walians Set. compete in the WRU Schools and Colleges Under-18 Silver Conference here. And Ellis Cannon is one of their Star Sevens players who has just broken up the blind side, has a sweeper to beat, takes on the sweeper, and still powering, but he's rumbled into touch. Lockie yeah. Ellis Jones. Well, these two have been sparring in On terms me, of line, last okay? ditch defending because in the first half it was On me. Ellis Cannon who was shutting down Lockie Let's Ellis have a Jones. Gap, lads, please. Yeah. On the opposite touchline. Stay 10. Got to stay and 10. Ellis Move Jones back. lands one on Cannon. Let's get going. The keen boxer as well as Ellis stop, Cannon. Stop, stop. Time off. It's Guys, really tough stuff. the gap's got to be central, please. Time's off. Let's reset. It's got to be central. He's standing there, you stand here, they stand there. Good gap, thank you. Time on. 
Church's ball. Smart line out to go back. Guys to got in touch here. Player throwing. Same in. again, please set well. Here you go, boys. Here's your mark. Here's your mark here, blue. Blue. Here you go. There you go. There you go. Stay ten. There. They came there. into Roslyn Park on good form. They were the Play runners it. up in the plate competition in the Landavri Sevens last. Backwards week. first! This Pembrokeshire College side. And this is Vantage. maybe the first chance for them to get on the scoreboard. No advantage, knock on blue. Scrum now and red ball. Here you go. Scrum now, red ball. Crouch! Blind! Step up, time's off. Guys, you've got to wait for my calls, okay? Let's reset, please. Time's back on. Crouch! Blind! Set! Yes, please, Red. Barracliffe feeds the scrum. Misses out. First receiver wants to go wider. Chipping behind here. The chase is on from Hegarty. He doesn't take the ball, though. Pembrokeshire College reply. Open play! Now the interception again. And Churches over halfway, supporting the wings. If they can find it, Barracliffe has to hack on. Might bounce for Barracliffe. It does. Tackle! No hands! Support advantage. comes from Hodges. Penalty advantage. Off feet, knocking it down. Lockie Ellis-Jones sidesteps over. the last man. And with wind in his hair, he runs in another for Churches. Just wait for me. OK, yes, please. And the man who takes the restarts unsurprisingly kicks this over. A couple of changes of possession in this set of play. Who's blue captain? And Lockie off, Ellis who's Jones, lovely step here with a dash of acceleration to finish it off. Okay, well, I'll speak to you. Yeah. You happy to continue? Yeah. It's about 50 now. Happy to keep going? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Just wait a minute. Time's on, okay, let's go. Yep. So churches head again to the skies. Tap back. Is a good one. Churches. Touch. Keen on the defence. No, the no, no, no. Tom Clayden. Right, there is your mark. Here's the middle. The judo the middle, throw. Okay. You stand there. Red, here's your mark. Stand there. Well, stay 10 blue, please. Your timers, everybody, to try and stay on top of Move Churches back. College's next match at 2.20 against Dame Allen School and Pembrokeshire College's next match at 2.40 against Hong Kong Sports Institute. That'll be the final matches of the group stages. Churches are going to end this one with another score. Oh, sorry. And this one is Tommy Spencer's. Just from there. Guys, that's full time now, OK? Full time. Churches then 45 points to nil winners over Pembrokeshire College. And they had to play error-free rugby in order to get to that well score. Well Pembrokeshire well College with their own uh, attacks were dangerous, almost got on the score sheet a couple of times. But in the end, they will still be looking for their first victory at 2.40 against Hong Kong Institute. That's on RE4. Unfortunately, we won't see these two teams for the rest of today on RE2 for group stage matches anyway. Um, but it's been great to see them. And we wish them both the best of luck in their next matches as well. Final score, Th Churches College 45, Pembrokeshire College nil.
The next match on pitch RE2, Shiplake College against the King's School Grantham. Shiplake on the left-hand side of our screen, the King's School Grantham on the right. Now the King's School Grantham won their first match today, 19-10 against Ipswich. Shiplake, however, lost their first match, 22-14 against Sandbach. So they have to win to keep any hopes of qualifying for the elimination match at the end of today, which only the group winners will achieve. Of course, the King's School Grantham have to keep winning if they are to have... No hand, no hand, no, 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 no. thank you, red pawn, good. Well. But what those first two results show is just how tight this group no. might be. A team might be able to get through without having won all three of their matches in a group this tight. So nothing off the table for either team coming into this. Everything needs to 13. be refocused on the next 14 minutes and in the preparations that both these teams have been taking at the side of the pitch. Oh, read by the white. Knock on. In bruising and utterly focused mode. Well, wherever you're watching on from, and whoever you're no, backing, it's great to have your company on here ground, on the next gen on. 15 of RE2. Guys, Roslyn that's Park. your hooker, that's your mark here. If you're looking to follow Ipswich School against Sandbach School, that's on RE1 right now. That's the England Rugby uh, YouTube Crouch. channel to find that. We we'll have another stream of that Set. pitch on next gen, but England Rugby also showing. Okay, we're going to reset. Pitch. White, Nerly, pushing, this is where please, okay? Be. Come here. This is where we want to be. This is a come here, come on me, game. come on me. With so much riding on it for both boys so here. With the push you, okay? Ball with. Crouch! Is in the hands right now. Fine! Set! Hold! Of the King's School Grantham. Elliot Paley plays scrum half. And now ducking back is Ethan Blackmore, the man who's in the Lesser Tigers Academy. Knock on. Knock on from King's School Grantham just before it got out to Josh Brahua, another man in the Leicester Tigers Academy, captain here, the number eight. Stay on that side, okay? Crouch! Bind! Set! Ship like pick and go from the back, and that's a lovely inside out step, and then the cut back again, Not doubling hard. his money on sidestep time. Okay, no advantage. Very light feet. Could well be a patch white wearing 14. We haven't got a 14 Crouch. listed on our team sheets given Fine. by Ship Lake College Set. from this morning. There you are. Elliot Paley to Charlie North. That's Blackmore. Blackmore goes himself. A little bit isolated for a moment. Here's Josh Brawa. Little sidestep. That was good. Backwards. Henry Hewson with the link play here. And King's School Grantham are zoning in on the first try of the match. Monty Belden runs it home and gets under the sticks as. Well, good hands in tight side, spaces on the far right-hand side before they space things out a little more and stretch ship like. <whistles> so King School Grantham, seven points to nil up. Kickoff taken by the King's School Grantham. Flat. So ship like tackle. No, leave it. Take care. Their way forward. Defensive uh, connection. That's the word so often used by defence coaches around the world. Is so important in sevens. Keeping the distance between yourself and your teammate next to you. 
and then being backing yourself to cover across just as the King School Grantham do here but that offload is genius and Shiplaker away and scorching across the turf Ben Zacharias and Zacharias goes under the sticks from distance well they had to make three offloads from near to the defensive line in order to un to unpick the King's School Grantham and if you do that the defensive team in many ways can be quite happy with their efforts here and just say this is a lovely piece of play not much that could be done there because players had already been sucked in twice so that third pass really left no one in the vicinity it's just good play Zacharias not 10 with the try kick doesn't go 10 meters King School Grantham they reached the uh, quarterfinals of the under 18 national vase this year the national vase uh, final ended up uh, flat, a flat. Piece, no uh, this year at um, Twickenham these guys made the quarterfinals of that so big 15 season behind them come back here move closer guys white come back here <coughs> crouch vine set stay behind stay behind stay behind nine thank you ship lake scorching across the turf again to run in from distance swerving stepping it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant chip lake from distance to the house i want to hear that anymore. and i can only apologize that we don't have the number 14 on our team sheets to give this man the exposure the big name that he needs patch white is a man whose name is is listed to no number Could be patch. whatever this is stunning absolutely brilliant on that final step last play last play all behind kickoff goes deep getting towards the end no, of the first half ahead King School Grantham Backwards. having won that first match of theirs but behind here Ship Lake looking for their first win having lost in their opening encounter pass along the line is uh, Flat. a good one the support is there from Dubal chipping in ahead excellent chase here great effort being penalty. shown by Paley and a penalty try Paley impeded <laughs> so all seven we are nicely tied up here at half time he pulled the player without the ball yeah it's half time so it is 14 all uh, our score uh, graphic will update shortly but half time between these two schools is all square number six number six yellow card putting the player
Second half is underway here. 14 points each in this second group stage match. Some, the King's School Grantham have knocked this long. And we'll have to come all the way back. Ship Lake down to six players after a yellow card was shown following the penalty try at the end of the first half. So they're on the attack, but with one less player. They've got to find another way through, possibly without using the extra space they have on the field. Good tackle coming in from Ethan Blackmore. Chip Lake going round the outside here. Beautiful stretching of the legs. And Oscar Smale, the man they call Barney Rubble, <laughs> causing trouble all over the pitch. Despite being down to six, it doesn't stop Put the full seven from being scored. Nice tap and go, this. Dan Coles. And this is a one man solo exhibition of real class. Left or right? So 21 points to 14 now. Still with six players on the park, though. So a great chance with the ball in hand for the King School Grantham to strike back. They're going to burst the line, and then it's a foot race, and it's going to be one. Elliot Paley is away, and he's going to get his own try, having created a penalty try at the end of the first half. Good finish from distance. One year seconds. Come on. <laughs> it's the Roslyn Park. The kind of place where you get referees telling players to get on with it. And uh, fair 21 play. 21 all. But this is a long distance Here run. Come, this back is in. Lung bursting work from Elliot Paley. And he wanted to compose himself before kicking the ball over to make sure. But he got all seven. The white yellow card is back in. You guys, you still have to wait. So we're up to After this action. seven players each now. 21 points all. Shiplake have to win oh, this good. to Behind. keep any chance of topping the group oh, alive. And the King School Grantham really have to win as well in order to top the group. To be sure right. of that situation anyway. To be in control of their own destiny. Oh, and good. we're still tied up with four minutes to play. It's two evenly matched teams with class plenty in the bank and Ethan high tackle, to set the King's Cup off and running. 22 high tackle here. Tap and go, Oscar Corley. Ships it over. Flat. Tag, tag with the pass. <laughs> and the try scored, Monty Belden at the double for the King's School Grantham. Yeah, three minutes. So here we're seeing a throwback to a previous match, I think the first match of the day, actually, Bedford School, Bedford Modern School against uh, Oscar Lee Placelli. This is the try we've just seen. Quick tap yeah. and go was nicely done. Ball behind. Chip Lake work something nicely out of potential trouble on that side, and then they'll cut through the middle. Really, really, Black, thank you. Lund Good Spence move, Seven. With his first break of this match, Ben Zacharias, who scored one of Ship Lake's tries. This is a intentful run from Finn Hawks. 
and he gets it back to Zacharias, who's all on his own. High tackle! Three players for the King School Grantham around him, but maybe Shiplake can unpick the defence still. There's one more pass to be made. It is made. And diving in goes Finn Hawks. One and a half minutes to play. A lot rides on this kick now for Number 10. Shiplake to level things up. Shifton. A draw would be something for Shiplake. It would keep their hopes alive of getting out of the group and topping it. Oh, uh, we've got a minute and a bit. This is over. Oh so but credit a really good score here. Nice pass from Will Ryder. Time off. Hugo Simmons involved as well. There's also a ballroom dancer yeah, as Simmons. The Finn Hawks. And then we signed it off. One minute to play, less than. Will Ryder. Knocks this off his left boot. That's a perfectly judged kick, taken in the air well by Barney Rubble. Here is Barney Rubble. It's Oscar Smale who's gone through. Now, the King School Grantham. That pass could have unleashed. The King School's Grantham number 12, Archie Tag. Shiplake will have possession with seconds Boys, remaining. Here. Come in. Hookers. A draw would not be uh, the worst thing in the world for the King School Grantham. Crouch! Mine! A Shiplake, it just keeps their hopes alive. <laughs> Early push by the black. Go, 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 it would be go, go, so go, go, much better. They're going to hunt for this here. Here is Oscar. Cut back again. The hands are good. The lines of running are there, but so too the King School Grantham tackle. with a. That's all right. That's all right. The ball was out. Backward by the black. Had been made, they would have been unpicked. Still, the King School Grantham with the ball. No, that's that not good. He was in the middle. No, leave it, leave it, leave it, sir. Thank you. Good move. And they go through Paley to the left, now through the middle. Give me look, give me look, good. Rangy Noah Marshall in the red scrum hat secures the ball. Into the red we go. 28 points all between the King School Grantham and Ship Lake, and the legs are taken of the captain, Josh Brahma. Diving. Number 10, but diving. The, the ball. 10 meters. And another 10 meters. Wait, 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 wait. And Ship Lake's hopes in this pool. Yeah, put the ball and by the, the scoreline. They're back down, Staying guys. Not is. If their defence gets breached again, their hopes of making it to day two will be over. Snap back through the middle from Paley. He's been a, a bundle of energy as Elliot Paley. He wants to Flat. create more problems. Is this the last pass that will Tackle. do it? Off the floor, Paley. One man to beat. Elliot Paley scores. That's and sends time. the King School ground from up, two from two. <laughs> the school which Sir Isaac Newton attended has come up with uh, the a final winning, piece of play, which might not moment, quite be of that level of genius, but nonetheless it's off. That's it. ranks up there in terms of rugby sevens yeah, anyway. And that has been slotted through for a fine win. The King School Grantham have beaten Shiplake. A thrilling game on RE2. Cracking game. Well done. And Shiplake played such a good part in this one. 35-28. Rugby Sevens matches no, don't come much better than that. Thank you. Superb. Well done. Bravo, monsieur. That was a cracking game.
Pangbourne College against Rydal Penrith School from Colwyn Bay in North Wales. Next on, pitch Ari Turner. I'm delighted uh, for this one to be joined by Jonathan Osborne from Rydal Penrith School. Um, Jonathan, thank you firstly for coming up here uh, and joining the team. As you're injured, aren't you? I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, we're not seeing you out there today. But yeah. it's great to have you here. And uh, um, your team, tell us about that first match, what happened in it? Oh, uh, we started off strong. We got a try in uh, quite early. Unfortunately, you can see the try later, uh, pretty soon after, however. Um, it managed to get to half time. I think it was two tries, two tries. And then I think it went downhill from half time onwards, to be honest with you. So, this one, of course, has uh, an importance to keep your hopes alive of qualifying for the second day. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do need to win this and the game after if you want to qualify for tomorrow. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a tough format, isn't it, uh, Roslyn Park? And every schoolboy who comes here. You know, very few actually ever make it to the second day because it, it's such an achievement to do that. Um, and if you guys do it today, you're going to be doing it the hard way because because Pangbourne have won their first match, so everything kind of hinges on this one. And for yourself, um, Jonathan, is it your first time here down at Roslyn uh, Park? I've been for. I went down uh, two years ago. Uh, unfortunately, I missed last year to another to, due to another ankle injury. But um, yeah, for school, it's about the time I think. OK, well, it's fantastic to, to hear your voice on the comms if we can't say your name on the pitch, which uh, which is a shame. But we've we've got Rydal Penrith boys out there. Will Tav, Ollie Davis, Matthew Johnson, Zach Roberts, Theo Chapman, Tom Lennon and James Gilman, um, as well as other players as well. Jonah Craddock, Keenan Buckley and Will Hibbert. Crouch! And Jonathan Oswald. Oswald, Fine. sorry. Osborne. Osborne, OK, well, <laughs> your friend has I've got the wrong name on my hitting here. <laughs> So this is a good chance here. What will the team be trying to do? Do you think back, from this back scrum? Back red on me, guys. Um, That's your mark. Well, we need to we'll further we need back to attack red. wide. Thank honestly. you. Um, we do have a strong forward team. I can't the scrum. Crouch. We do need to um, let's get a wide. I think. Set. Get a wide. Get it around. Could be on for a try here, hopefully. It's James Gilman who's standing on this left wing for Rydal Penrith. Set, move nine. Through the middle, they have to go initially. Good tackling. This is a. Pick up and passes on the back inside. Matthew Johnson does well. Still there. Black ball. Stay back, Red. Will Tav in the blue scrum. Guys, hat. in the tackle. That's knocked on by Red in the tackle. Scrum. In the tackle. Seventy is obviously a wide game, Jonathan, but so often it gets condensed into almost 15 style when you're close to that run. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough work, bro. You need a lot of stamina for 70 to It's uh, unlike 15. Crouch, Vine, set. Save the ball, Mike. Second chance, and this one might be cleaner ball here for Rydal Penrith. Through the middle they go, scorching across the turf. Tom Lennon dives in. Yeah, I got that side easier. Okay. Tell us about Tom a bit, Jonathan. Um, I found Theo, uh, Theo Chapman has scored, actually. Um, yeah, he's oh, Theo Chapman, apologies. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Theo Chapman. <laughs> yeah, Theo Chapman, um, what's called? He's, um, I've been playing rugby for long. He joined about a couple of years ago. Got into rugby when he joined the school. Um, and he's been putting up some good numbers recently. Yeah, I think he's um, the vice captain. Vice captain today. So he's um, performing really well today, actually. Had a good couple of runs in the previous match. Um, I'd like to see what he do. Oh, my God. It's a great start for Rydal Penrith School. Bodges red, come on, Bodges. by Pangborn. Bodges over. Shot. Good shot. Tackle move, Black. Hands away from Janssen. Lovely straight in here, nice. and then the offload is good too. And Josh Bywater is away. And making sure that no one was going to catch him. Big dive from Bywater. The captain. Levels things up. Pangborn wouldn't be a school that you would normally play on your 15th circuit, of course, no, um, no Jonathan. And, and I suppose no one in this group is a team you've come across before. Um, no, um, well, actually, we have played um, Christchurch in hockey before. Um, but was the, I just feel you know, you need, I wasn't you sold that. that the love But normally we do play, um, limit ourselves uh, to um, North Wales teams. Uh, they're quite acquainted with them, yeah. Oh! Qualians, <laughs> pegged back by Pangborn. 
Advantage over. But on the ball. Come on, just red. Guys, two locks. Nice Theo Chapman. First one black, second one red. The ball in a dangerous Stop. position. Jonah Craddock also involved. Yeah. One knock, two knocks. Scrum. It's a lovely part of the world, uh, Colwyn Bay. I've been up there just the once. Fantastic place yeah, to play is, rugby. Yeah, it is nice in the summer as well. I like to say, yeah, Port Ferry Beach is a uh, it's, it's a nice place to stay. To play. Yeah. Crouch. Long journey Fine. down here this morning, <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, and we stayed um, overnight in the Airbnb. So we came, uh, what, came from 12 yesterday. OK. Yeah. Oh, proper tour, that. <laughs> Pangborn worked this nicely. Henry Jackson is here. Jackson is away. Oh, he doesn't quite keep his feet, Henry Jackson. He's not held, though. Very released now. Teddy, 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 Teddy. Then Greenwood services the scrum. That's a deft. Dance on the inside twice, brilliantly done, and all the way home. Teddy Williamson, two side steps, then the speed. A fantastic try from Williamson. Move, guys, move. So Pangborn go two tries to the goods. Over Ronald Penrith after their first score. This is brilliant, and uh, this is kind of the things that you might you might dream of doing ahead of going to Roslyn Park in front of the cameras to come up with a try like this. Because it's funny. Because it's funny. Have a ball, please, guys. And I'm sorry, it's against your school, Jonathan. <laughs> It's difficult. We, we don't ask commentators to comment on the on the quality of a try against their uh, their own team. That's uh, that's too much, I think. Pangborn. Come on, Vantage Black. Good advantage over. Here. This is Lennon snaking across the field. Don't get in the way of his fend, though. That's a nice pass. Chapman wants to engage the whole of Pangborn in a foot race. And Pang won't cover the ground. Lovely dummy here. Oh, good slip of the pass as well. A couple of numbers away if they can get it, but they're sucked in. That's good defence from Rydell Penrith. Oh, he's terrible. Off the floor. Release Black! Now down the blind side, yeah. Pang won't looking to open up the oh, North Walians again. Oh, oh, oh. It's oh, Ben Pritchard. Who's gone in? Oh. Get from that side. Try. Yeah. That's a lovely score from Pritchard. Looks to the touchline for a replacement. Extra legs required now. Jonathan, tell me about um, what you can do as a team, a school team, to train for sevens, other than fitness. But what kind of patterns or structure is there, or, or is it not really about that? Um. Well, I like to say it's a lot to do with defending, actually, because defending is quite a big part of the game, of course. It's uh, pretty much 50%. But um, in 15s, it's a completely different game, uh, as I keep saying at school. We, we normally play 15s, but 7s, of course, um, defending is different. So we've got to kind of weep side to side instead of just um, kind of covering like one big area of the pitch. With 7s, you almost like mark a man. Uh, every person right. marks your own man. Um, to cover like for like switches for example or like looping runs so you kind of have to kind of copy the person in front of you to um, well really effectively defend the um, try which is going to come yeah okay so that's that's a lot of where the preparation time yeah, goes yeah. 21-7 to Pangborn at half time against Rydal Penrith School
second half uh, begins here. This group is going to be quite tight, I think, by the end of play today. Durham Cathedral School and Christ College, the other two teams in it, they're playing right now on RE1. That's the stream that's going out by England Rugby channels on YouTube. If you're looking for that match, then follow England Rugby right here. We are needing to see Rydal Penrith School return fire here if they're to keep their hopes alive of qualifying out of the pool. Pangborn are looking to get a second victory of the day. And again, they're using Pritchard as the man to carry themselves forward. Baddy Mead with that pass. Where's 10? And again, it's Pritchard. Stanbridge is the man in support. Henry Stanbridge, penalty comes. They're going to stretch the play here, are they? There's numbers away to the right. It's going to be easy to dot over for Pangborn. can be a difficult place out on a sevens field when a couple of scores go against you, Jonathan. Well, what generally has been the season like for your sevens? How many tournaments have you played up until this uh, point? We played in a total of three, three times tournament. Uh, yeah, we played uh, yeah, three times tournament and we came run it up in all of them, actually. Um, OK. To our surprise, actually. We can't yeah, say. that's yeah. great. Locally, mostly locally in North Wales? Um, yeah, we had our own sevens tournament, the round of sevens, quite recent. Um, Elsmere sevens tournament. We lost to um, the Elsmere first in the final. And um, the Lim, the Cheshire Sevens tournament, which we lost at Bradford, unfortunately. But yeah, we've well, certainly got some players out there that can cause some damage, and one of them in action, just there, going down the blind side. Matthew Johnson on the charge. You mentioned that a couple of your gas men are out uh, yeah. injured. You're up here with me, <laughs> so you're one of the gas men, <laughs> clearly. Oh, I mean, attacking down the wing, this is um, something we need to do, but it's quite hard in its current state. Um, so maybe going through the middle might prove, um, prove beneficial. You know, if you can get the ball at the, at the moment, because <laughs> it's all pangborn, isn't it? Despite that line out, I think being a little bit wonky. Thankfully, a knock on. Yeah, it's a good position here. Four tries to one down. Points need to start coming quickly. So if you're tuning in uh, to watch schools that are coming up, I can tell you that King School, Bruton and St. Edward School, Oxford are on next here on RE2. So stay with us for that one. Dummy and going and looking for space is Keenan Buckley. Penalty. Nice tap and go. That's a sensible way of doing it. Goodness me, that's uh, practical in the extreme. As well played Zach Roberts, the captain. Get with him. Good offload here. Here's what? Lennon. Lennon stepping Send and on. going. Brilliant from Tom Lennon. Now the straightener needed. Will Hibbert provides it. Ought oh, to clear out of thunderous proportions there. Now, Rydal Penrith, so close. Good offload again. It's oh. Buckley. Not fine, unfortunately, sir. Well, that was getting us excited up yeah. here. <laughs> Jonathan, you were about to uh, take over, I think, the commentary <laughs> at that point. You were getting out of your chair. That would have been so nice, though. Who was making the run on the on the cutback, uh, Jonathan? Who was that again? Um, I believe it was uh, Cannon Buckley. Oh, Buckley, yep. After Tom Lennon's good work. Yeah. I have to say sorry to Theo Chapman from earlier because to call to call in the try of his mate who was standing outside him. But uh, well played, Theo Chapman, and that was a nice run for, for Lennon. So pressure on the scrum. Pangborn boxed into a corner here. Drag close to touch, but not out. Now they open things up a bit, and from distance this will be interesting. Big tackle on the edge, but Pangborn are free. And the ears are pinned back, the sights are set on the line, and the try will be scored. Henry Jackson is a star of this Pangborn team. And he runs this in. Great speed on the edge. 
Jonathan, from speedster to speedster, perhaps there's a similarity there that you can comment on. It's good. I mean, he kept his whip, um, didn't didn't let oh, what, didn't let Theo catch him. It's, it's fair, fair enough. It's a fair play. So Ross Lubber yeah. uh, converts it. Graceful runner over the turf, isn't he, Henry Jackson? Chase back from Chapman. But Pangborn are going to have this match uh, under their belts. They're going to get a second win of the campaign for them. Good take in the air. Pritchard, wow, turns, then starts to look for numbers to fend off against. Now has support. Teddy Williamson. Teddy Williamson still going. Williamson in again. If he dotted it down, that is. The tries awarded. Another score. And Teddy Williamson's name up in lights for Pangborn. Minute remaining. There's Jackson who, who takes a breather. It is so exhausting, isn't it, this sport? He might be, uh, it's only 14 minutes, but Teddy Williamson will need a breather, no doubt. And I'm not sure about the finish, but uh, it's been given, so it doesn't much matter. Take him well. Zach Roberts. Tell us about Zach Roberts' captaincy style, uh, Jonathan. Um, it's, 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 it's quite um, it's interesting, you know. It's unique, I'd say. It's, it's, he's, a very, he's a very good captain, I'll, I'll give him that. You um, really, can get the team spirits up. You can um, really talk tactics to, to one another. And he has, the, he has a smart brain in him as well, to be fair. So he can really um, sort out strategies with the team. OK. Well, it gets uh, penalised there, so Pangborn off and going and Pritchard is stepping and he's got a low centre of gravity and power behind those hips. He's proving very difficult to bring down. Lubber. Tackle well. Rydal Penrith College have really stuck to the task of trying to contain Pangborn. But there's been a bit too much structure about them. I'll get a penalty here. Well, you've then gone back again. So you're holding on. The referees here, all provided by the London Society of Referees, uh, have to be extremely fit to keep up with under 18 schoolboys. Lovely switch play. Advantage, Red. But knocking on. The Pangborn. Return fire. Donalds. Donalds. Donald going. <laughs> and Archie Donald. Scoring. The man they call the Swiss Army Knife for Pangborn opens up his toolkit and slices through. Oh, I do apologise. Josh Baddymead, who scored it in the end. Archie Donald having set things up. So Josh Baddymead with the final score for this. Pangborn College. The was formed. The Final the score the then, Pangborn no, no, the beats Rydal Penrith score, 45 points to seven. Uh, and Jonathan, uh, thank you so much for your time and coming up here, and I uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of the competition here. Thank you. We'll see.
We kick off in our next match. It is St. Edward's School from Oxford in action against Kings Bruton. So Teddy's, as they're known, in the blue and looking to wreak havoc from the very off. Charlie Ferret it was on that last uh, jink and weave. Charlie Mason in the 10 shirt, and this is straightening of the very best kind from Lysander Tarrant, and Tarrant goes in under the sticks. Great start for Teddy's. That is blistering. And for this match, we're actually joined by someone from the St. Edward's School ranks. Uh, Hal Holland is alongside me. Hal, uh, thanks very much for, for joining us. I understand you're the travelling reserve here. So uh, as yet, you haven't played, but uh, it's great to have your thoughts and interpretations. That score, Lysander Tarrant, I mean, he looks like a talent. Yeah, Lysander's brilliant. Um, that's a good start. That's how we started last game as well. Only trying is promising rugby so far. Well, Hal, this is going to go up. And the restart so important here. Teddy's all a useful outfit in that regard. But whilst Kings Bruton get on the ball, is there much you know about this school? Uh, absolutely nothing, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's so often the case at Roslyn Park. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I mean, everyone, uh, everyone, very, very rarely do schools know each other. It's just uh, another team name and, and another set of colours that you sort of face. It's the wonderful thing really about Roslyn Park. But Teddy's, in terms of sevens this season, any anything notable to that you've picked up or, or campaigns that you've had so far? So we started the season with Pangborn sevens where we're missing a few key players um, and we played decently there, but it wasn't our best it wasn't our best rugby. After Pangborn we went to Oakham, I think, where we came second in Okay. And then in Surrey Sevens, we lost to Eton in the finals. Yeah, it was a brilliant game. So you've had that that traditional but but hard um, hard campaign to get to here. It's that's quite that's going to toughen you up as Charlie Mason, by the way, has uh, run that in. We'll just uh, talk us through this this score. I mean, it's it's a basic one, but is he a very powerful runner, Mason? Uh, yeah, Charlie Mason, very powerful runner. He's he's a ten, uh, as you can see. Uh, he's very good with his feet, uh, shown there, and yeah, strong, strong carrier. So Mason goes back to then kick things off. Also an, an England Academy player. We have on our notes here about Charlie Mason. An England Academy player we have about yeah, our so notes for Charlie. Charlie got called up to one of the camps um, back a few months ago. Um, he plays Midlands Academy with Matt Sell at eight. Well, look at this from Kings Bruton. This is a reply and a half from having no ball at all in the opening five minutes. That is some reply. And Ludo Weston is the man who scorched the turf and touched down. King's School Bruton in this second match, needing to win it if they are to have any chance of topping the group because St. Edwards won their first match, 59 points to nil. King's School Bruton lost to Warminster, but this is a serious reply because taking on Toby Bird on the outside, who's had a brilliant season in 15s and 7s, and he's brushed off by Big Ludo. How much restart work do you guys do in sevens? We, we spend quite a lot of time on it. Uh, we like the short, the short ones too. So the boys, some of the boys like Buster Elton and my Sander Tank can get up on. Um, and yeah, Charlie's very good at kicking, so a lot of the time he's good with those. This is the set place, which back and ball goes to ground. Offside against Teddy's. Ronnie Frost. Ollie War. Contest at the breakdown. Tapping and going. Real change in dynamic to this one now. As busting through the middle. 
is Nico Williams. Teddy's have it though. Good defend away as well here. Can St Edwards create something before half time to get a third score? That was Toby Bird. Here's the opening try scorer, Lysander Tarrant. Mason. Will Allen now. Oh, this is a nice charge as well. Matt Sell. Matt Sell is home and clear. So Matt Sell's try. And, and what's Matt Sell like to tackle if you get a chance, uh, Hal? Absolutely horrible. Um, he's <laughs> probably the strongest carrier in the team. Okay. He's not great at tackling. <laughs> He's also very fast, which always makes it also difficult to tackle. He's a strong, strong, fast carrier. Yeah, and on a sevens field, you get exposed, don't you? You can't rely on teammates necessarily. It's a one-on-one -on -one tackle so often. Yeah. He's played a few games in the sevens at centres, which is different. Um, I think here he's been as prompt. Um, that's driver. Yeah, well, uh, again, Ludo Weston gets this ball and then buys the pass to Williams, who's knocked into touch, and that's a good, good tackle as well. Half time. So half time uh, between St Edwards and King's School Bruton, and it is St Edwards who are in charge after an easy first match. Pardon? They won. This is a proving a little tougher, but. You've managed to stamp your authority over the team. So what will be the coaches, do you think, saying at, at half-time, Hal? Uh, I reckon there'll be, let's say there'll be some subs, I reckon, first. And then the coaches will tell the boys to relax a bit. Um, and, yeah, just play play how we play. Because, yeah. Very nice. OK, well, we'll take a pause and we'll be back in a couple of moments. King School Bruton to kick off in the second half, chasing this match and hoping to keep their chances alive in this group. But that's not a good start to the second half. And here's Sell. That Sell. I have to go back to the middle of the park. Here is Sell. Al Holland, who is uh, in the commentary box with us here from Teddy's, has been talking up uh, how difficult this man is to tackle. And he doesn't get it there, though. Mason pops it up. That was nicely done from Mason now. Tarrant, and Tarrant has got so much speed in the five-metre channel. It is goodbye from Lysander Tarrant. <laughs> so how many of the years at Teddy's play sevens? Is it, is it the top three years or just the top two? And which year are you in, Hal? So I'm in lower six. I think every year play sevens apart from year 10. Um, a couple of the year 10 boys though are going to be playing for the year 11 in, in 
Park on Wednesday, is it? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. And half your squad is kind of half and half across the age groups. So in the squad there's uh, three of us in lower six, so year 12, which is 13 of uh, Bertie Gow and, and uh, me. Uh, and then in the upper six, uh, there's the rest of the ten boys. So yeah, so it's quite a big divide. Um, yeah. So Kit Holland is here on the ball. I'm assuming a relation oh, to you, uh, to you, Hal. Yeah, so Kit's my older brother. Okay, okay, so uh, everything that we see from him today has is, is in part been tried out on you in the garden in the past, is that right? Yes, indeed. Oh, fantastic. So he's uh, in the number seven shirt, Kit Holland. Keep the angle straight. Over. The ball for Kings Bruton here. Crouch! Nico Bind. Williams is the first receiver Set. outside of this scrum as Henry Hegarty has the ball, but he's not going to get it. He's not going to get a chance to play it because Teddy's are on the tack again with Mason. And Mason loses control of that, but doesn't knock it on. Here's Kit Holland. Holland with the pass out wide. The fend is good, and so are the feet. Touching down is Aidan Walker. So Aidan Walker is the, the cross-country captain at the school, as well as being part of the first 15 in rugby. So if there's someone to look to in the dying moments of a, right, move, of a seventh please. match, it should be Aidan Walker. With a set of lungs on him that you'd expect from a cross-country harrier. This is a good performance now from Teddy. Is it? To us up here, to me, it looks it looks slick, uh, Hal. But what about to you? I think the first game was played better, but obviously this is a really good game of rugby so far. Um, yeah, the boys. Well, we'll just see how it goes, but I think they've got a bit more in them. Mason's restart work is very very tidy. Holland, Sell, into the phrase Will Mowat, Mason again, Mason straightens. The try scorer, Walker, big pass out to the right. Looking to play through the middle, uh, Teddy's, here's Holland. Good step from the number seven, keeps the ball alive. I'll over to you uh, to appraise that, that piece of play, Hal, from your brother. Yeah, a bit of a shame that didn't come through, but yeah, yeah, that's fine. hopefully we can win this scrum. I was hoping for something uh, a, a uh, little yeah, more I'm negative on, on your older brother, I'll be honest. Your <laughs> but you're very loyal. Over, move over. And move over. Thank you. Crouch! Binds! The King's Brutons. Set. Number 10, Henry Hegarty. Is he going to get ball this time? No, the Going scrum is so powerful from this Teddy's team. Step in. That's a big goosey, isn't it, from Mason? Moat was involved in, in the link here. Mason sets things up again. Now Moat brings everyone back before he wants to get going that's well played from Moa gets the ball away Mason steps back doesn't have support now it arrives in the form of Aidan Walker who's off to the races Walker scooting in and that was a lovely tempo change from St Edwards slowing things down to zero and then pressing fast forward may be able to hear some of the uh, bagpipes in the background that's from Gordon's school here so far um, how what's the atmosphere been like at the at the festival it's been great atmosphere so far it's been very tense um, oh, no. it's been very tense it's been very tense it's been very tense it's been very tense it's great so far yeah to play amongst it oh. 
raises you a little bit, especially when those legs are tired and maybe more for the third game in the day, maybe more for that elimination match, which it looks like Teddy's might be on for now. You've got another match uh, to play, of course. That one coming up against Warminster School at 3.20. Um, that'll be uh, not on the showpiece pitches, so relatives uh, of the boys out on the pitch will need to stay across that result in another way. Mason, though, looking to make sure these moments count on RE2. Toby Bird loses the ball. This is Will Hawkins. Big carry into contact. Goodness me from Hawkins, that was powerful. Weston. Williams involved in this build-up. Might get its way back to Williams. It's pinched from Walker, who'll be on a hat-trick if he was away then. With 15 seconds left in the match. Fred Field. Williams has been a shining light for Release. Bruton in a difficult match for them. Release. Tap and go for Nico Williams. Co Moore. Williams gets it back. Big fend from Big Nico. And Williams is going to race away here. He's tracked back, though. Wonderfully done from Moat. The offload is good. And the try will still come. George Gardner from King's School Bruton, who have kept on trying to play against this very impressive St Edwards team. And they get some reward at the end of the match. Lovely play from, from Nico Williams to ensure that that match was or well, that play was resulting in a try. But what about this tracking back as well from Will Moa? So over to you, Hal. This is impressive stuff. Yeah, uh, really good from him. Um, it was a great game of rugby, and it's scored quite a lot of points there. So that's, I believe, 99 points in two games. OK, let's look at the maths here. That's impressive, like that. So 59 in the first match, uh, 40 in the seconds. So, yeah, add it up. It's uh, 99 knocking on the door. So, yeah, 99 14, that's not bad. So, yeah, hopefully we can rest. Well, good luck with the rest of that. Thank you, Hal, for joining us, and I uh, hope you managed to, to get on the field at some stage, and if not, then next year, that will be your one. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Great shift from Jack Zorov there. I'm Wilfred Kemsley back with you here for God Morrison's help. Academy up against, or well not Morrison's Academy, Calliwith. No, didn't get your hands on. Up against Hayes here. Once again, against. of course, it's action from Black. the Sorry. under 18 Vars competition. And a great wing for King Edward's Oxford, but uh, Calliwith. College here coming off a loss against Bloxham. Oh, uh, the Hayes Thank School you. beat Coventry College by 36 17 in their Grouch. opening game. Bloxham, Grouch. a real force to watch out for in this group. Find. The Hayes School will fancy Set. themselves coming into this game against Calliwith from Wales. And it's the Hayes School coming forward as well in partnership with Ealing Trail Finders. And they've shown great pace on that left hand side, lifted up the deck to keep the phase alive. A threatening early attack for Hayes. 
And into the outside channel they go. It's yeah! Diamond. He might go all the way, Oli Diamond. Oh. A hooker in 15s, but equally adept at the sevens format, and they've got their first try. Line on me, please, kicker, kicker. Line on me, middle. And Gareth Rice for the evening trail finders. Bruno set up alongside us, one of your partner schools in Hayes, and they've started off really brightly here. Yeah, that's some great interplay from the guys, and uh, you know these guys at Hayes have been working real hard, and uh, you know they get just rewards for that work on the training pitch. Time's off for the ball. Well, they're missing a couple of key players today. Time off the today. ball, recovery including their co-captains who are away with Scotland under 18. Two players away with Ealing under 18 today as well, but uh, a good first win against Coventry College in their opening game. And they, you might okay, fancy themselves for the Vars at the, at the current form they're in. I'm on. Yeah, there's, a, there's still a lot of talent in this team. You know, Kieran Finley, number 14, is a, is a real exciting prospect. You can see putting pressure on the kick now in that tackle. No, he's a guy a bit lower. We're, we're very excited to see him. No, you're on your knees. Get back. Captain for the day, Finley. Former of uh, London South East, uh, come across with Ealing at under 18 level. It's Calliwith and Cullingford who looked to play from inside the 22. And Jake Cullingford's made some great yardage there, but turned over by that man, Finley. He's been picked out early. Black. Yeah, Tacking you know, off the ball. Kieran's a player that's got Tacking a lot of potential. Take him there. He's shown his strength Tacking there off over the ball. The ball. You know, and that's it's, uh, exciting to see. And the lads are on the What's attack. Ten? If they can get some get got up edge, set up a good attacking opportunity, they'll hopefully exploit it. Our second phase and Finley stepping off the right and again to beat the tacklers. What a run this is. Kieran Finley up. will saunter home for Hayes' second. 13. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, Kieran in a Brunel shirt next year. Find the post, please, showing that up. sort of potential and ability. And some big games on the horizon for Brunel themselves. Hunting for promotion, of course, into the Superbucks League. Yeah, I'm round here searching for a bit of wood to hold on to. Uh, you know, uh, it's a, definitely some big games. Newcastle are a fantastic outfit, and it's going to be a real great occasion, an exciting game, and that's what we're focused on for the time being. You now, what happens after that, it will happen. But uh, the boys are in good spirit. They've been a real good run of form, and uh, we're looking forward uh, to inviting Newcastle down. And there's obviously some history there. They're, they're a real tough game up north last year, but we're excited to uh, host them at the uh, Brunel campus this year. Oh, and it's a really teasing kickoff as well, and there'll be plenty knock of players black, under knock it. On black. In the end, Good it was advantage. a knock-on by Calliwith Given. So Hayes can look to play on the break. Just, we'll come back just, for the set piece. I was just about to call it, but you have come in to play so much in, uh, in Rotten Park. You know, Good advantage. Pretty cloudy, but good conditions for rugby. You know, but it can be tough if. Uh, the heavens open up, and uh, those little handling areas, uh, they can definitely put you under Sorry, pressure. And of course, guys, talking oh, yeah. before the game, yes, one this of the new the coaches old, amongst the uh, <laughs> Brunel ranks okay. over from Australia Cut. can't really get over the size Find. of this festival. Set. Yeah, so uh, it, it's a pretty special thing. You sit here up in this commentary box now, and it's just a, you know an absolute festival of rugby. And I think it's something that's so, so unique to British schoolboy rugby. That's why we come down here. You know, we like to. You know, we sponsored this event in previous times, and you see talent like this on show. It's just exciting, and it shows you the strength of schoolboy rugby in the U United Kingdom. Beautiful pass from Finlay over the top, and Rollo Johnson, formerly of Quinn, stepping off the right and the left, and Hayes had a third. And they are running away with this game in its early stages, with what is shaping up to be a mammoth clash up against Bloxham over on RE2 at four o'clock. And then uh, we, can we expect to see Hayes later in that playoff game? Well, the blocks and fixture will be decisive. Two great rugby schools there, you know, and, uh, you know, as, as much as we support Hayes and we want to see them go well, you know, it's just about good schoolboy rugby and seeing these guys express themselves and play rugby for how it should be played. Beautiful footwork from Rollo Johnson and another teasing kickoff this time okay, picked out of the air Black by Hayes, but just spilt so instead it will be Cali with on the break and that offload it first time and over. to keep the phase alive Balls in yeah it's uh, a high press there and he almost made the interception but he's put okay. the pressure on the pass there to uh, to make the force the error but it seems like that's been missed so Cali with uh, put Hayes deep in their own own 22 for the first time but they look to break out and that's some lovely you know running and support play they're going to look after this possession in the middle of the pitch strike tackle but it's and a high tackle, tackle. in the end 
Yeah, I think that pressure there from, Ten, uh, on, from Hayes has really shown that they can have the potential to get themselves, and he puts a kick into the backfield. The chase is good. The guys have got to make sure they nail their tackle in this occasion. Don't let this guy get away. Release! Good ruck work there from Callowith. And they found that space. Hayes not playing with a sweeper. So it's a foot race in. It looks like Hayes are going to just win that. And it's that support player. Can he beat that first guy? It's a 2v1 here. And suddenly, it's, uh, suddenly he'll be teeing up the kick. And he's, he's done it and he's through the hole, just sauntering through to the fence. Laws on the inside, beats another. And well, this is some really impressive sevens, even under pressure from Calliwith. They're able to play out from their own 22. And that's some really impressive game management from Finlay as well. You want to see that, you know, that's coast to coast, end to end rugby, you know, and, and it's that effort and that, that, that work to get back and chase, be there as a support player that gives you those opportunities in sevens. And uh, sevens is one of those games where the skills your technique are put That's under huge pressure, but ultimately, it's just about busting that, you know, busting your lungs and getting back and doing that work. Something that, as two front rowers, we don't know too much about. Absolutely, yeah, it's been a long time. I think I had quite a good tournament under 14 level when I was still the same size, and that was an asset, but uh, there's uh, some more pace on show here. Will Laws, described as an absolute workhorse, teed up to play every game of this uh, competition and well at half time then Hay School with a commanding 26 point lead can Calliwith offer anything in response as we wait the second half here live on RE2 at the Roslyn Park National School 7s Well, Calliwith College with a bit of a mountain to climb here up against Hayes. Yeah, it's going to be a tough second half, and I think if Hayes start with some uh, some energy, it's, it's going to be a long way back. But you know, these matches in these tight games, we talk about the game against blocks and points difference can come into play, and tries scored. So uh, a big mistake there from Calliwith, and Hayes are right on the attack. Well, it will be Hayes coming forward once again, this time through Mwanda, who hands it off to sing and then back to Moanda. Calliwith looking for the intercept, but they freed up the hands. Valente into the wide channels, and there's the big fend. And suddenly there's numbers up. Here is Singh with one to beat, throws it incised. Moanda will tap down, and it's the perfect start to the second half. Yeah, Moanda there, that's great inside work on the shoulder there just to get there for that pass. No, that's an underrated bit of, uh, bit of sevens, and it's massively important, and it makes the job really easy. He deserved that try well. Well, Hayes have started the second half as they left off the first with another score. And suddenly, Pallywith are almost down and out, you'd think. With just six minutes to go here. Yeah, it's a long way back. Uh, it's going to, it's going to, it would be almost record breaking to see these guys come back from the Howden Roslyn Park Sevens to get a win there. Oh, another teasing kickoff, and there's bodies underneath it, and this time plucked out of the sky with ease by Halls. Back pass is a little bit loose. Howden, uh, Caddywith there are uh, uh, hustling hard. You know, it's one of these games, maybe the lack of possession is becoming almost energy sapping, and they find themselves in the back end of another good attack from Hayes. Well, they're up inside the 10 metre. The co-captain falls at nine. Still in possession here, Hayes. And lovely Fenn to skip through the first contact. The little show and go inside. Harry McNamara will score. And that's, uh, that's great from a prop forward in sevens there. I'm sure 
you know, he's going to be playing back row and hooker another in 15 a side game. But it's good support and powerful running. Well, still with Saracen, Harry McNamara, under 18 level. And he's shown why there. Little show and go, and then another one. It's just to use the last defender. It's real testament to the coach Jack, the head of rugby at Hay School, Jack Leach. You know, he's put together, you know, he's built a really good rugby program there, and he put together a, a good squad here. And they should be really excited about the opportunity to play against Bloxham. And Bloxham are a cracking side as well, but it's um, good to see these guys uh, performing at this level. There's a Volante once again with the kick off, the Argentinian. And it might fall kindly here for Hayes, just spilt. Rollo Johnson chasing his second try. But instead, it'll be a scrum for Calliwith. You know, this could be, uh, you know, although there maybe the game may be lost, this could be a great opportunity for Calliwith to put some air on the ball. And, you know, the, uh, the guys in the outside channel, the, the chap standing at first receiver, I don't know his name, but the balls came his way a couple of times and he's looked dangerous I think some ball in space where he can attack and engage the line will be quite exciting and they've managed to get that out we'll see if Calliwith have anything to offer here as they carry it the first time of asking McCohen into contact and a penalty from McCohen with a bit of space to run into here flying across comes falls putting in the chop tackle but Beatles back to his feet and finds McCohen once again a great offload out of the tackle there and they're still in possession, flashing it back across to McCohen. Brought down by Halls. And no advantage coming from the referee. You know, Hayes have got to get control of the penalty count there. That's four in succession. You know, another one may, may see a yellow card. Uh, but, uh, and that can open up. But this McCohen, he's looked pretty dangerous now. He's had some, uh, some possession. So hopefully he can keep driving Cali with forward and get them some, uh, some action in this game. Slight delay as the, the co-captain falls just as off the field and McCohen puts the boot in behind, searching for Hopkins. Hopkins gets the follow through. But just knocked on by uh, the dangerous Zach Hopkins. This is something where Hayes, if they're going to progress in this competition, you know, this is where uh, the coach, Jack Leach, he'll, he'll really want them to be ruthless in this scenario. He'll want them to get the ball back, maintain possession and ensure that there's a shutout because it could be really really important in the later stages in, in knockout rugby as well but the standards that are set now uh, you definitely bring in into a two-day tournament these guys might not have experienced that before although it might seem oh, we're going to win easily setting those standards are massively important now well, lovely out the back door pass from McCohen to find Hopkins McCohen still in possession for Cali Whip some air on that pass unlucky was a little bit wayward but the penalty count is still ticked towards uh, Kaliwith. Well, Kaliwith there uh, just unable to convert, but playing with penalty advantage. And it will be McCohen to tap once more. He showed a rare repertoire of skills, you know, a little chip over, little drop pass there. Maybe, uh, maybe not on the same page. Just built from Beatles, so now Hayes just hack it downfield and there's nobody back, so it's a race on between Calliwitz number eight, Walton, and he spilt. So instead, Valante will surely go in for another, but instead it's just knocked on. And well. these, these guys have left it all out there now. There's definitely some tired lads. You know, there's a couple of minutes left on the clock. I think Hayes there, you know, they stood up to that attack, that pressure, managed to force a turnover, and I think uh, they'd be happy with that. And now we see Kieran Fenley join back on, and surely he's got to be the target man off this scrum to see what he can do, put Cali with back under pressure. Well, just spilt in the end by Valente. He worked hard to get his... regather his kick through, but instead scrum Cali with. McCurn with the feed. Hopkins at first receiver, hands it off to Cullingford. Looks to take on Finley, but it's just put down in that wide channel. And Haynes will have the uh, final attack of the game, you'd think. But a pretty complete performance from Hayes. Yeah, they'll be they'll be happy with this, and they'll be a good marker now. That uh, showdown later on, uh, it's going to be an exciting game. Two real good sides, and I think you know I've watched Bloxham play. They've definitely they've definitely got the tools to answer some of the questions that Hayes have got. But it'd be great to see see young players in those sort of environments, and I'll definitely be down there, you know, seeing if they can uh, 
and put the guys under pressure. Well, Finley was almost through the hole, but he chucked a wonderful offload, and Will Laws will be the beneficiary. And how on earth has he freed up the hands there? A lovely offload from Finley. And it's, it is a great offload, but it's the support player and the communication that are just as equally vital to execution there. Well, Kieran Finley with a beautiful pass. And Will Lords will score his second of the game. And Hayes have run out deserved victors here by a scoreline of 49 unanswered points. They've put Calliwith to bed ahead of their blockbuster tie against Bloxham, perhaps one of the biggest games of the competition so far. Their final group game at four o'clock. But we'll have another look at this Kieran Finley offload. Under pressure from two defenders, just flicked it round the corner. So Sonny Bill Williams has been proud of that one himself. Well, a great performance from Hayes. Calliwith, unfortunately, not up to the same standard. But up next here on RE2, we've got Kings Rochester up against Morrison's Academy. More action from the under-18 Vars from Group U. Thank you very much, Gareth, for coming and being with us in the commentary box here. Absolute pleasure. Look forward to more opportunities throughout the week. Thanks, Will. And the action will continue next. From group viewers, Kings Rochester take on Morrison's Academy, who are searching for their second win after a big 54-10 win against Landition High School. Well, the action doesn't stop here at the Howard and Roston Park National School Sevens. Morrison's Academy up against Kings Rochester. Well, Kings College Taunton also in this group. Pretty threatening first team to be in the Vars competition. And they put the sword to Kings Rochester, beating them by 45 unanswered points. But uh, Morrison's Academy in action here, looking for their second win. It could be Morrison's who start the brightest here. There's a loose offload that's found its way back into midfield. Wicks, vice captain at 15's level, driving through the contact. Lifted to Dolby. And they'll take it left to right, out the back door offload, just yeah, forward. You, but pretty Pulled ambitious stuff. There. Scrum down, guys. King's ball. From Morrison's Academy. Small rural Perthshire side. Okay, Mark's here, guys. Former school of Ewan McGregor, of course. Uh, so some uh, pretty talented alumni. Right, nice and steady at the scrums, their please, ranks. guys. No push till the ball's in. But it'll be... Okay, listen in. Crouch. Bind. King's Rochester. Set. Up on this with side. With the feed from the scrum. And their first attacking set of the game. They've got a bit of pace on the wraparound. Into the wide channels they go. Tackle comes in from Ethan play. Clark. And then offloaded yeah, once more. Holding on on the ground there. From Vinnie Paul penalty. Roberts. But a penalty goes against him. So it will be Morrison's to bring it forward. Armstrong puts the chip in behind, and there's a real race on there. A shove in the back of Roberts. The referee waves play on. Hold it there. Just going to give it a penalty. a penalty instead. You're going off two minutes, please, my and friend. And a yellow card for holding 
So a big opportunity 14. for Morrison's. Yep. Just wait, please, guys. Let me get myself organised. Wait till the ball moves, OK? Matarutsi yep. is uh, given the no, yellow no, card at 14 for Rochester. Yep. Play when you're ready. Armstrong goes himself. Try there. And saunters in. Part of uh, Scotland under 18 sure in previous ball, yeah? months. And Armstrong, the loose. captain, dots down in the simplest of circumstances to put Morrison ahead. And another school with a huge game on the horizon, it seems. King's College, Taunton, up against Morrison's Academy. That'll be on RE5 at 4 o'clock. And we might see them later in the elimination game, of which we're showing here on RE2. Kings Rochester just perhaps didn't have enough time to organise themselves. Good step off the right from Armstrong. Yep, I'm with it. Okay, yes, when you're ready, behind the ball, guys. And Armstrong will get us back going again. A really contestable kickoff right in no man's land. And it's been tapped back by Morrison's. And here they come once again on the tack. And they could be three into the corner here. Rowley will touch down. And they've made that look really simple. Okay, anyway, I'm lying. Another try for Morrison's then. And they've made this player advantage count. A great effort on the drop kick as well Armstrong converts from a long way out well textbook sevens really to win it off the kickoff and then just to go through the hands playing with the one man advantage there's always going to be space somewhere on the field okay let's go please in front of Tyler Rowley Armstrong with another deeper kickoff this time has been allowed to bounce. James Miles is back pedalling and offloads. And spilled on the five metre. The so surely Morrison's now will capitalise. Long ball from Wicks. Regathered by Kings Rochester. No, no. Lawrence You're under part pressure. of the ruck. Morrison's player. But the penalty does here. go Wait against there. Morrison's. Wait. Yellow card back on, please. As you can tell from the referee mics, which are a new feature here. Oh, you can, uh, yeah, I just had to call your Charles player Rosen on. Park National School Sevens. Matarazzi back onto the field and drawing in two defenders. Rochdale back. Rochester, sorry, back to. Uh, Tackle release! But looking to play from inside their 22. They've moved the ball well from left to right, and now Roberts could be in behind here. Lovely step, dragged down by the cover. Great run from Mataruzzi. Wonderful support play. Nathaniel Mataruzzi will score. Well, Armstrong certainly made him work for it. But Morrison's concede, and Kings Rochester are on the board as they cut the deficit to just five. Matarutsi with the conversion as well. What a great covering tackle. But Matarutsi just had the pace to outdo the try scorer rally. And there's. Uh, okay, yeah, when you're ready. Worthwhile that Matarutsi scored. The ball. Or uh, Armstrong could be a bit of trouble there with a high tackle. Kick off to come from Jamie Ford. Cleanly taken. Pass back inside. Armstrong changes the direction of the attack and skips away on the outside. Teasing footwork and he's broken through. On the cover, the tackle is made. But eventually it comes back. Hi guys. Morrison's two way. Ons. First from Kings, then Morrison's. Scrum down. But Kings Morrison's Rochester ball. made the first mistake, a knock on, so a scrum then for Morrison's, but uh, Henry Armstrong almost away in the most exciting of fashion. Lovely footwork. Get past okay, Charlie Seale. guys. Crouch. Bind. Set. 
Scrum fed by Dolby. Kings Rochester look to disrupt, but it has come Armstrong's way, and he'll look to go himself, and great pace to the line. Henry Armstrong is making it look easy out there. Uh, Morrison's Academy have another. Half time, guys. Well, at the break, there's been some great sevens on show. Morrison's Academy with the uh, majority of chances of which they have converted three. So they will go into the break with a 19 7 advantage over Kings Rochester. This will be the second win on the board for Morrison's Academy if they can keep control ahead of their important game against King's College Taunton later this afternoon. Second half live here with Next Gen and the Howes Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Soon to get the second half underway here. In this important encounter play it, play on. for Morrison's Academy. Yeah, rip fine. One loss, of course, means you're out of the Vars due to the competition. But Morrison's Academy with another victory here will be on their way to an elimination game. And it's Nampila just on the field with a break for Dolby back inside. The two man peeler again. Wicks wide to Clark. It's forward there. Spilled by Clark in the tackle. Now he's gone defense. forward in the tackle. The Kings Rochester. Scrum down, guys. And they'll have the scrum inside their 22. Almost the brightest of starts this second half for Morrison's Academy. Both teams just have the scrum nice and steady and a bit of height, please. Okay, listen in. Crouch. Bind. Set. Here come Kings, not just the and Ford almost through the hole. And the try scorer, Matarazzi, putting in the fend. Yeah, holding on the ground. Matarazzi over the ball. Been gifted the penalty as well. Clark hands it off to Dolby, stepping inside, and Dolby almost through the hole. Finds Nam Pila. There's one more offload for Thompson. Five metres short. Feels fine there. Stolen. Leave it now, tackle away. And now Roberts will look to break away. Ford, they've got it wide here. But Rochester have Rowley for company. Good line inside ball to Ford, who shakes off one. And now it's a foot race. And Jamie Ford will have King Rochester's second. <coughs> oh, a tackle just too high from uh, Morrison's Academy allowed Ford to slip away. <coughs> and with the conversion, they cut the gap to just five. Well, Morrison's Academy will have been feeling confident following their big win in their opening game. But they've been pegged back here by Kings Wait Rochester. There, please, guys, substitute. And now 
Rochester just within five points with a kickoff to come. Okay, let's go, please, guys. Ford puts it deep. Gone backwards! It's filled by Beck, the vice captain, but he's back with ball in hand. Puts in the fan. Matarazzi with the tackle. Ball put down. Sorry, guys, yeah. And Peter knock does on well. only. Just Got to down uh, King's ball. put the foot in. But stop James Miles from uh, running away with it. Was trying to play an advantage, guys, hence I didn't call it too soon. Scrum then. And Vinnie Paul Roberts has looked really threatening at nine. Okay, guys, half step closer, please. Thank you. Serious Crunch. pace. Bind. And we'll see if he can use it Set. here. But he's got try scorers Ford and Matarazzi outside him. And here is Ford. He takes it to the line, gets in the offload, but the ball's been put down. Backwards from the referee. So on goes Roberts. Barnard plays nine. Ford does well to regather. Charlie CL offloads. Ford in control for Kings Rochester and Paul puts it back inside to Matarazzi. And Paul on the outside just turns on the afterburners and spins away from Poom Nampila to drop down for another and level things up here. From the front, please, yeah. Well, the successful conversion uh, two minutes. puts Kings Rochester in front with two minutes to go. What a turnaround this has been. Great pace from Paul Roberts. It'll get there eventually. Somebody just realised. <laughs> Ford with the kickoff once again, and it was an unforced error. Off the kick. Hey guys, let's go, please, behind the ball. King's in that great position. Straight out, free kick in the middle. On it this time, so it'll be a free kick for Morrison's Academy. Back ten, please. Minute and a half to go here. Yeah, when you're ready. Here is Armstrong. Taking it to the line and freeing up the hands, skipping one and finding Carl Beck. Beck down the right, right hand side, puts in the fend. And skipper, the vice captain. Carl Beck puts Morrison's Academy back out in front. Well, a game of twists and turns, and Kings Rochester could be staring down the barrel of a second defeat in what has been a Breathtaking game of sevens here at the Howard Holden kick. Roslyn Park National School sevens. And they are in no rush okay, whatsoever go, please, guys. to take this kick off of Armstrong. Hooks it high and once again contestable, but this time picked out by a Kings. No fine player. And they wave play on as well. Miles with the carry. Ford. They need something special here to turn this game around. And they could be through. Line break from Pike. Tackle made. Paul shows and goes and then frees the hands to find Barnard. Ford. Patient stuff from the number 12. And once again, it's with Nick Pike. Two on one, perhaps. Yeah, fine, play on. But play on waves the referee, almost put down by Mataruzzi. We're certainly into overtime here, but Ford, still with possession, steps off the left. A high tackle advantage. And a high tackle, so an advantage, but Ford slipping off the tackles and suddenly in behind. Armstrong to beat, carries straight ahead instead. Mataruzzi at nine. Offside at the right. It's an offside as Armstrong puts his hand Penalty in. Here, that is full time, guys. Full yeah, time are. has Do gone. 
No, sorry, mate. Let me just well, double check on scores. Ford is. No, no, I've got Morrison's as winner. Sorry, guys. Hammered it off. Shouldn't pitch. just rely on me, 26. The referee. Guys, I haven't got time, time to discuss the score during the game. You should know and, and be Jamie aware. And Ford hammered it home. 26 Morrison's, 21 Kings. Kings Rochester are in front, but in fact, they needed another score. And in the most guys, fortunate of circumstances, Morrison's have escaped unscathed from this guys, encounter. Thank you. Real uh, drama Morrison's, at the Howden yeah, Roslyn Park National School Sevens as Morrison's Academy will go into their game against King's College Taunton with a playoff on the line. Devastation for Kings. Rochester, who were in the game up until that final penalty where they hammered it off field, thinking they were on top. Well, sometimes that's how it goes in these frantic tournaments. But up next, the action continues as we head over to Group C, where Torquay Boys Grammar School will take on Iskul Differentaf. Torquay after their third win that will set them away to the qualification game. Well, it's called different half. Victorious in their second game against Milton Abbey School after a loss to Emmanuel. But a big win here and results going their way over on RE1. Could see them through to that elimination Just game. Just a knock on. A win here for Torquay, who are already 2-0, would guarantee that place as they crash up at first phrase through Ben Brugger. Numbers on the back. Not a thing for this uh, Torquay boys grammar school. Knock on advantage over. Instead, but Brugger with the pass. And suddenly they could be in on that right-hand side, but just knocked Knock on, on there gents. by Josh Knott. Well, scrum then. A different half. You know, the second attacking set of the game. Crouch! Bind! Set! Well, the scrum's gone awry and it's become the way of uh, Torquay instead. And it could be a two on one out wide here. Surely they're away. It's Josh not to score. <laughs> And it's a fast start for Torquay as they chase that top spot. Well, Iskul Griffin Taff would need a win here, and they'd need Emmanuel School to lose to Milton Abbey. And they'd have to win and overturn a 36 point difference. It's 40, it's even higher actually. It's uh, 36 points to the good, is where Torquay Boys Grammar School sits. But none of it matters if they come away with a victory here in their final group game. Time off. Now the Sorry ball is away, way. so we've got time off at the Time's moment. Off. Ben Adams it'll be to get Torquay Boys Grammar School back underway. Two sides from the uh, Time back on. far west of England facing off here, and it's uh, Torquay who draw first blood, but it's with different half. They need to break out of their own half. Out the back door, offload goes to floor. Brugger's over it. 
but they will just have the scrum to play with. Put down by Charlie Reynolds, but it was a, a loose pass to begin with. Is that okay though? It's fine. Not it's to be fine. confused with the twin Reynolds playing at six and seven for different There's half. No having a more of a break. Crouch. Bind. Set. The scrum goes Torquay's way. Ben Adams plays it away and they look to go wide off first phase here. And it's a race for the corner now that Torquay will win. <laughs> Second of the game for Josh Knott. And he's looking like a clinical finisher in that wide channel. Well, that's that second try, Torquay, and they are well on their way to that elimination game. An excellent nudge as well. Unfortunately, just wide of the left hand upright. Well, pretty simple stuff, really, from Torquay, just putting it through the hands. Adams on the wraparound. Whatever you are. And a good ball. And Toby Holroyd. That's all right. Well, it's different half looking to inject a little bit of pace into the attack. And they've picked and gone from the breakdown as well. And suddenly there's an overlap down the short side. Through the hands they go to Francis. McDermott. <laughs> Knock but on it's and you're offside. And another error has handed possession back yep. to Torquay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adams will look down range. And it's a beautiful kick as well. What an urge from Ben Adams. And this is looking dangerous. For yeah, I'm happy tough. where you are there. Play. Well, it's gone loose at the line out, advantage. but it's been spilled by different Taff. So Knock instead, Holroyd will play away from the danger area. Tackle made out wide. It's been fumbled no, on advantage. the floor. They will come, come back, back for another scrum. A scrappy period of play Knock as we off. approach the end of the first half. Of course, it's getting late in the day here. This, the third game of Sevens Rugby for both these sides. Torquay will have a fourth yep. to contend with if they can uh, make it through here. And we will have a trio, I believe, of elimination games to bring to you later on. The action continuing till five o'clock here. At the Howden Roslyn Park National School Find. Sevens. But at the moment, it's Torquay Set. searching for a third. Nichols from Tottenham the scrum breaks away from the first and then changes direction. Fends off another, has surely created an overlap. Adams with the wide pass. Hat trick for Knott. <laughs> and it's a good day to be a winger in the Torquay Boys Grammar School side. A third try for Knott, and he's ran all of 30 yards to attain it with ball in hand, but Lads, three good finishes, left. clean sevens, and they'll take a rather large three-try advantage into the final out minute the way. Way. of this first half. The conversion just fired in, but Get short again. Torquay still lead by 15. The campaign school versus Thomas Pallet school. Wiggles does very well there to keep play alive and draw in the defenders. And not the beneficiary. Adams, a great kick off. But it's taken well by... Release! Release called by the referee, but not attended to by Torquay boys, so they'll have a penalty against them. The ball bounces in midfield. A different tap, take it to the line, good offload. To free John. 
And they could almost be through here, breaking the line. Police now. But Adams wraps him up. And Delaney did come away with it and eventually found Davis being pressed back at the moment. Bruger goes biting in, but it's good carry from Ryan. Ten, Penalty three. goes Torquay's way. Ten, in the side. Time is uh, up. Nichols. He is time up for the first half. We'll see if Torquay can have yep. another crack at the line. Ten, silent. And they will. Whatever you're ready. What have they got to show us here? Well, it's Bruger on the hard line, stepping off the left, crashing through through defenders. Adams with the ball wide and <laughs> Fred Horn Try. this time makes it four. They've made good use of overtime, Talking Last Boys Grammar jumps. School. That's half. And Horn, fresh on the field, scores his first of the day, where uh, Josh Knott would have surely seen his fourth try occur. Instead, at half time, following the conversion, <laughs> Torquay will take a four try advantage into the break. Well, Torquay knew that all they needed was a win to see them progress to the elimination round. They're having a good go at it at the moment. And this try on the stroke of half time is what puts them in such good stead. Half time here. Different taft trail by four unanswered tries against Torquay Boys Grammar School. Second half to come here between Torquay Boys Grammar School and Dichon Taff. Torquay are 20 points up and they've claimed possession off the kickoff to boot. And here is Bruger in the wide channels, just runs out of options outside him. So instead they come back from right to left and suddenly a three on one has emerged and Fred Horn is into the green grass ahead of him, tumbling through the tackles, flicking it out the back door. But it's only a different Taff shirt that he finds. And through the centre now comes Ryan. James into contact. Release! Wrapped up by a couple of red shirts. Good work, thank you. Advantage and Pressure offside. on the nine, so there'll be a, a penalty advantage for different Taff. Reynolds. You still have penalty advantage. James. The call of give it comes from on field, and they do use the hands this time. Into contact goes Reynolds. A couple of them on field. No hands! Delaney goes himself and crashes straight into Ben Adams, who holds him up well. And we could have a ball forming here. No advantage. So we're back for the penalty advantage in favour of the Welsh side. M offside. M offside. M offside, not a term you hear often in rugby. That's Ollie Marsh, who I believe doesn't wear that shirt just because it's his own name. But James has it for different taff. A little show and go to the line. Delaney freed up the hands and back against the grain comes Lennon Reynolds. Round the corner, Reynolds still going. 
Eventually, Bruger brings him down. Delaney once again takes contact and this time advantage. has it stripped out of his grasp. Knock on advantage. So back come Torquay suddenly. Advantage over. Well, they had a bit of momentum. Now it's Bruger who looks up and finds a gap. <laughs> crashing through the contact, Reynolds brings him down. Adams, Torquay back in control. And here's Horn. Round the outside, and Fred Horn has an awful lot of pace it's fine, to burn. He's not made contact. And he will score Torquay's fifth. And it's a popular score with the Torquay Grammar School lads in front of us here. Take from behind and kick it back. And Fred Horn has his second. Could be on for the double hat trick for Torquay here. Overcomes Ben Adams to add the extras. Well, this game might certainly be over, and it's a good result <laughs> for Torquay Boys Grammar School, who will head into those elimination games later on this afternoon. Up next, a bit of action from Group 8, as Fulham Boys School take on the London well, Oratory. The London Oratory need, uh, or Fulham Boys School for that matter, need Campion to slip up against Thomas Tallis if they wish to progress and they need a big win to do so both searching for their second of the day as Torquay on for their third loose pass from the hat-trick man Josh Josh not just lost forward yes Marks is here, gents. Scrum then for different half. Crouch! Bye! To go here. They'll be Early. hoping to get something on the board, and that free kick might help them out. McDermott taps quickly. And they look downrange from the boot. There's a chase on here, been regathered well by Max Stone. Bruger hands it off, but it's behind Jake Jones. But here's Horn on for a hat trick. Backwards. Down. Backwards again. And spilt by Stone, but still backwards. Stolen by a different Seven. half and uh, Morgan Bethel. <laughs> but it will be Seven. a line out for Torquay in the end. Some really exciting sides to come out of this Vars competition, of course. We'll see how the elimination game progresses Advantage. as it's spilt at first receiver, unfortunately, by Lock Nichols. On. So, a great opportunity for different Early engage. Yourselves. Yeah. One minute, gents. Mm. Discussed in the, uh, the podcast in the run-up to Roslyn Park, the, uh, the difference between the two competitions. Who's really the stronger yes. side out of the Vars and Cup champions, Crouch. of course? Bind, set. Rugby school, the winners in last year's edition. They've got their own tent here at uh, the Howard and Roslyn Park National School Sevens. We'll have a reset at the scrum, Just though, in the meantime. Make sure we're both going forward at the same time. Dominic. As Fulham and the London Oratory await to take the field here at RE2. Bind. Set. Here comes different taps away this time. Clean up for them. Reynolds of the Tyler variety takes it to the line yeah, and hacked through by the other Reynolds but it will be dotted down by Torquay who keep play alive and five metres out driving through the breakdown you're not allowed to penalty squeeze ball. goes against them and different taps surely Mao back on the five must score Can't five metres ball. out McDermott options left and right Reynolds on the hard line Brought down a few inches short. It spits out the for McDermott, who shows and goes. 
Crashing forward now is Howells and Diffin Taff will score. That will be tight. And the, uh, the more sizable yes. Dan Howells offering uh, exactly what the larger lads here at Rosen Park Six. bring to the side. Six. And that's a bit of guaranteed go forward. <laughs> a different Taff will uh, finish the game on good terms, but it's Torquay who will progress through to the elimination round later on this afternoon to see who will take part in the second day of the VARS competition here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Looking ahead to the next game, London Oratory and Fulham Boys both need Campion to slip up over on RE1 to see which one of their sides would still be in with a chance to head through to that elimination game. That all-important group game live for you here with Next Gen at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens up next. Well, the action continues, of course, from the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. A big game here between Fulham Boys and London Archery School. Will Clapp from Fulham alongside me. Thanks for being with us, Will. Thank you for having me. And it will be Fulham kicking off as well. Captain Tyndall Paul winning the toss. And, uh, well, we've got the champion game on in the commentary box as well, haven't we, Will? Because it's all important. Campion, of Straight course, out, needing to kick. slip up, and uh, at the moment, Fulham on top on points difference. But they would need quite a big win here. Are you confident, Will, of getting that result? We've faced Oratory multiple times, like in the past couple of years, and it's usually quite close. But I think Fulham got this. No, leave it out, good. Well, Wallinyama McDonnell with the first carry, and Campion breaking down the left-hand side. They could be in behind already. What a carry! This is sorry from the London Oratory School on the mind and on the tongue but it is instead the London Oratory who opened the scoring not the perfect start Will not at all not at all there's three times to do in the champion match well champion on top which would uh, null the uh, importance of this game regardless but still some great pace London Archery have on in their disposal, taking it to the line. Let's go, and chance. they've opened the scoring here. Well, it's another kickoff that's been Good claimed tackle. by Fulham boys, and Josh Tudor Price just wears a heavy hit from Wanyama McDonald. Knocked on blue, black scrum chaps. Knock-on is the end result okay, guys, as well. First scrum, 
So it'll be a scrum for Josh Gillespie. Wait for the ball to come in. Then we have a pushing contest, okay? Try me. Teddy James Crouch. is opposite number. Fine. Encroaching and uh, Sit. Campion a strong side it seems then. Ball is out. Will. Yeah. Um, I doubt. I doubt Thomas Tallis is going to come back in the second half, but hopefully they do. Well, we'll see if uh, Fulham boys can hold out here as well. It's a lovely offload. Oh, John. It's a huge tackle coming in, but still they free the hands and <laughs> Matthias Pelleriti will score. Guys, I London just need to eat the back. Just five metres off that scrum for me, OK? Just make sure. They'll have one eye on the campion result too, but uh, no, two tries back. down. It's a bit unfortunate to start. Yeah. They've just gotten on the outside a bit too easy there, Will. <laughs> and it's a great kick as well from Pelleriti to add the extras. Well, having another look at this try here. This is a huge tackle coming in. But uh, the two big shots wasted in the end. There's London the Orange crossover for their the second. The kicker, yeah. Pelletri to kick off as well. Pelleriti it is. But a short kick off and it allowed to bounce. It's been gathered by Keating and suddenly. That's high. A high tackle comes the in two. No, leave so him go 10, leave him 10. Fulham Step 10. on the retreat. Gillespie. You're not 10, gentlemen. Well, not retreating 10 metres either. Soft I mean, penalty to give away. And here quick, is Keating. You can't go quick. Can't oh, go sorry, quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me 10, chaps. Good. Now you're good. Tackled short of the five. Here's Waniyama McDonald. Over the breakdown go Fulham. And they have turned it over. Crucial turnover there, Will. That's only Jones, it's 15. Well, a good turnover from <laughs> Jones and Gen Bartlett to put a forward pass and healing, manager, things please, just aren't yeah. going your way, Will. Yeah, not at all, mate. It's gone down. Black ball. But how have you found the tournament are, so guys. far, Will, as a group, of course? A massive occasion, mm -hmm. uh, especially so close to home. I mean, we played Campion, but yeah, give me a good five, we were winning the first half, two tries to nail, and then somehow they'd come back and no, they'd be you just step off the tunnel, Tom Thomas Alice was a pretty Crouch. good match. Find that's Thomas Alice, so I can't Set. against Campion, but it's still 21 to 12. Behind the ball, no, leave it, good. Well, they're behind at the moment, and it's Gillespie taking it to the line. Not still trying to give the offload back to his feet. Good roll, once thank again, you. Over the breakdown, go Fulham. But it comes to Wanyama McDonald, oh. who finds a good pass. And the London Oratory School are in for another. Well, London Oratory have come to play. They've really turned it on here. Of course, they themselves are also defeated the by Campion in uh, quite a local group, in all honesty, the uh, group page. Thomas Tallis, the only outliers there. But the London Oratory School lost to Campion by 40 points to 33. What a score that is, Will. Yeah. Uh, I can't actually remember what the score was for Armour. Not 10. Oh, Oratory definitely played better against Campion than we did. 33-19 in the end there, Will. A free kick, though, for Fulham. Teddy James. A switch on the inside from Iago Mayans. Ball is Takes out. a bit of contact, too. But a chance on here for Tudor Price. Come on, hey. who finds the pass clattering through the contact frees up the hands as well out the back door lovely attacking set almost an intercept but Leave Lyons it. still on here fires the long pass and that's a high Aye. tackle no, against the captain Tyndall Paul oh it's gone forward but a knock on and well the archery perhaps fortunate there to have retreated 10 and then the forward pass but your head in your hands will you're awfully close there to the first score of the game yeah, I, I would have thought Ollie would have made it through, but that was a good tackle to stop him. It was a good tackle in the end, and the opportunity then for Fulham still knocking. One minute, chaps, like good Tom work, Tattis keep going. Gonna be Guys, I need you five metres, please. Yeah? Well, that campion game five, might be over, but still something to take Nine away. A bit of uh, tunnel, local bragging rights in Crouch. the London area, perhaps. Find, set. Done early James jabs. with the feed, the an early push, early so a free black. kick. Ten metres! Ten metres! 
format oh, no, no. of the game and surely now they must be in the corner. Some good footwork to evade the last Go defender. On. And Ollie that. Jones, at 15 years old, scores Fulham's try. 15, a real talent at that age, Will. Yeah, Ollie's started playing in the first team this year and ever since he's joined, he's been one of the best in the team. Well, seriously promising stuff. And a great attempt at the conversion as well, unfortunately, right, but it will remain 21 yeah. points to five. Well, there's a good little pass in here from Mayans as well. Good footwork from Ollie right, Jones, start. his first of many appearances at Roslyn Park, you'd Speaking feel, Will. Please, kicker. Time is yours. Bartler with the kickoff, and uh, over on pitch one, it's game over as Campion looked to top this group. I see that bounce in the line, guys. But with plenty of time left, we'll see if we can get back into this game. Half time. Half time it is then. And the Oratory lead by 21 to 5 against Fulham boys. But very much still in the game, Will, with the second half to come. Just the two tries behind. Yeah, hopefully we can do something in the second half. But so far, Oratory are looking quite strong. Oratory looking on good form. But the second half to come here live at the Howland Roslyn Park National School Sevens. London Oratory lead by 21 to 5 up against Fulham boys. Well, we're back on for the second half here, and it's an excellent take off the kickoff by Jack Bennett. Back scrum. But unfortunately, they're given as a knock on. Oh, it's a brilliant take up, there, Will. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's keep the scrummage standard good. Be patient. Wait for the ball, please. Both sides. Give, give me good point. Thank you. Crouch. Bind. Set. Stay behind nine. Good. Well, it's a scrum then for all the oratory. Perhaps in fortunate circumstances. Backwards! Wojciech Gawic passes it on. Carried forward by the try scorer, Pellerini. Okay, guys, that was gathered by Blue and it went forward off Blue. Well, another knock on. Given yeah. against Fulham boys. Black scrum. You want it and you knock it on. And they'll have some more defending to do. And uh, Will Platt asked the question Crouch. on Sammy, who knocked it on? And uh, well, Mind. it was Fulham boys, Set. but again, another difficult decision for them to take. Stay behind nine. <laughs> offside. And a penalty for offside. Another tough call, Ten, Will. Gentlemen. Couple of uh, calls just going against you at the moment. <laughs> okay, guys, you're not 10, that's twice. Okay. No, 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 you can't go. Almost a big tackle guys, coming in, but instead penalised for not that's being twice, 10 you're yards. Not 10, no more now. Well, it will be uh, Joe Galepsi to tap, and there's the hard line Ooh. through the centre. Elatiri teasing that defence out the Play. back door. Well, oh, what a beautiful pass that is as well from Mayans on the counter. That's loose, and Mayans will have to come back and claim it. Popped off the deck, and still the ball is loose. Here's Digby Perkins, who beats the first defender, changes his angle. 
but it's a strong tackle by Gowich. Okay, off black, Another knock-on given. Blue scrum. And quite a few infringements, Will. Uh, what do you make of the pace of the game in this second yeah. half? Effie nearly broke out there. Playing good, but there's only five minutes to go, so I, I don't know how many you guys, Thank you. Cheers. Coach! Finds no set. There may not be anything left on the board, but you'd like to take a win home in the final oh, yeah. game. Of course, of course. Especially against uh, Orange. Who you beat in the regular season, of course. And it's a good break beyond the gain line to get us Go away on. from Bartlett. And suddenly it's the try scorer, Ollie Jones, who's free down the right hand side, and he will go all the way. Well, the 15-year-old's got a double will. That's excellent work from him, you must say. Yeah, that's the second match today where he scored two. Oh, no. He'll attempt the conversion himself oh, and he'll miss it. But uh, what a great day for Ollie Jones. The first of a potential three Roslyn Park tournaments, the 15-year-old. And, well, he'll have a lot more points on the board come the end of those three years. Just keep them behind your kicker, please. Fulham then, still in the game, with three and a half minutes to go on our clock, but it's been picked out of the air by Pelleriti. There's a bit of a mix-up in the backfield there, but Pelleriti does come away with it. Offloads inside. Tackle comes in from Tudor Price. But Oratory could be away as they break through the first few tackles. Hole in midfield. Backwards. Huge tackle from Bennett. And hacked through, this time by Wilson. And Wilson gets the bounce, and all of a sudden, Fulham boys are back in the ascendancy. Another one who scored already today, Rory Wilson, Will, but uh, it certainly is on, isn't it? Yeah, well, I actually think we can come back from this. We've got three minutes, so anything else. We just need to... Was that converted? I didn't see it. It was indeed. We need, we need a try and a conversion, which is very doable. I don't know how Rory's playing, though. Rory popped his shoulder out like a game of it. Well, great stuff from Rory Wilson to get back onto the field and a good kick through here. And he got the bounce that he needed. You can see the tape on his uh, left arm as well. He's done fantastically well to pick himself back up again and get into the game. 21-17. Fulham boys trail by just the four. And they would take this uh, relatively local derby in terms of Roslyn Park standards. Tackle! into no, no, leave it. memories of the tournament but instead it's oratory in possession all wrapped up at the moment but they might break free down the left an excellent take by Wanyama McDonald keeping the ball alive that's a loose pass the try scorer Wilson looks to apply some pressure Wanyama McDonald now wide they go Keating with a race to the line and Keating will beat Bennett Dak, don't go him, and like Oratory okay? back on top. Don't go <laughs> yeah, Fulham boys a little bit back where they started with a minute or so to go. Two scores in that time. time still very much possible, Will. Time is off. You can hope, but it is only a minute. One minute, so chat. Sure Have we made substitutions? A bit of a mismatch out wide there. Wait. So easily wait, exploited wait. in the game of sevens. Okay, time is on. London Oratory under uh, the pressure to hold fire. That's an excellent kickoff. One by Blue. Taken even cleaner by Fulham as they look to free the hands. It's been knocked on. And that is unfortunate following such a good take off the kickoff. Scrum down, gents. Black ball. Well, over on RE1, Campion it's Victoria. So they will chance. top this group. Is on me, guys, for the scrum, please. Come, come to me. Here we are. 30 yeah. seconds to go yeah. here. It looks like London Orange Focus will take away the win and a bit of bragging yeah. rights, Will. Which is unfortunate. Crouch! Ample thought, Fine. however, are live next against Colleague okay, Kamoid. Bring up, guys. I need to be comfortable here. You know where you're going, yeah? It's uh, all safe, to play for yeah. in that group. If Colleague Kamoid can Crouch. beat Ample Thorpe by a large Fine. score, they will take top. Spot in that group, they trail by 55 on points. That's behind the ball now. Applethorpe, however, just need a victory to come away 
into that elimination game. But it's Horentry on the tack, looking to seal it. Lovely footwork. Away goes Wojciech Gowicz. Careful, Blue, careful. And uh, Horentry will have the last laugh, time, unfortunately, that's Will. That's time. You know, I thought, I actually thought we could have had it back. Well, that will bring uh, Fulham Boys Tournament to an end, Will, but thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, we wish you all the best going forward for the rest of the seven season. Well, next over on RE2, it's going to be Amplethorpe College who take on College Ecomoid. Good afternoon, the three o'clock round of fixtures. Clare's Court versus Arthur Grammar School on RE1. Amplethorpe College versus College Ecomoid on RE2. Orleans Park School versus Impington College on RE3. New New School versus the Wandsworth College on RE4. Gresham School versus Caterham School on RE5. Colleague Cigar versus Bishop Wordsworth School on RE6. And the King School Grantham versus Sandbach School on RE7. Hello everybody, we are back in action with Ample Forth College against Colleague E. Kamoyd. Ample Forth kickoff, they're two from two so far today. Colleague E. Kamoyd, there's one, one, loss one. If they win this one and win it well, it'll have to be really well. A lot of points required here for the Welsh school if they are to qualify top of the group and go into an elimination match. They've certainly got the willing Evan Jones with that little foray down the short side. Straight out. Tense. But mathematically up against it, Colleague Kimori. Tense, there's your mark. Tense, there's your mark. Doesn't mean they can't end this with a victory. Doesn't mean they can't have a say in how the group goes and defeat Ample Four. But those in red and black are two from two for a reason, and they're on the charge here. Ben Bridgman. The number 10, he's looking to pull a few strings. Doesn't result in <coughs> anything too fruitful. Yeah. Okay, gents. Crouch! Find! Can't show they're going this side. Set! So colleague Ikamoyes, number 11, Tane Jones. Gets this ball cleanly out the back of the scrum, then sets off with a couple of steps forward. Lovely pass out to the left wing. Logan Wyman is here, a big fen from Wyman. Takes play up to Ample Force 22. Big figure of Morgan Oakley. With high tackle, always high, no pivot. Pass. What about uh, taking on himself? Got to get attempts, get low, gents. Jones. Jace Jones. 12, Not high tackle, gents. You've got to blow the chest. High tackle from Ample Forth. Not being precise enough in defence. Jones with the pass, and it's the first score. Coleg, Ikamoy have the first try in a match they have to win and have to win well to have any chance of going through to the elimination match at the end of today. Purposeful beginning this from the Welsh school. 
carry there was from Jace Jones, then the penalty from Evan Jones. And this was the show and go from Tom Christopher. Lovely score from Christopher. And pull forth Dan Burke. And now Rollo Story. Switch from Story. Good offloads. Hands from Bridgman were nice too. Charlie Hill racing away for Ampleforth to strike back immediately. Hill running a good support line, but the hands in and out of Kimagi Kamoyd's defense were deftly done. Direct rugby sevens. With a physical edge here, Rollo's story with this carry, then that offload to Bridgman, and that was superb as well. Hill forcing Kolegi Kamoy to run out of numbers. Right, free kick on the centre. Morgan Oakley. Jones. Then to the try scorer, Christopher. Not rolling. Jacklin was fine. Adding up now as Evan Jones gets moving and wants Tom Christopher again to take on more carrying duties. Happy Jackler. Penalty though, ample fourth here. That was reward for that sterling work on the floor. Dan Burke. Try score a hill. Opening up the midfield goes Rollo Story, who hits another level of speed to then sprint away. Chase back hard. Oh, he's going to be caught. Brilliant tackle. And Story's there. He places and scores. First reach, gents. But that chase back from Tane Jones was hypersonic. No, first reach. Good, good afternoon. Uh, this is a call, please, if there's a representative on site from Maidstone and Grammar School. Uh, that's a representative, please. How about this from Story? Story Gap took on Morgan Oakley. Really felt like he was home and dry, but Tane Jones had other ideas. What a tackle that is. He's still holding on to his leg. Case to be had for a double movement, certainly, but uh, the referee on site and judged it not to be. He was certainly allowed to place that ball, no problem there. at all there. You can understand players asking the question. Equally, you can understand why the referee didn't give that as a double movement. Oh, I want to take this is around the outside. Beautifully done, the hand being held, and that's enough. Jones follows up, lovely pass from the young number nine. Picks it away, keeps the ball in hand. This is lovely sevens, Niall Evans linking well with his winger. Kolegi Kamoy having uh, gone through so many phases to get to this stage. Niall Evans. Here's Jones again. Little jinky on the inside. Beautiful out the back again. Doesn't do regulation passes, does Evan Jones. Great skill set. And into the corner. Wyman was looking to go. Instead, he was dragged into touch. 14 points to seven to Ample Four. Defensive. Hold there. Let's go. Steel is good. Release now, Red. Release Red. By Kamoy. Let's play. Now, can Jones conjure something here? Goes for the crossfield kick. It's well weighted. It's beautifully weighted. What touch from Evan Jones. And such patient wing play to collect the ball from Rodri Hext. Ted, with me, please. That Evan Jones has all the characteristics of a dynamic playmaker. 
with vision to go with it. And Kolegi Kamoiv on level terms with Ampleforth. This is one of the best tries we've seen Take on RE2 today because of You've had two the weight shots to that bounce. kick. Yeah. No, was that just was, right. Well, that one over there. That one was before those two. Okay. So half time, 14 points each between Ampleforth and Colleg Ikamoy. Say again, sorry. Chasing the kids. Yes, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, good, good offloads. A couple of out the backs. Yeah, flare rugby. But yeah. Thank you. So yeah, the sternum below, but they're always high, always upright, no attempts to even get low, so there's nothing we can even mitigate that, that goes from that, all right? Moyth will kick off at 14 all against Ampleforth, who are having their toughest outing of the day so far. Ampleforth beat Clare's Court School this morning, 34 points to seven. They then beat Dartford Grammar School, 34-5. Neither of those in anywhere near a contest for Ampleforth. This really is. So around the outside goes Joshua. Oki and Oki stamps his name on this match. An immediate impact at the start of the second half from Oki. <laughs> he covers his mouth. He can't believe he's uh, missed the sitter of a conversion, having done all the hard work here. This was power at its best. And then the speed as well. No one was going to try and burn valuable calories and jewels of energy on chasing down Joshua Oki. So Kologi Kamoi need to reset, but with a conversion missed, a converted score puts them in the lead. Man who broke the deadlock at the end of the first half, hexed in the blue scrum hat, he makes sure he breaks with a support from his teammates. Another one of their try scorers comes next, rolling and spinning with aggression is Christopher Jones. Nice pass along the line. Oh, that's very ambitious and almost working. Back to Hext. Little shake of those hips from Hext. Rock over is good. Tap and go from Ampleforth. Spotting space in behind. Big Fend here looking to go a score ahead for the first time in the contest. And Langdale, Wraith Langdale, and that puts Ampleforth. well ahead <laughs> it's a real problem down there in that part of the pitch for players trying to take their conversions from under the sticks maybe it's harder than it looks this was lovely though wasn't it the uh, intention here and that fend ample force you and McCarthy was the man to make the break before Wraith Langdale finished off. Kickoff 
has gone too far. Kolegi Kamoy in with a chance still in this match, but certainly uh, the chance of topping this group through points difference has vanished. They needed to beat Ampleforth by a long, long way. Might still be able to cause problems, though, within this match if they can strike quickly. Under four minutes left. Good offloading skills to get out of a tricky spot there. Oakley. Got a wonderful pass on in this big number four, Morgan Oakley. Oh, that's a well timed tackle indeed from Bridgman. And he's one that. Or he's actually given away a knock on in the process of uh, making that tackle. So we'll soon be getting the schedule for the elimination match at the end of the day here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Those results will be filtering in, and if you want to keep across them, then you need to head to nationalsevens.co.uk, follow the website there, and see if you can get the uh, early insight on who Ampleforth might be playing in the elimination match. They are with seconds eating up in the last sort of 60 or so. They've really assured their place there. If they win the elimination match, of course, then they get to come back tomorrow, another day off school. They'll feature in another group stage match or, or a series of matches tomorrow before going into knockouts. There cannot be a harder rugby tournament in the world to win than the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And you can include, I include the World Cup in that as well because this pace of rugby and the sheer scheduling is so tough. The team that does end up winning it, they have done it the very, very, very hard way. Because every way is hard. Kolagi Kamoy have been one of those teams that could really have, uh, have potentially, with a couple of touches of extra luck, made today look very different. But they've certainly performed as a so squad so well. You can see that from the way they play, how connected they are and how they support each other so well. Here is Hext. Skill level really high, but with Evan Jones off the pitch, they do lack a spark of creativity. But for the next minute, final minute of the match, they're playing against six players. Hext, and he'll profit here, won't he, Hext? Gets it around Oki, who almost made a real... Uh, Amends. In fact, he has made an amends. Joshua Oki, that's sent terrific from the number three. Gets ample fourth off to another attacking set. George Mattock. Mattock makes the break. Tries to get the ball away. Back for Kolegi Kamoy. It's a final play. It will almost certainly be. Kolegi Kamoy's day coming to an end. But well, maybe something left in it to take home down the M4 to treasure. Another try at Roslyn Park. Most impressive uh, first half they put together. Just haven't been able to back it up. Does anything remain in the tank for them? Ample fourth defence has stepped up in the second half. Could miss past that, isn't it? Out to Oakley. Keeps it away. Keeps it alive well. Good line, that. And they keep coming. Tane Jones, another man who's played well in this one. numbers here if they can make that work but they get lined up again Bridgman has been on a seek and destroy mission in defense and Ben Bridgman 
should he want to and keep this going and they'll have another match now ample fourth to see if they come back tomorrow but despite that they wanted to play still and things might have added to the scoreline there but they don't but 24 points to 14 ample fourth with a true test of their credentials they've come through it to top the pool and earn themselves another match here at Roslyn Park but fans and supporters of Ampleforth, you'll have to stay over the social media channels and the tournament website to see what time and when their elimination match will be played. From colleague Ikemoy, it's been fantastic to feature their skills on RE2. And what a talented bunch of players they seem to be. They've ended their campaign in this cup with one win, two losses, but uh, hopefully a truckload of memories and certainly some highlights from this match to take home. Do it behind, it's easier, yeah? Which school are you again? See, it's okay. Apologies for the later beginning to the action. Yep. But already, as you can see, Cathedral School Landaff have a try and are working on getting the ball back. Cedars School have the ball here, though, and maybe they can play. This was uh, the try we scored brilliantly uh, finished off in the end by Alex Abel. Release! So Landaff tapping and going that's, that's okay player. no knock on the tackles down gold get the tackles so down the chance an outside chance but a chance nonetheless of qualifying for the next round cathedral school lander if they can rack up the points here diving into the corner ridian bailey all the aerial class you could need to finish off that score I'll go over so I can see Griff. Yeah, on the spot. Well, 
from a difficult angle. It was a good looking kick. Cathedral School Landaff with their second score. Let's see how this one is put together. Lovely hands. Edwards Owen here. You Good pass along the line. That was so can be on the right Dylan side. Davis with the pass and the diving score from Bailey. That was something. Well, they won their first match of the day this morning. 42 points to nil against Sidcott and then lost to the Portsmouth Grammar School 27-7. And it looks like Portsmouth Grammar School will top the pool. They're playing Sidcott right now, and they are most likely going to add up quite a few points against Sidcott. So even if Cathedral School Landaf win this you one, touch that. it's unlikely we'll line out, please. that they will go through. But there's a chance. Not a fast one. There is a chance. No, no, no. Who knows what will happen? The mark's there. You can see where the guy went in. On pitch, yeah? RE1. That's the mark, right there. That's where he went in. Yeah, no, no, hang on. Go step. Go step. Come in here, please. For the Cedar School, they're just looking come, to fellas. get a first win of the day. Lost the first two. Close, actually, against Sidcott School. <laughs> Down the blind side, sneaking away, and that's a wonderfully well put together set piece from Cathedral School Landaf. Again, the try from Abel. <laughs> and you guys he sold stuff. it so well. Me a favor and go the dead Created ball, a picture to the opponent's sweat. Felt like he was really going to pass that. Let's have a few marks for the acting involved here. Takes it down. Little dummy. What am I doing with this? I know exactly where I'm going. All the way home. Wait up, Griff. So Griff Bevan, a man who's played for the Crawshies at under-18 level. Not many higher accolades than that in terms of your attacking ability than playing for the Crawshies. Off your feet, giving no advantage. Off your feet. Go back. Penalty Cedars. Here they come. Good step. And go from the number 10. That's Jack Allen. Penalty to Cathedral School. Allen holding on the floor. Marks back and here. Landaf want to go. What I would like is to actually see the ball come up, Bevan. okay, guys? Got just hands on it, yeah? That's why it took so long, right? It's the co-captain in this team as well, the number eight, Bevan. Brings in Isaac Godfrey, the big Cardiff man, and again, away flies Riddy and Bailey. Set piece moves when they work, so effective. <laughs> and so often it's the use of the right people in the right roles. And Isaac <laughs> Godfrey was exactly the right man to batter down the door. He's got a wonderful, uh, ever growing CV, Isaac Godfrey. Played for the Barbarians at under 18 level against rugby school at the birthplace of rugby. So here is Godfrey. You can see why. The Barbarians wanted this man at under-18 level. What a, we will have a kick -off, yeah? specimen he is. And the hands to go with it afterwards. One minute. That's right, where you go. Griff Bedman's kick goes long. Allen. Winds up a big step, plays uh, under-16 rugby for Harlequins. Does Griff Bevan, does uh, Jack Allen at rather? And this is streaking away, Toby Ogunyemi. Wow, great tackle Play on. from Bailey. Support from Temliakov. Release there. Advantage. Ogunyemi plays scrum half, and that's a superb pass, Jack Allen. Puts this in behind. There's loads of numbers here for Cedars. Great pickup. The bounce is there. Now that is a cruel, cruel, shrill whistle. Not releasing blast. the tackle player. But we're going to come back for the penalty. Black not releasing. Holding on the ground. Lovely You're attack from minutes. the Cedars. Doesn't matter. Play on. Play on. We're into half time. So Alan. Yemi. 
double miss pass. Lovely skills on display here from the Cedars. Now they need to slow things down before speeding things up again. Allen has a slightly disorganized defense to run at, puts it in behind. He's the only chaser here. And Bailey's back, who's quick enough to touch down. So at half time, 26 points to 10. For Cathedral School Landa yeah. in their final Try group match against, against the Cedars School. You guys over there. So you knock the ball on, and you had the advantage back here for not releasing. So I took you back to the advantage, all right? Gave you the advantage, how's that? <laughs> Oh, no, no, I just don't want anyone hurt, that's all. Yeah, no worries at all. No issue, just don't want anyone hurt. so I don't get in the road. And also so I can see your fellas that are getting offside. Um, give me a second. Uh, Captain Black, you right? Captain Gold, you ready? The sun coming through the clouds at Am I Park. Unleashed Almost you. for the first time today. It's been good weather, warm weather, but no sun as yet until now. And Jack Allen gets the second half going. Knock on. He didn't knock on to the touch, so I'm going to have a scrum here. First scrum, guys. I'd like to be three the last calls, three seven minutes, please. That's the mark. This year's Howard so Rosalind Park want National School 7 for both teams. Set, we ready? Whatever the results. Look at your positions. Portsmouth perfect. Grammar School. Take a step, please, guys. Having been That's the team perfect. Crouch! that are in the driving seat. Bind! And only one team set. from each pool goes through. There are 56 pools. Balls out. In the under 18 Vars this year. Now here is Toby Ogunyemi. Backwards! Doesn't find a, a clean pass though to Moyes Bu. No, 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 no. Not on that one. Want to go. Uh, that's a knock on into touch. So you can either choose scrum on the 15, scrum on the 15, scrum down 15. The advantage of a knock on the touch, Griff. Right. Take a step, guys. I want you to fire from the centre, yeah? Crouch! Bind! Set! Ball's out. I had to juggle with that. Did really well to make the most of it and streaking up the fields. Griff Bevan turns old lint into linen and spins a beautiful pass through the Cedars try line. That's wonderfully done, isn't it? Almost as if he'd set it up deliberately. Griff Bevan. Something special. 
Which way are you going, Griff? Just stay behind the kicker, please, fellas. This is going to bounce back on <laughs> Cathedral School Landa's side. That went forward off his hands. Little knock on there, fellas, unfortunate. Let's come down here. There's the mark. Scrum for you, fellas. Scrum down, you guys. Come on, quickly. Speed it up. Sevens. We haven't got a long time. Come on. There's your mark. Come on in, please. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Cedars is Edward Reed. Crouch! Is on the park. Fine! Set! His hand. Can the scrum. Ensure the ball comes back. Let me check. And they are up you're against right, Isaac Godfrey you, all you did was in that slip, front row. And you're, you're a big fella, so you're going to squash him, right? <laughs> um, let's move over here a little bit and get some more traction, yeah? There we go. But maybe a few more burgers if you're in the front row, yeah? Come on up, you come. Come on up, <laughs> you come. Sometimes the referees Good say job. it better than anyone. Crouch! Bind! Set! Stay. Yeah. Isaac Stop. Godfrey. <laughs> Absolutely marmalizing. Fellas, do you understand the under the 18 laws? Scrum. You can only go one and a half meters, all right? So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because you're huge, and we'll do it again, yeah? Three big steps. Just take three steps, and that's, that's it, yeah? I, I don't need to get the slide rule out. Three, three big steps. Come on in, guys. Crouch! Bind! Set! It's Isaac Goffey having to hold his own Collapsing. width from going back and uh, penalty rightly coming to the Cedars here because there was not as much control as there needed to be from Godfrey. Look at the break on the inside here. But the ball is ripped. Still fine. Nonetheless, Still fine. Uh, nearly a wonderful run from Amari Paintsill. Now here is Godfrey on the front foot. No one will get in his way, although Toby Ogunyemi has a good go. Settle down, big fella. Settle down. Great score from Isaac Godfrey. Yeah, it was a, it was a rip, guys. It's a rip. I'm on here. Just over two minutes. Actually, it'll be less than two minutes by the time we kick off. Now we're going to get the ball. Daly calmly puts it over. Can we get that ball? He's told he's got to go and get it. This is great footwork here, though. Brilliantly done from Paintsill. But that also is some superb pinching of the ball from Griff Bevan and Isaac Godfrey. Big fend into Ogunyemi, who now, full Griff. credit to Ogunyemi, comes right. back for more and almost Shoot has a right. chance to spill that ball. It was well held by Godfrey. I mean, he's a nightmare for a sevens defence because you can be as fit and as organised as you want, but if you just don't have the size equal to a man like that, you can't do anything. Pantsil does nicely to create space. So that's really well worked from the Cedars. Brilliantly done and then into touch, but a chance for the Cedars and Neron Budu to have gone down the touchline. Line out's actually here. There's Mark. It's your ball. In here, mate. That's you. All right, guys, got 15 seconds left. Come on. Come on, join in. Guys, I need at least two. And you should be mirroring them. So, need three. Come on. All right, that's last play now. Good afternoon. We have the... Last play of... First this year's Roslyn Park for both these two schools. And down the short side, wanting to make every moment count. Popping it back inside. Big power from Hewitt there. And he's going to get it back again and look for the try that himself. He's held on well. That's Godfrey to round it off. Good support from Isaac Godfrey. 
He's got an engine on him. That's full time. And he's kept it running all the way. To the final whistle. Two tries for the big man. A couple created. It's not going to be converted. It doesn't matter. This man's skill set is on a different level to anyone else on this pitch right now in terms of what he can do ball in hand. This is a power power. Run. Sorry, Captain. David Hewlett. Good hands on the inside. And Godfrey with just the one sock. That's regulation for his team. Part of the game. It's an iconic look and uh, well finished off. Cathedral School Landaff end the day with a victory over Cedars School. 45 points to net. Well played young man. Thank you. School up against Dauncey School in their final group stage match now. Dauncey's looking to go three wins from three today. Colfs still looking for their first win, having lost their two group games. So Dauncey's, if they win this match, will have booked themselves a place in the elimination matches coming up later today. And this is a brilliant start for them. Well finished off, and Jamie Arch taking the ball out of the air, and a tidy set of wheels on him as well. So Dauncey's with the first score. They've had a, a couple of close encounters to get to this point, Dauncey's. They beat Gordon School 15-12 in their first match, then beats... Barton Peveril College, 35-24. I made a blistering uh, start to this one. Jamie Ash held okay, together with all manner of tape Let's around go. each part of his legs. Lifting in the line out, strapping on the right knee. Good kick off here Back as Colts blue. Tackle. claim the ball. William Rockout, captain of the side. In that yellow scrum hat, that's a nice loft load there from Jack Murphy. This is Whiteland. Whiteland resets. Very patient defensive line from Dauncey's. 
slip pass again to uh, Jack Murphy. Presses his way forward. Tackling came from Haywood. Rock up. Okay, this is Milo Asher. Asher takes good contact on his own terms. You can't keep rolling. But he rolled uh, one. Keep rolling. Take a roll there. Rolled too far. Tackle their camp here. To penalty Dawn Cease. Come here, please. Come here, please. Thank you. Though they were physically rocked back in defence, though they stayed patient and stayed well organised. And the penalty came. Dauncey's lovely pass out of contact here. And Ollie Haywood is off and going. And there's a little hint of a step on the inside. Instead, he goes outside. At arm's reach, he places Colfs to run in on the other flank. This pass out of contact is a beauty. Tom Campbell, knowing exactly where Ollie Haywood would be. Okay. Let's go. Stay behind. Good kick off again. Tap back is nice. Back it's going to be Dauncey's ball. When you play sevens like this, it's a completely different ball game. Almost makes a side untouchable when That's their opponents are living off nothing at all. Despite that, Colts have the ball. Kasindi. Good pass again from Murphy. Bigger. Talented man as well. Plays uh, Saracen's lock, actually. The number 19 for Colts. Here is Asher. Again, he's got a, a real good turn of pace, is Milo Asher. Tackle. You get the sense when Colts are playing like this Follow against me, the team hey. that have topped the group, on, you know how competitive this me. group has been. And even though Colts haven't won a okay, match stop. yet, stop. it's been a Time high quality group off. to have played a part in. Sorry, I didn't see him, I'm sorry. Time is off, guys. Time is off, we're waiting for him. Oh, did just replace him? Done? Happy? So the reason okay, time back we're on. Let's go. having a break, Jack Murphy has had to go off the big number 19 for Colts, unfortunately. So replacements on for Murphy. Rockal goes back to the left-hand side. Daniel Tizai. Clouter. Some space seen, I think, but it's well covered. Ollie Haywood. Goes back, now sets off. Good step, and then the speed tries to come on, but he's hampered by a stumble. Roll away, roll away! Campbell. Show to the outside, then back to Campbell. Has to be quick to transfer this ball, and Arch is quick. Or rather, Jack Wharton, excuse me, Wharton with that last charge. Reeve. Campbell again. Come back with Pound. Colf looking organised in defence. Knock an advantage. Campbell. Knock Tom by Blue. He's coming down here. Dorsey's ball. And Dorsey's failing to make the most of Just that possession there. It was good defence by Colf, exactly even if they gave the penalty down. away. Or the rather the free. Uh, no, the, pe no, the scrum. No penalty there. Knocking the ball forward, but unintentionally so. It's your ball, Dantes. Mark is here, guys. That's why I'm standing here. Thank you. There's Mark. Thank you. Crouch! Go find that. Just stay behind Matthew Nocton. Find! Set! Just checks what the call is close, behind the scrum. Pulls out. And the call is to go to the blind side with Campbell, who takes it to the line and then bursts through the line, and Tom Campbell runs in. A classy solo score. Campbell puts it down. Dauncey's get number three. And knocks it through. Tom Campbell. So Nocton uh, has had a good scrum to work off. 
Campbell, a real Half minute left, guys. Half minute. elegance. 30 seconds left, 30 seconds for this half. Good to keep the king of his 11. Good afternoon, the four o'clock round of pictures has followed. Big chase from the kickoff. It was Arch. He scored the first try. Roll away, seven. Round of school, Wakefield versus St. Cecilia School on RE2. Locker gets it back. The man with yellow and green scrum hat thinks there might be King's something College on the right flank. Aldridge <laughs> doesn't manage to do much with that ball, so half time wins in and Dauncey's lead comfortably 21 points to nil against Colf School. They are on target to top the group and go through to the elimination round coming up later on today. Dauncey's kick to the left. And again, their restart work, most impressive. Gives them such an upper hand to be that smart on the restart. And Colfs aren't able to live with that side of the game, unfortunately. Jack Wharton on the rampage there. Tom Campbell showing the strength and the resilience on his side of the game now. Theo Malik. Plenty of strength in that jersey. Here's some speed, though, from Alfie Shears. And Shears is into the corner. And Dauncey's from the restart, claiming it, running it in. They are just warming themselves up now for this elimination match, which will take place uh, exactly, we think, at about 5 p.m. So not very exact, but let's say exactly at 5 p.m. And that will be against the winner of Hayes School or Bloxham School. That's as our calculations uh, work things out because they're on target to top the group. So Bloxham or Hayes at 5 p.m. for Dauncey's. Question now of how many points and how many tries they add up in this final group stage match um, to give the group a uh, final reflection of their dominance. Now, Colts, can they come up with something of their own here in their final match at this year's Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens? There's Fraser Whiteland in the 15 shirt. Tizai. Now, lovely pass to get it back to Whiteland. Milo Asher, good switch on the inside with Kluter. Kluter powers out of the first tackle. He's driven into the turf hit. 
and Colts with the best passes of the of the match really Seb White now and this wearing Jack Murphy's uh, jumper they switched go. Jack Murphy having gone off in the first half space to the left here Seb White and then Milo Asher good hands again for Clue to conclude to finish he's hit hard Dorsey's defending with every inch of their energy. Not ha saving anything for the elimination match, are they? Milo Asher, Kluter. He's had several forays down this side, but now Kolfs are gonna cross, and that is so <laughs> well deserved right from Fred Cassindi. Fred Cassindi wearing 19, just as Jack Murphy was, but Cassindi with a lovely try. Involved multiple times in that set, Cassindi. Really smart work to ignore the open side. Time is off for the from ball, guys. Come on, let's take a bit long, too long. There must have been space out there, but he knew yeah, there was space down the blind side. Save the kicker. Okay. Wait. Go. It's just going to bounce. Might bounce anywhere. Instead, it's Dauncey who will bring that away. Two speculative passes when. More live. straightforward passes were available. Doesn't lead to the try line. Instead, it leads to possession for Colfs. Seb White. Asher. Love the way this man attacks the line. Milo Asher. He's got power Come back behind with the him as well, but attacks with real confidence. And he's going to defend with confidence there, although Dauncey's are away. Full pass. Charlie Godfrey. Full pass. Borsett. But forward pass. Scrum. Scrum, guys. Here's your own. Crouch! Find! Set! Oscar Larson. Right, guys, time is off. To put that ball in and get it away. Listen. Go and drive straight. And we can't ask to kick the ball forward, okay? Right, let's be careful what we're doing. Same mark as before, there's the mark. In you come, drive straight, don't kick the ball towards you, away from you. Crouch! Fine! Set! Balls out, balls out, balls out! Colfs struggling to get their own ball back. Backwards off, backwards off, move! Don't claim it. No, off your feet, your feet! Final two minutes of action for Colfs School at this year's Roslyn Park School Sevens. Too long, too long. Too long. Got themselves on the board it. against the group toppers, and that's no mean feat. Can they add anything more? Seb White <laughs> with the carry yeah. penalty, though. Dorsey's it's a good break as well, isn't it? From Theo Malik, supporting line from Tom Morton. Morton passes back on the inside. Henry Taylor is here. Taylor goes on the outside. Love of lovely show from Taylor and then dusts off the final defender to sashay his way over the line try here. real swagger about this try from henry taylor build up play was nicely done wasn't it isolation of the last man who was oh, then beaten seconds. once beaten twice <laughs> And then being the third time. Okay. Ready? Stay back, guys. Good. Go on, 10. Go on, 10. Really, really good uh, kickoff. That's it, Brian. This is the what will need to be Taking repeated the in the elimination match. Yeah, number three. Four Dauncey's is their precision that's at the restart. Didn't hurt him. Didn't hurt him. They can. can take the bulk of there are 10 seconds their remaining. restarts back there are 10 seconds for themselves. Remaining. They'll stand a great chance against either Blocks of School or Hayes. Good, thank you. 
who Time is up. we know they're going to be facing Time one of up. those two in the next round. This is the last act of the group stages. Taylor. Looking to go himself again is Henry Taylor. There is support. Godfrey Fawcett. 10 metres, please. 10 metres. 10 metres. You won't 10 metres in the first place. Back 10. That'll be too fine for me. Theo Malik slows down before the line. Therefore, you know he's looking to pass it. That was well done indeed. And Ollie Haywood races round the outside. Classy finish from Dauncey. Right here. Yeah, that was fine. Theo Malik this time not choosing to use his brawn. But knowing players outside him were in a better position. So Dauncey's round out the group stages with a third win of the day. They go through to the elimination match. And they go through in style against Colts, 38 points to five. Colts really kept at it. Made the best of the chances they were given. Dauncey's was simply too much of everything. Lovely pass that, the slight delay. And Alfie Shears creating the chance for Ollie Haywood. Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield against St. Cecilia's in the final group stage match and the last of all the group stage matches on RE2 today. Quakes Wakefield, one win, one loss. Looking to end things with as many points as possible here and hope that Newcastle Underline do them a favour against Seven Oaks. And if Newcastle Underline win that, then maybe Quakes Wakefield backwards can first still or go backwards through. Me? Stay on side. And as things stand, Sorry. things are out of their hands. All they can do here is try and end as well as possible. And they're certainly starting as well as possible in this last match. Over the line and racing home is Harry Bowser. Or rather, Oliver Smith, excuse me. Oliver Smith with the score. You Wakefield. Perfect. Just so I give the points to the right team. Right, just from that line. Stay behind the kicker. No, no, 
it's a line-out. It's a line-out. On this mark. Here's the middle. Mark here. Mark here. In the middle, please. So Quentz's here. day kicked off this morning, losing to Newcastle under line. Sorry, winning against Newcastle under line. 33 points to 12. They then lost to Seven Oaks, 17-12. On the ball! St. Cecilia's Good rip. looking for their first victory here at Roslyn Park this Bonsage. year. Ed Hunter now on the outside is Jamie Nichols and Quiggs scooting in again for try number two. They need to kick it, kick it back in, please. Really good rip from Dan Cocaine. And then Hunter with the pass onto Nichols. Okay, Tim, when you're ready, stay behind, lads. Yep. Kick off from Smith. Doesn't go 10. St. Cecilia's with uh, the ball back on Not halfway. They have a link with uh, Harlequins' academy pathway to St. Cecilia's. So they've got some Harlequins. Uh, Associated coaches helping them here today. Advantage. <laughs> okay, you've knocked it but on Quakes, and then you put it back. One of the forces in schoolboy rugby in England. And although it doesn't look like they're going to get out of the group, they are always a proposition and you just never know. Oliver Smith is going to run him for number two. For the number two. Great speed. <laughs> and they just want points. That's the order of the day because if Newcastle under line can beat Seven Oaks then they'll be on two wins from three matches as well and that'll make three teams who have won one and lost who have won two and lost one and that might mean that points difference comes into play and Queggs can still go through they're really in a hurry here okay stay behind you can see it every time they score they're yes, running the ball back to the halfway line getting ready to try and take the restart and they're making every conversion count as well so of their three scores they've got a conversion for every single Vances. one knock on in the and air from the yellow tap scrum back down. scrum down chance for saint cecilia's there That's first scrum slow call steady okay stay five guys Crouch! Boys! Set! Quags make boys. a mess Come of the scrum. It's gone more than 90 degrees. Let's reset quickly. There's your mark. Nine, let's get the ball out, yeah? Let's get the ball out. In, lads. Crouch! <laughs> Guys, last time, don't bind on the crouch. Let's reset quickly. Crouch! Boyd, set. St. Cecilia's get the ball back. Now they look to gauge in a foot race and there is speed in the heels of St. Cecilia's. What a foot race this is. Great dive on the ball. And St. Cecilia's Fair with up. the breakout and possession. And can they hurt Quiggs here? Looking to go through the gap. 19 offside. 19 offside, got to retire before you interfere. St. Cecilia's get going. This is Jade Hartsock. Hartsock with the switch. Tackle! Yes! <laughs> Penalty Quags though. And they'll look to go from deep. Advantage offside. Because for the last two minutes, they've not been able Advantage. to add to their tally and that will have frustrated no, them. Offside. Offside, move back. Wait, 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 can't go quick. Move 10, you're not 10, you're not 10. Thank you, when are you ready? Quegs just go for <laughs> slick hands through the right hand side, then the breakdown field and Harry Bowser with that charge, then the offload to make sure Will Heath can finish off. And 
That one being clapped all the way home by Quegg's fans. Oh no, underside of the bar, comes back. Bowser with a great break in those pink boots. You've got to be quick to wear that kind of footwear at Roslyn Park. And he does do really well. Will he Lads, this is last play now. Nicely. Last play, guys. Stay behind. Last play of the half. Can Quegg's add anything more to their tally? They've done well in this first period. Even if a couple more tries might have been scored. Have they been a touch more efficient? Okay, half time, guys. But nonetheless, a, a good seven minutes from Quegg's Wakefield in their quest to add as many points to their points difference total as possible, just in case they can get through. St. Cecilia's Church of England team still looking good for this first nice win Four, at Roslyn Park this year. Hockey, Grammar School for Boys versus Heaton Yule on RE2. Dollar Academy versus St. Allen's on RE3. St. Paul's versus Champion on RE4. King Grantham versus New Yule on RE5. And Bishop Wordsworth versus Anthony Ball on RE6. Uh, those elimination matches get it underway at 420. Quags begin with ball in hands and spacing Guys, out forward, nicely, although ball would pass down. under no, no, no pressure. Here's your mark. Saint Cecilia's with a scrum. Guys, forward pass for me, okay? Scrum down. Here you go. Everyone's so eager. Stay five, guys. To rack up as many points as they can in the Quegg's Wakefield team. Step up. Coach! Boys! Set! Yes, please, no. <laughs> Early push, yellow. Free kick, Archie Naples. Gets going. This is Ellie Sequiere. Tackle! Support from Kanye Jones. Naples, the captain. And interestingly, St. Cecilia's with a real line change at half time to bring on some of their more regular players, including the captain, Naples. And look at the result. This is a strike from. No, the left wing from St. Cecilia's, they're on the board against Quex. Alex Pownell with the score. Good score from Pownell, and for St. Cecilia's, that has put a dent in Quegg's hopes. Good skills as well, wasn't it? And Sam Berry. Stay behind the kick up. The pass, then. That was a lovely flick out the back from Elliott. And Pownell was following up well. Almost uh, losing the ball, but there was a strong arm holding that down. And that 
Quex on the attack again, but that forward pass once more. He's taken, he's taken, he's taken, he's taken about three steps before he's caught. Scrum down, lads. Got a sub, scrum down. Here you go, piece him up. Four and a half. Let's have a hooker, please, thank you. Uh, prop even. Okay, there's Mark, let's go. Crouch! Bind! Set! Yes, please, nine. Naples, off and running. Archie Naples, clean pair of heels. Beautiful vision from the number nine to go all the way from the back of that scrum and take on Queggs' scramble defence and blow them away as well. Naples with a wonderful try. This is a call, please, for the team in the girls under 16 tournament. Uh, who left their bags at the Asda control water cabin. Uh, could you return and collect those, please? Uh, that's the girls' school who left their bag at the Asda control water cabin. Uh, please, could you return Great and effort on the posts, please? but sliding it across them rather than through. Let's enjoy this from Naples. Perfectly there, blows Stay away behind, lads, okay. his Stay opposing behind, scrum guys. half with pure speed and there is a chase back it's a worthy chase back as well from jack ounsley but nothing that he could do quakes look to begin again a couple of errors having undone recent attempts but they get that right and they'll get this sent all the way ed hunter the wakefield trinity rugby league player as well as a Quegg schoolboy, finishes it off and converts it as well. That was Jack Bailey with the uh, start of the move. Nice draw and give. Naples fields the ball. Eli Sequiere. Sequiere gets it away. And then more St. Cecilia's possession. More Advances time on the ball. The penalty is given. Really good second half this from St. Cecilia's. That's a good dust off and go. Breaching the line again and still going. Powerful clear from Alex Abarisi. Here is Sequiere. Draws Naples, then gives it, and then makes sure that running into the outside channel, Sam Berry is looking for the line here. Berry gets it. A strong finish from Sam Berry. What a strong finish this is from St. Cecilia's. No tries in the first half, three in this one, and they've out playing Queggs in the second seven. Queggs, the team who are looking for a place in the next round. If they can get lucky with the result over on RE1, it's not known right now what the score is there, but all Queggs players can do is try and keep as many points on as they can and stop them, which they're not doing because St. Cecilia's adding another few seconds remaining. points to the pile. Last <laughs> play of the match. Most likely, 30 seconds remaining. Big fend here from Queggs right from the restart. That's good hands on to number eight for Queggs, Jack Bailey. And Nice run from Smith. We've got the first score in this contest. Now he loses the ball. The advantage was coming. Quakes will want to and need to add to their scoreline here. Nichols. Good pass. And run in. 
Jack Bailey with the final act of this match. One of the Yorkshire Academy players in this Quakes team. But they might not be going through. And yet, if scores are going their way elsewhere, they might still be. A moment of maths to add up points difference in this pool before we can see what happens and who goes through. But St. Cecilia's finishing really strongly against a strong Quegg's Wakefield team, as they always are. Spirited performance from St. Cecilia's, although they've gone down to a third defeat of the day, playing some excellent rugby. 38 points to 15 quicks. Uh, yes, uh, Samuel and Winfred Academy girls and boys are on the side. Uh, just a mark and come over to the RE control. So Torquay Boys Grammar School against St. Peter's York in the first elimination match of RE2. St. Peter's York in the white and the brown. They get going, winning their group, topping it. Three wins from three. Tight victory against Bryanston School. Got them off and running. And that was effectively the group decider early on. And they haven't looked back since. Now up against Torquay Boys Grammar School. Good offloading, and Chris Gwilliam is in the wide channels and racing away for the first score in this knockout match now. The winner goes through to tomorrow and group stage action, and the loser goes home today. Chris Gwilliam. Long way off uh, with the conversion, but that all-important score to begin things. St. Peter's kick-off. Not one to contest in the air, instead it's just a difficult one to take. No hands, no! For Louis Nichols. No, fine. Off the foot, it's also on. difficult to take, but no knock on, miraculously. And quite a, intuitively, I think. Kept from being knocked on. Ben Adams plays the ball. Back to the left-hand side of the field. Contact has to be sought because they're running out of options there. And straight into St. Peter's defence, and they're on the charge again. On the outside, looking to place and scoring. 
composure to finish. Legs were taken, but those long levers reaching out and touching down. That was Harry Squire, the Yorkshire County under-17 player who finished off. And did so really well. The rip was powerfully done, Aidan Doeg. And then Squire, good effort to hold Squire back from Toby Holroyd. But it wasn't enough. Two scores to the good St. Peter's, well taken from the restart. They're off and going again. This is brilliant from St. Peter's, saving some of their best rugby for this elimination match at the end of the day. Archie Pye goes in. It's easy, easy. Just watch that one, OK? Yeah, From the Yorkshire Rugby Academy is Archie Pye. And this is an impressive beginning. Torquay Boys Grammar School have been struck hard early by smart execution. So Aidan Doig knocks that down just the pitch. Just a penalty, just a penalty. Wonderful shot here of the pitches at Wimbledon Common that are in the background where so much of the action takes place. We just covered two pitches here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. There are so many more Gents, bringing in the results across all 56 so groups that, in the yeah, under 18 sure. boys' vars. In the middle. Very You're rare good. for teams to you. be scheduled to play on RE1 or 2, but some of those schools do get that chance. Both these included in that today. St. Peter's for a second time. Offside, went early, all of you. Good switch of play from Holroyd. But the forward pass under pressure. Ben Brugger telling his teammates to relax and yeah, you, not yeah, force just, things. Time is there for that Box Three minutes Jones. left in this first Box half. Crouch! Is by no means out of sight. That's right. Crouch! Binds! Just off to an ex excellent start. Sets! Ollie Steele, the captain, picks from the base and brings in some lovely hands. And now the wheels to go down the sidelines for try number four. So Steele with that hands, and then the number 15 for St. Peter's, who unfortunately we're sorry to say, we don't know the name of, the numbers haven't been included for number 15 from the team when they arrived this morning. Nonetheless, he's had a good day, I know that much. Torquay Boys Grammar School and Brugger. Looking to really run the ball for the first time through the hands. Flinging it back across centre field now. Chipping in behind. That's well got back, isn't it? Good energy levels here from St. Peter's York. Oh, Brugger has come out of nowhere. Hammers into the captain of St. Peter's, Ollie Steele, but they keep the ball. Knock off. Advantage. Advantage. Advantage Pick that ball up. Just over the shoulder. Then ball went into you and Harvey's hands. Holroyd again. Ben Adams was uh, included in this. 
part of the field, but it's going to be finished off by Jake Jones. Good power from the letter J. Good to see teams uh, using letters and sevens. Just, just wait, kick, wait, kick. Yep. Jake Jones with that score. So half time called with St. Peter's York in front and in front by some way in this elimination match. 24 7. The winner of the contest will come back tomorrow and the loser won't. Good afternoon from RE3 the 440 round of fixtures on pitch RE1. Those of you joining our coverage, hoping to see Christ College against the Portsmouth Grammar School, you're in the right place. That match is on next. The second half between St. Peter's School York and Torquay Boys. Coming up now. Peters to kick off. Big chase on here. And Messi Chindove on the charge. Bruger has done well. Just about talky ball. You're on the floor, you can't play it. On the floor. Penalty to Torquay. Ben Adams was the man who got the penalty and then set Torquay off. Ball's alive. Not now. Fake of the pump from uh, Harry Squire. Didn't really have it. the body language of a man that wanted to play that too Back much. But nonetheless, uh, giving it the show, just in case it fooled Stay where you are. Torquay. So Squire back in the line out here. But this goes all the way over, taken by Torquay. And away they go. Good chance this to isolate the last uh, defender. Ball fell to Fred Horn. A knock on St. Peter's with it back. And it'll be interesting to see how St. Peter's can play this Crouch. second half because there's enough of a score for them to feel extremely comfortable in it. Set. And yet couple of mistakes, a couple of tries for Torquay and it won't feel like that anymore. Need to keep their standards high. Here's Chindove, who's been brilliant today and still looking to hunt out red jerseys. No hands, red! <laughs> rocket forms, rocket forms. Anesu Chindove is in the Yorkshire Rugby Academy, part of the under England under-17 group as well, in terms of attending camps. He's played nicely today. Harry Squire cutting back tackling was good though from Rue Prince good long pass out here that's created the opportunity for Chris William to place in a fence and then cover the ground eagerly to get him for another try that settles the match as a contest for St Peter's York the elimination match is gonna go their way now that they can be certain.
good charge against uh, Harry Squire. So useful in sevens to have a big man like Squire who has that fitness to keep on going. Can't all the, uh, the energetic, fast types like Chris William. You do need that power to back you up at times, and Squire does so much of that for St. Peter's York. No hands now! Rocket formed. Talky boys. Big pass from Toby Holroyd. And then again through the middle. No hands! Ball is out. out. St. Peter's will nip round the outside. That's okay. Tackle! They reset so well, St. Peter's. Really good seven school. Have been year on year. Squire. Look at the power of Harry Squire. Keeps the ball well in contact. Support was there from Coates. This is nicely done too. Coates is still there. Well done. Three minutes. Marks on the five. Crouch! Bind! Set! Good scrum from St. Peter's, but equally well played to Ben Adams to get that away. Loop pass from Adams. Chance on this far right hand wing. Purposeful run, which breaks the line. Adams again. Timing's good. Timing's Chips good. this over the top. St. Peter's comfortably will be the first to it. And they wait for a few more players to get back. Tom Council involved in the gathering uh, party to collect the ball. Now it's broken down. The Oli Marsh picks it up. Good chance for Torquay. No hands now, no hands now. No, no, no. Oli Steele trying to disrupt on the floor. That's a really powerful carry. What a run. You've got to roll there. You're on the way. Brilliantly done from Fred Horn. Penalty advantage. Here is Stone. Yes. Max Stone goes close. Still playing penalty ben advantage. Adams needs a big pass out here. This should be a run in, although it's gone to the floor. It picked up by Jones. And Jake Jones does run it in. Leave it. Leave it there. Hard earned. As they so often are against St. Peter's. Knocked over by Ben Adams. One minute. So well played to uh, Talky Boys. Grammar School for sticking to the task here after some really, really strong running from Fred Horn. Max Stone. Ten times off for and the sub. Ben Adams. Times off to make a sub. Pass was from Toby Holroyd there. And okay. Jake Jones to Time score. Time on when you're ready. Taken by Munti Kabir. Kabir has set this. St. Peter's York 7 up now. That's a beautiful bounce to run this in. Great vision. And all the confidence to back himself up from Aiden Doy. Yeah, if you say it's time, you can wear it out. This will be the final act of the match, I think. Up to 14 minutes, St. Peter's York with a brilliant booking of their ticket for the second day. So confident right from the off against Torquay Boys Grammar School, who won their group, had a great day themselves, but are going to go home at the end of day one. Final score of sheer class from Aidan Doak. The bounce was just right, and the speed was all there. So coming up next here now, we have Christ College against the Portsmouth Grammar School in their elimination match. That's next.
Cheers, mate. Are you coming tomorrow? Well then, the elimination games continue. St. Peter's York, former vast champions, of course, in the last couple of years, through to the next round. Christ College, Brecon in action, up against the Portsmouth Grammar School. And alongside me, Mike Sutter, captain of the hockey team, a solid cricketer as well, and also TR for the rugby team. Is there anything you can't do, Mike? Welcome, thanks for being with us. How have you found the day, and how have Christ College, Brecon got on so far? It's been a very good day, actually. Yeah, we haven't uh, really been phased so far in the group. We've uh, won all our games, so hoping to win this one as well and get through to day two because we failed to do that last year. And you were expecting to come up against the Cathedral School Clandaff, but they were beaten by 27 points to seven by Portsmouth it's all Grammar. Backwards. Uh, surprise result for you? Yeah, we were a little bit surprised, but we, we knew we could beat Clandaff because uh, we've beaten them before, so... Hopefully we can uh, beat these two. Uh, and it will team. be uh, Christ College Brecon with there the first goes. line break of the day. Rhys Pearson, the captain, darting away down the left-hand side to score. Well, he's had a really good 15 season, but uh, the captain scores first here as well, Mike. It's a great start. Yeah, he's done that all tournaments so far. He just can't stop scoring. Well, Portsmouth Grammar came out of a difficult group, as we said, along with Sidcott and the Cedars School. We saw the Cedars School, of course, beaten by Cathedral School Clandaff by 45 and answered points, but it still wasn't enough. Christ College took down Rydal Penrose School as well as Durham Cathedral School in a tight contest, 26-12, toughest game so far? Yeah, definitely, that was a very tough game against Durham, but the boys showed some heart and got it done. Hopefully we can do that as well here. We'll have some work to do here against Portsmouth Grammar. Ed Fraser at number eight. Uh, number eight in the 15th season. Captain two of the 15th season, but a forward pass, unfortunately, from uh, Jake Wood will allow Christ College Brecon to work out from the set, set piece. Both Ollie sides, Jones stable. will feed the scrum. Take a step, one step. Thank and have you. you got your eye on anyone going into the latter stages of the Crunch. competition, Mike? Anyone? You want Find. to or don't want to face? Set. No, not really. No one we don't want to face. But I think we can beat anyone on our day. Absolutely. We've gone by on 90. Our number one goal is to make it through to day two because I don't think ever since I've been at the school since yeah. Sorry, eight, same ball. We haven't same ball. Made it through, so. Apologies. Well, there's an opportunity here, and you've already got a one try advantage. The one score from Reese Pearson, the difference. The elimination Crunch. action doesn't stop. It's. Uh, Dawnsey School, of course, who are live here Set. in our final group game up against the Hayes. That'll be the next elimination game as Portsmouth look to disrupt this scrum, and they Not have, fun. in fact, looked to turn it over, but a lucky yep. escape, really, for Christ College Brecon, but still a set piece for Portsmouth. And we'll see what they could create their first opportunity of the game. Thank you. Crouch! Binds. Set. Scrum time. Good counter drive from Christ College Brecon. Hint of a high tackle there, but the referee waves play on. Offloaded off the deck, and Portsmouth pick short from the breakdown. It's Jack Nay this time, whose brother Ryan is also at 13, taking it to the line at first receiver. Down goes Joe Smithman. Then goes the fend from May. 
but unfortunately just spilt so Christ College Brecon will play with a knock-on advantage over. Jones against the grain lovely oh, offload Nick. Nick House of Cardiff rugby will race for the line he's got Langford in chase and Langford <laughs> almost does oh, enough guess, but Nick House is over in the physical number two has scored Christ College Brecon second a great try Mike brilliant try Nick House showing them how it's done here comes number eight Hindy shout out to him top bloke Harry Hindmarsh well, Hindmarsh another all-round sportsman in this uh, Christ College side but there are some uh, some physical players of course Ollie Rose Nick House both Cardiff rugby both forwards in the regular game and it's one of them that's made a big difference here Nick House with the second score good support play flying through and once a big man gets going is awfully hard to put down despite the best efforts of Henry Langford kick off them from Pearson who scored the first it's deep to find Jake Wood who looks to open things up for the Portsmouth Grammar School nay to the line well, some Advantage. great pressure in there from Cooper Thomas. That's in the tackle for me. Knocked on. He's in the tackle. Knocked the on. Uh, Dutch youth international. Knocked in the tackle for me. Yes. And uh, Portsmouth Grammar School, a little bit lucky to get away with that one, Mike. Under a bit Crouch. of pressure. Oh, boy, come on. Binds. Set. Scrum then. Once again, the. Portsmouth Grammar School in possession but unable really to create too much and the unforced error will put them on the back foot out the back door pass put down by Ryan Ney just behind him unfortunately and a big opportunity Mike this for Christ College Brecon to extend their advantage it is a big opportunity opportunity to close the game out as well yeah take a step so hopefully a step. we can Thank get you. the third who's the most dangerous in the wide channels Crouch. from this position Lewis Howells he's Bind. a Welsh sprinter Set. He's in a bit of space, no one's stopping him. Part of the Dragons under 18, as well as a sprinting champion at national level, and it's just over the target howls and a let off for Portsmouth Grammar School, perhaps, Mike. Yeah, real let off. If he caught that, he's through. Well, instead, it's a line out that will be fed by George Gregory. One to watch at number nine, picked out by the coach. As someone who could have a real impact on this game. Portsmouth opting for a one-man lift. It's well held by number 12, Smith and Moon. And now, suddenly, Jake Wood all wrapped up in midfield and it's been stolen by Christ College Brecon and suddenly they're in possession just 22 metres out. Howells at nine, Cooper Thomas simple through the hands but patient stuff it's back with uh, Cooper Thomas here is Pearson he already has one to his name today dealt with by uh, tackle now Jake Wood pretty comprehensively there but still Howells in possession Thomas reload is the call from the sideline and back a to the short side they come the ball went down hacked on by on Thomas accidental offside but an accidental oh, offside will bring an end to the first half and it's a first half that it has had Portsmouth Grammar School thoroughly contained Mike they really haven't had too much of an opportunity inside the Christ College Brecon half yeah very pleased with that one I'm sure uh, Mr Parry the coach will be very very happy with that well it's a great first half for Christ College Brecon they've got one step into the second day of the under 18 Vars will be back with the second half very shortly, live here with Next Gen at the Howden, Roslyn Park National School Sevens.
Well, Portsmouth Grammar School raring to go here. They've got some work to do. They trail by 14. Mike Sutter alongside me from Christ College Brecon. Just drinking it all in from the uh, your mates down on the grass below. But happy with what you've seen so far? Very happy. One step into day two, hopefully. Let's, let's not jinx it, but... Well, that we'll see so if far. the uh, commentator's curse can strike again. It, it might from the kickoff, just an inch too short. It was a good nutch from Smitherman, but uh, unfortunately, Nay on the take, just short of the 10 metre. So Christ College, Brecken assess their options. AJ Morris takes it to the line. Thomas, switching the direction of the attack. Reese Conker, almost through. Tackle. Looks That's to fine. offload it, but Open it's been play. picked off by Langford. Another loose pass, but it could fall kindly here for the Portsmouth Grammar School. But then again, Ollie House has, Ollie Rose has nicked it, and Ollie Rose breaks down the left-hand side. And it's another big man from Cardiff Rugby to make a mark on this game. Ollie Rose <laughs> stole the ball in the attempted offload and then went, his, uh, went himself and scored. And perfect start to the second half for Christ College Brecon, Mike. Yep, the big men showing them how it's done. Yeah, that's an excellent start to the second half, just what we wanted. So let's try and make it four. And they go... 21 points to the good and a big ask of a Portsmouth Grammar School side yet to threaten here. Well, they were almost away. Wood on the outside. Across came Ollie Rose to disrupt. And he had the legs to beat the on-rushing Langford. A deeper kickoff this time. But it's gone over the head of uh, Jake Wood. Knocked on, unfortunately, but threatening from the kickoff, Mike. Very, our kickoffs have been perfect today, actually. We've scored a lot of tries from the kickoff, just regathering it and then scoring. So that's something we've been working on and something that's going very well in this tournament. Well, St. Peter's Crouch. York are through today, too. Fines! As are uh, Uppingham, who were in the early kickoff of the Vars qualifying rounds. That's out. Plenty of other sides already threw off Play that on. first round of fixtures. Can Christ College Brecon join the fray? We'll find out here. A strong counter ruck from Portsmouth Grammar might see them on their way. Some good momentum from Ney. Shipped on by Langford. Onto the outside channels they go. Monty Rothwell cutting back inside. Flying into the breakdown. Possible. And a penalty goes against Christ College Brecon. Just a little well bit too enthusiastic that time from Matt Goiver. And once again, Mike, as soon as Portsmouth Grammar start to garner some momentum, put to bed by another penalty. Yeah, it's looking like uh, the boys are just a bit too much for the Portsmouth Grammar school today. And the kick through, there might have been a tackle off the ball there, but instead it's hacked through by Dylan James, who will yeah. score in the corner. The Merthyr boy, Dill. New to the side this season. But a good score for him, and sevens is the kind of sport for a cross-country runner like himself. But an interesting option to kick with the intention of regathering from the penalty, Mike. Yeah, but an option that looked Straight like it worked line, out. No and luck. Looking like uh, we're through today too, so I don't think Portsmouth Grammar can come back from this one. Almost uh, sliced it into dead bull there, Dylan James. But an excellent kick as well. He's, He's been excellent today with his kick in AJ Morris. Part of Worcester's uh, development squad. Now known as uh, Midland Central. Following his father's footsteps here at Christ College Brecon. And uh, nudges like that will certainly impress his old man. But that kick off just an inch shy of the target. So Portsmouth Grammar School with a big opportunity. Well, their momentum just stifled by this Christ College Brecon defence, but they could be down the left-hand side through Archie backwards. Ross here. Loose offload, backwards it went, but there could be an overlap elsewhere. Pearson changes direction. 
Nick House is the dummy, it's still Pearson on the carry. Left lofted over to House. The try scorer goes down. And Pearson plays nine. Once again, searching crossfield. This time it's Howells on the chase, but only touch found. But every time they counter, Christ College Brecon look really dangerous, Mike. Yeah, we're very, very good at the attack. We've got some skillful players like Reese, but we've also got those big lumps like Nick and Ollie Rose who can run it up. But it will be a uh, Portsmouth Grammar School line out. Ollie Davidson picked off by Christ College. Well done, Hindy. Played in by Jones, across by Morris and Pearson. With the lofted pass, well held by House, but that offload has not gone to plan. That's on. But uh, you're right, Mike, Harry Hindmarsh up in the air, comfortably stole it. He's a little nuisance, that boy, Harry Hindmarsh, on the rugby field. Yeah, forward. Minute and 15. Minute and 15, yeah, boys. Minute 15. Crouch! James Thomas Find. and Nick House make up Set. the rest of this uh, forward pack for CCB. Oh, Penalty of scrum time though. Let him, take. Let him run. And tapped quickly. And Davidson just takes it to the line himself. With a bouncing pass well taken by Ryan Ney. Stripped in contact and suddenly CCB could be away again. Rose, Jones, Hinmarsh. Gets the offload away for Christ College. Morris with the long ball. The stutter step from Pearson. Once again, frees up the hand, but this time a penalty and a card coming for a uh, slap down by Portsmouth Grammar. And well, Rothwell's off the field. And Christ College could finish the game with another score, which will mean a lot to this, this group of players, Mike, going into day two. It will mean a lot as a big confidence boost. Uh, we've been very dominant today, and we've ended with a very dominant performance. So. Morris, Rose, Pearson, the skipper, the scorer of the first, puts the kick in behind. Hinmarsh regathers, and it's Jones. Jones takes two to bring him down. Picked quickly by Hinmarsh. Ugly boys. The show and go from Morris. Held up at the very last. And that will bring an end to proceedings here, but it's been comprehensive from Christ College Brecon, who will be back for day two here at the Roslyn Park Sevens. An impressive result, and he must be happy with that overall, Mike. Yeah, very happy. It's been a good day out with the lads, and uh, hopefully we can have another good day out tomorrow. Well, Portsmouth Grammar did very well to make it to this point. It's a cutthroat competition, the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. But in this elimination game, Christ College Brecon have come out the other side on top. Thank you very much for being with us, Mike, and good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. Well, up next here on RE2, it's two sides we're familiar with here at the Howden Rosling Park National School Sevens as Hayes take on Dauncey School.
Our final game for you here on RE2 as the sun sets on day one of the Roslyn Park Sevens. The two captains, Jack Wharton and the talented and impressive in the opening game as well. Kieran Finlay become acquainted with one another. The former London South Central player now with Ealing. The two sides we've seen live in action here on RE2. Dorty School came on top with a 47 point difference in the end against the likes of Gordon's, Barton Peveril and Colfi School, who they really put to the sword in that closing game while over in Group T, the big decider was Bloxham up against Hayes School and blue. Hayes managed to put 40 points past them. Bob's they knocked out a knock really big name in schoolboy rugby and they've put a target on their back as well. But it's Jack Wharton and Dorsey who will play with possession for the first time in this game. And look at the pace, the acceleration from Wharton speeds away from his opposite man, Finlay. And what a start for Dorsey's school. They go five up, just 30 seconds here in this Vars elimination game. Well, we're just discussing Hayes, he put 47 past Calliwith. 36 on Coventry College and then 40 on Bloxham, a seriously impressive result. But they're behind early here, Jack Walton, the captain, goes over. Play when you're ready. Well, from Knock the kickoff as well, tap back and it's into Walton's hands once again. Campbell now. Morton changes the direction of the attack. Bumps Joe for the knock-on. Wharton. Into Nocton, who carries it forward. Hayes goes street steaming into the breakdown, but Campbell back with it at first receiver. Switch on the inside to Nocton. And Haywood puts his head down, up to the 22. Haywood back to his feet, held. So penalty Hayes, and they waste no time in getting it back underway. Bit of patience. From Hayes here. As we said in their last game, missing a couple of key players on Scotland duty, all with Ealing trail finders today. But they've still got plenty of talent in this team. Not an advantage at the moment. No advantage. Put the unforced error there. Well and allow Dauncey back in their own half with ball in Come hand. Well, it's a long Come day of sevens Hayes. and uh, on, step back, the cutthroat nature of the competition Hayes. means it could all be over here. Okay, Crouch! Sean in the background, King's College Set. taunted in action over on RE3. Up against uh, Seven Oaks in a seriously old school outing, but it could be <laughs> Dauncey here who'll be on for another. Look at the pace from Ollie Haywood. <laughs> Dauncey school have a second. And the Hayes who behind. have yet to be challenged today look a little bit shell-shocked in the early stages. Just make sure someone stays behind, just grab the ball. Thank you. Now, well, Dorsey School from Wiltshire are on top here. Against the Hayes School of Bromley. Let's grab a ball, yeah. And they did make it look rather easy here. Just quick hands across the face. Hayward on the outside and just enough to get around the... Uh, Talented Rocco Johnson. Yeah, we're good, John. Don't worry. Finally, the ball has been returned. The Dauncey once again Wait, with the kickoff. They've been really ruthless from here. Morton has been excellent so far, and this time they put it short, volleyed on by uh, the Argentine Volante, and that has gifted. Dauncey back possession, exactly what they wanted as they take it to the line. Shears taking on Finlay, who looks to strip, and then he's over the ball. Just about the doesn't ball, come away it. with it. Campbell brought down, running laterally. Nocton on the turn, 
Vantage Once again, Hayes floor. looking over the ball, but instead Vantage it's driver. locked on. Fall makes the Backwards. tackle. And Volante comes away with it. Couple of knock-ons there. But Will Law's the beneficiary. Here is Fall. And Finlay. What can he create? Bit of a miscommunication there, but always backward, and Finlay will collect his loose pass. Eze Volante. Laws. Advantage. And Rocco Johnson Advantage. just wanted to get going, but the pass was behind him. And Jamie Arch will clean up. And the clinical Dauncey school have a third. Now, Rocco Johnson was about to race away on the outside, but the pass was just behind him. His own uh, acceleration, minute, just a touch too quick That's for his teammate. No conversion. And Hayes certainly not out of this yet, but they do need a bit of possession inside their opposition's 22. Lee Johnson just got a bit in front of Laws. There's a clean pick up from Jamie Arch. And Morton with another teasing kickoff. It was almost claimed by Dauncey. They do have it on the second time of asking, and Haywood might be away. Haywood caught the ball loose. Finley hacks it on. Beautiful pick up and the offload. Here's Fall stepping off the left. Finley on the recover. Once again, it's just beyond Mwanda. But Mwanda on the switch, Laws, Volante puts a man to ground, but they hang on to him well. Finley. Kieran Finley offloads again. Volante. Mwanda takes it to the line himself, just advantage. scragged by Nocturne and then put down. No advantage, it's a knock on, it's come down. That ball. Well, Peter Tower is one of the youngest in this team on the Ealing Trailfinders pathway. Once again, Dauncey's solid defence, frustrating Hayes. Let's go, Hayes! Okay. So the final opportunity of the half Bye. is all to Dauncey School. Set! They already lead by 17. Nocturne. Wide pass, suddenly all the space opens up. There's nothing but green grass in front of Ollie Hayward and Dauncey will have a third, a fourth even. Now even the game running away from myself here in the commentary box. They've been just so clinical. Nothing from the conversion. Oh, but Dauncey will take a 22-point advantage into the break and, well, the high press cool, thank you. from Hayes did not pay off. Dauncey got the pass away and Ollie Hayward racks up another score. Well, if we see a turnaround here, it will certainly be the biggest deficit of the day so far to be overturned. But Hayes have got a lot of quality across that team who would be capable of making an impact. We'll find out the fate of Hayes School and Dauncey in our final game of day one here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Live with Next Gen here on RE2. Well, Dorsey's school in no particular rush to get this game back underway. They hold a 22-point advantage going into half-time, and Volante 
will kick off first and Dorsey come away with it. Campbell, lofted pass. And there's excellent line speed there from Louis Hawes who puts in the big contact, but still Dorsey in possession and they force the two on one, but Campbell executes. Knocks him back across against the grain. Morton puts his toe on it and it's Finley there for Hayes who takes on Arch and gets on the outside. Good covering by the captain. Looking to take on Wharton as well. And suddenly the hole opens up in midfield. The Hayes are patient this time. Dimond. Away from one, but Dorsey School just getting in the scrag tackles. This time chipped over behind and Eze Valente almost has it. Campbell comes away with it. Lovely step to beat the first defender. And another. Tom Campbell sives through the Hayes defence just as the momentum was building and scores a fifth. Well, it opened up for Campbell. He took the kick from Eze Valente really well. Stepped around his first and then wheeled away. Well, have Dauncey School put an end to any whispers of a Hayes fight back? Playing already. Kick off then once again short and stolen by Josh Wharton and the captain's away. And it's certainly over now. There was some good sport sportsmanship there between Wharton and uh, McNamara, but. Dauncey School have certainly carved their way into day two of the Howes and Roslyn Park National School 7's VARS competition. Another excellent kickoff from Tom Morton. And Jack Wharton just Play stole it off the toes of Afi Mwanda. Hayes off the kickoff with possession. Dorsey looking to disrupt look instead. Wharton no uh, with the knockdown. So Hayes with a penalty. We'll see if they can get on the score sheet. Spilled in contact. No advantage. Knock on there. Come down. And it just isn't going their way. Sorry. In this game yes, today. Well, not the result that anyone saw coming here. Uh, two sides who've been really impressive okay. all afternoon. Dauncey have just been so Fine. critical. Set. Pulls out. Well, the ball spits out for Nocturne and. Uh, M Morton on the wraparound and suddenly Hayward might be away for a seventh. Hayward has enough to beat Ashton Singh. <laughs> and this is a statement being made by Dorsey School. Conversion as well. With still two minutes to go. A's have performed admirably all day, but I'm fairly certain they would quite like their afternoon to finish sooner rather than later. And from the kickoff, would you believe it? Theo Malik of Dorty School has claimed it again. They have enjoyed the lion's share of possession. Wharton puts it through 
and it will roll into touch. But a really impressive kick from the captain. Yep, light play. Hayes take it quickly. Still got a bit of desire. And there's an excellent take as well from that pass to perhaps put Hayes in behind. Strong carry from Rocco Johnson. He's been capable of carries like that all day. And he's up to make the tackle advantage. as well. Volante with the strip, but just a few too many errors today across the last 14 minutes for Hayes School. Let's go, please, don't cease. OK. Crouch! Bind! Set! And there's the chip in behind from Campbell. Will it sit kindly for the cap for anyone on that Dorsey School side? Touch back. 22. Touch back is the call. So a 22, 22. which looks like... There's no goal line drop out since seven. Lante will take quickly and regather and shrugs off his man. There's the little show and go. Desperate for support. It spits out for Rocco Johnson, hacked through instead by Dauncey School, but Hayes still in possession. And they break the line this time, and it's good support from Singh. And they will get on the board. Ashton Singh, a former track athlete, has a try for Hayes. But after a strong day of sevens, they do deserve, even if they have been Fine. second best in this elimination match. Done. Well, there'll be no day two yeah. for Hayes, but. They've impressed throughout on RE2 today, but Dorsey's school have put in a frighteningly clinical performance. They take the win here at the final elimination game by 43 points to five. Well, that will bring an end to our coverage here on RE2. For the day, at least, do not go anywhere because the uh, post-match show will kick off very shortly over on the RE1 live stream. You may be able to see it here too, but uh, the schedule, of course, for tomorrow includes, would you believe it, an awful lot of sevens rugby starting yet again at 10 a.m. There's plenty more competitions to bring you across the women's and the men's game, under 14s all the way up to under 18s. The action will continue tomorrow, along, of course, with the Vars as it gets to real knockout rugby. That's goodbye from me, Wilfred Kemsley. Thank you to Jack Zorab today, of course. He'll be with us all week here on RE2 at the Houndon Roslyn Park National School 7s. Final game of the day, Dauncey School through to tomorrow after a clinical performance against Hayes, in which they win 43 points to five.